welcome connoisseurs of fine common cardboard to today's live stream and to this iteration of Let's Build. I've got my good friend Derek here with me. How you doing, buddy? Wonderful. Thank you very much for uh, inviting me back once again. After last time, I thought you were sick of me, so it's always reassuring <laughs> to know that, uh, you know, Never. you'll at least tolerate, tolerate my presence <laughs> and uh, willingness to slot in insanely yeah. silly things in you know, a uh, quote-unquote competitive deck you know we're, we're, we're a good blend of uh of like the sort of uh, ruthless competitive and um and the spice factory and uh i think what what that brings to these streams is a, is a great balance of of rich new ideas that we can introduce into things so i'm always glad always to have a lot you of here. fun i saw you on twitter post uh, uh back with the bonnie and clyde here and uh you're, mm -hmm. damn, you're damn well right we are <laughs> that's right mm. So today, and let me just do a quick peek here, make sure that we've got everything in order. Uh, we do indeed have everything in order. Good, good, good. And we've got Douglas first in the chat. What's up, buddy? He said, was just watching the, uh, watching the game they play. Let's see. Was just watching the game play released earlier. Or was this Clay? Oh, that Clay released earlier. That's right. That's awesome. Good. Glad you enjoyed the gameplay. Yeah, Clay and I have, uh, have both been really busy with our work, and so it's been... Uh, difficult to find that balance between getting gameplay out there, getting the Let's Build going. I've been really building and evolving the Let's Build series so that I've got like a you know group of people that I can uh, you know reliably yeah. come to. You know people like yourself, Derek, who are always down mm -hmm. to do interesting stuff, and people who bring new perspectives and new and interesting angles, um, and and particularly people who do things that I don't maybe do as well. Uh, it's a great way to make sure that the streams are bringing the very best to the community we possibly can. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, we, gameplay videos are going to be increasing. I got some today. We did a little live game. Clay did one as well. So expect more of that. We know you've been wanting some of it. So, um, but without further ado, here um, we we got some we got we got some some really interesting stuff here. Um, this tempt mechanic, yeah. Derek, is is a doozy. Um, let's see if we can pull this up here on Scryfall and and do, how do we how do we get to tempt? Is it going to be just um, up Gollum and then it's going to be there? Possibly, yeah. Is this is this how we get there? Tempt. What if it's? Here? I literally just like did a Google for the ring tempts you MTG yeah, in Google, okay. and then I just like opened image and new ring, tab, so I have yeah. the thing up in front of me. Okay, so you know the 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 short and sweet. Um, uh, MTG spoiler, maybe. Let's see if we can get there this way. Uh, the ring tempts you. What we know so far, actually, don't. I'm sure, there's a picture a, in there. The ring tempts you. Maybe this one right here. Yes. Yeah, oh, that's a nice big image. Very yeah. good. Okay, so where's the other side of the image? Yes. Okay. Right good. There. This is a great place to start. So, chat in this new Lord of the Rings set, which I want to mention, I'm enormously enthusiastic and excited about. Um, I yeah. am as giga nerd level 11 blue wizard as you can possibly imagine when it comes to Lord of the Rings. You think I know things about magic? Like, uh, I, I have a full collection here. I nearly bought a $500, like, old printed Lord of the Rings uh, original print uh, not that long ago. And back in the day, I took a class in college called Tolkien 258, which was all about Lord of the Rings. We read every single one of his books, all of his letters, and... To date, it is my favorite fantasy IP of all time. Uh, there is really a strong argument to Lord of the Rings and Tolkien's work being the progenitor of all sci-fi and fantasy that's ever been written. Um, and his, 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 to see his work manifested in, in magic has got me so excited. So when I saw Gollum, Gollum is a character that just really sits different with me it's a it's a it's a character that i think embodies such a powerful like flavor and message in the story of like this this haunted character who in some ways kind of got unlucky he found the ring right the ring found him in a lot of ways and in lord of the rings they talk about these items of power having sentience right they have this ability to gravitate people towards them and so he gets caught in this web and throughout the story, you can see his emotional struggle in trying to resist the temptation of the ring, even after all this time underground evading orcs and eating them and living like, a, like an absolute savage. Um, and so it, to see it manifested in this is fantastic. Um, so that's my little dip into the flavor here. And it's one of the big reasons why I wanted to check this out is that A, Tempt looks really powerful. 
um, it, especially in a deck that can use it properly. We have two commanders now yeah. that have attempt trigger on them that look blatantly powerful. Um, Gollum is one of them. Uh, the Frodo uh, one also looks really good as a repeat source of removal and a Selesnya commander, which is really interesting. Um, and then we also have Bilbo Baggins as well having it. And I think we're not going to see the end yeah. of it. If we get a lot of commons with Tempt on it, it's going to be a whole other story. If it's restricted to the command zone, it's still good. But this is, you know, we just talked about this off stream. This is like in the realm of initiative and monarch. And when we put something like this in the command zone, it can be extraordinarily powerful and reliable. And this temptation effect can't be taken from us, which is where it's different from initiative and monarch. So when you first saw Tempt, what was your first impression um, around just the mechanic, irrespective of Gollum or or any of the things that have been spoiled so far? Sure. So I was at uh, Magic Fe Magic Magic Event Minneapolis when they when they spoiled this, and wow. I was watching the thing on the screen. And I my first impression was, goodness, that's a lot of words. That's um, a lot of text. It is. <laughs> it does. It this. does a lot of stuff. Um, uh. God, I'm not happy so, about that. <laughs> <laughs> I had some time to like kind of chew on it a little bit because like it's a weirdly, it reads very complex, but it's actually I think very simple. Um, and like you mentioned, it, it it kind of exists in the realm of monarch or initiative mm -hmm. in terms of like a very st like a static advantage building effect. Except this is one that functions a lot more like an equipment, and it, that that can't be destroyed. It's just like a really super powerful equipment. Once you get it powered up, that just you can't get rid of. It's just super powerful it does a ton of stuff um and it kills people very quickly yeah especially in popper commander <laughs> when you right. have you know t you know 20 I mean, or 25 uh, less life than a regular commander so let's game. take a look at that ring and this is what yeah. we're talking about this is 10 percent of everyone's life total every time you 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 connect um yeah this is like comparable to a commander that's actually been putting up a lot of results lately which is loyal subordinate um i believe the current build of loyal subordinate has somewhere around like a sub 50 percent win rate but it's like very abnormally high and it's yeah. a it's a dedicated black aggro deck it's really um i think like the current build of it is something i would i would probably i, I haven't played the deck but i've played aggressive mono black suicide black decks like this before and passageway seer is built that way um yep. passageway seer is by preference but the loyal subordinate has a lot to it as well. It, every time it attacks, um, or every time you go to your combat, you just move to combat. Yeah, <laughs> it, yeah. It's just you move to combat. Yeah. Let's just pull it up here real quick. And it triggers. And, yeah. yeah, and uh, we're gonna get loyal sub here. Uh, every yeah. So every time you go to combat, you're gonna drain everybody for three, and it's a three one, and it has menace. So like tons yep. to like here. <laughs> yeah, it, it just like does so much damage. It really does. Yeah, and there's some cool new art for it too. I really like this. Does yeah, a lot yeah. of damage. And the other thing is like, you know, like killing this thing. Yeah, you're like, it, it I, I don't know. It, you know, the, you can deploy this on turn one with a dark ritual, um, which is pretty gross. Oh, can, sorry, I just sneezed in my mic. You're Goodness good. Gracious. No, no, no. I think the, the it, it blew past the threshold there. So we're all good. Wonderful. Yeah, as yeah, intended. That's exactly. So, so what we're seeing here is that this is some way comparable to the loyal subordinate, except that we're going to be able to put this on any creature. And it's going to come with a number of other effects yep. too that go beyond just pressure because this doesn't have any form of resource advantage, any sort of like card filtering, any sort of other mm -hmm. things. Tempt is very tricksy hobbitses. It's look at this. <laughs> exactly right. It's, it's, it's granting just, a form of evasion. It's magic. It's, it's looting on attack. It's in it on attack trigger. That's on an I think attack a big trigger. Deal. Yeah. When it's blocked by a creature, that creature's controller sacrifices it at the end of combat golems <laughs> trigger is an ltb it is not a death trigger um there are a lot yep. of weird things we can do with this uh <laughs> yeah you know it, it, it's really open-ended and that's kind of like one of the things that's really challenging about enticing. a card like this yeah um is that there's a lot of ways you can go um it's very modular and like what we may end up with at the end of the stream um might not even be like the quote unquote like best way to go, you know? Um there's so many cool things you can do. So many mechanic so many different mechanics play off of this, like whether it's involves sacrificing creatures because yeah. Gollum is an LTB or at least the battlefield trigger. 
or um, you know, uh, we'll talk about some more is, is ninjas is really yep. great with this too because it's a yeah. lethal battlefield trigger, not a death trigger. Right. Um, and well, then Golem's think. activated ability to return him from a graveyard to your hand is a sacrifice effect, so you need yep. things to sacrifice. So you can have sacrifice for value aristocrats kind of stuff. So there's oh, a lot yeah. of different things you can do depending on how you want to play the game, and you passively just power up your ring really quickly because. I learned this um, by playing a lot of Squee the Immortal in Commander. It's my favorite Commander deck. I've been playing it for years, ever since Squee was released in Dominaria. And it is tremendously powerful to never have to pay command tax for your Commander, oh, especially yeah. if your Commander is a three-power creature. Yeah. Um, it's, it's in Pauper disgusting. Commander, three power is, like, very powerful. Three, three power is, like, very total. high. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, we talked about this right before the stream, too. You know, the text on a card doesn't always... Doesn't always how do I, 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 we've gotten, we've it doesn't gotten, show the full breadth of what yeah. the card does. Like, what, like, right. I, I, like, I, I always raise it like, right. Like how does, like, right. Like, like I always raise it like this, this? <laughs> like what, what does this card do? And like, what does this card do? Mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, we've come up with some good language, mm -hmm. like resource advantage to replace card advantage or to yep. describe certain decks that have non-traditional ways of gaining advantage. And, mm -hmm. um, I, I think that we're, what we're going to see here is that people are not going to block Gollum until Gollum has powered up the ring. What that means yeah. is that Gollum people are going to be like, scared to kill it. They're, they're not going to want to. They're not going to want to block it. They're not going to want to kill it because they know it's going to cause the tempt and it's going to enable all of our stuff. Now we're going to have lots of ways to make it die. Um, that's not going to be an issue. Um, but the simple fact that Gollum could run out there and start getting in hits early, uh, applying yep. a lot of pressure is is really big and anthony canise just mentioned uh, i didn't even think about ninjas yeah that was one of the things that we talked about early on that was yep. really enticing um there's some really cool stuff a lot. you can do with ninjas black like, ninjas you know, the mono black ninjas really are like yeah they're beaters like yeah, these things they're hit thick chompers these boys yeah. these boys slap um in fact we're gonna go to considering here just because the ninjas are such an interesting and dynamic and a uh, way to at instant speed like put yeah. a threat into play while bringing Gollum back, while triggering the LTB and getting a threat in, you know, into combat that otherwise might have not might have been yeah. blocked, right? Like, look at that. Put six power. Oh, in I do play. want to interject real quick. I do think that you need to change the printing of Dokuchi Shadow Walker into the showcase yes, printing. I, I agree. Because it's it's by far superior dude, in every dude, way, shape, and form. It is. It slaps. Look at this thing. Uh, this is a card I've been trying to find a home for for a uh, long time. Dude, it's always so like just chat. awkward enough to get cut, but. <laughs> Dude, it's a it's a five five for four. <laughs> like it's it's a Juzum Jin. It's awesome. This is this is a Chad boy right here. Look at that. He mm -hmm. big. He, this Cards like this just, just get people. Yeah, it just like here's my here's my four mana Gurmag Gangler. Let's go. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, definitely a sick card. We've also got Ninja of the New Moon, uh, which you know six three for five, not great, but a six three for four is above the curve. That is very a good. A 6 3 for 4 importantly, that has already gone unblocked. That's already hitting. Ha! Yep. Get some. Uh, we got Okiba Gang Shinobi. This is a huge resource. Um, yeah, it's classic. Oh my god. Like I the you don't often connect with the Okiba Gang Shinobi because what it reads yeah. is like if you don't block this right now, um, you are going to you are going to lose two cards and people will say I'd rather lose my one removal spell than lose two cards. So that's, right. that's how it works. But but when it does connect, oh my god, is it it's heavy. It's, yeah. it hurts a lot. I hate being hit by Gokiba <laughs> Kenobi. In 60 card, it's like it's such a game ending yeah. card. Um and so all these are great. We've got the Mokatai Ambusher as a card that's overperformed for me, uh, particularly in Rilso, yeah. where you can give it a lot of power. The lifelink will be helpful occasionally. Um mm -hmm. the Azra Smoke Shaper is pretty cool. This is gonna allow us to really swing in and and turn sideways and then grant indestructible, make one of our creatures basically um, trade favorably yep. in combat or not die um, while also getting our commander back. And then we have the Skull Snatcher, which is just a one mana, two one. Um, you know, it's going to do graveyard some hate. graveyard hate. Um, sorcery speed graveyard hate, usually not exactly what we're looking for, but it doesn't hurt. Um, and it's really ultimately yeah. just a one mana, two one. So. Yeah, it, it, this it, importantly, like this is a card that you know it is graveyard hate, but it's not interaction, right? Like, That's right. it's not something that you're playing reactively. It's just something that passively happens. Um, so, it's it, it performs a much different role. Like, if you're looking to fill certain quotas in your in your deck list with like this is my graveyard hate slot, like this is not that this card. This is not it. No, um, this is because it's a ninja. No. It's allowing us to get the tempt. It's a uh, it's actually above the curve, which is which is yep. fine. Um, but 
As you can see here in our considering section, I've already done a bit of work here. Um, this took me literally five minutes um, because not only do we have like the generically good black stuff that's going to be great in this deck, um, yep. you know, powering up evasive creatures with the initiative, um, using Grey Merchant of Asphodel, we have a lot of pips. Um, even cards like Pestilence and Crypt Rats, where like we're going to get everybody low, we're going to top deck one of these things, and it doesn't matter if we kill our board because everybody's dead. Um, right. And and even then we can kind of like, you know, if Gollum dies in that interaction, then the thing that doesn't die, maybe like a Gary, we give it the ring. And then the ring is just in there still hitting people, yeah. generating card advantage, draining them. Like it, there's all these cards yeah. still work really well in the deck. Um, and the really great thing about Gollum in, with these sorts of creatures is that um, the ring and the tempt mechanic and the cards that we've seen can be pretty awkward to trigger like um, reactively. Uh, it's something where, you know, you're oftentimes just like doing it at sorcery speed um, or very rarely at instant speed. But this is something, this is a card with Gollum that we can move the ring around very easily. Um, like inside of combat, importantly. So we can get very, very sneaky with things and just like, you know, get in, get triggers and it just yeah. like kill people really quickly. Yeah, one of the things you talked about, and, and we should talk about how this works. So as the ring tempts you, you get an emblem named the ring. So this is an emblem. Yep. Um, if you don't have one, then the emblem gets a next ability. So it's not a counter. Um, there's no way to like proliferate or anything like that here. Um, mm -hmm. And it's gaining abilities as you tempt. Um, so we're progressing down through these abilities as listed above here. So um, uh, first is that the ring bearer is legendary. So this is the first tempt is you're going to be, can't be blocked by creatures with greater power. Now And so, legendary. And is legendary. So it's not going to die to cast down. That's pretty cool. Um, other things that legendary might do, I'm, I'm not sure that there's anything else that's hyper I think there are a couple there. things that might care about it. I don't think, uh, nothing, nothing comes to mind in terms of like with. stuff that we'd want to work with. It's yeah. just flavorful. This is cool. Mm -hmm. Um, every time it attacks, we're going to draw and discard a card, which is great. Um, so yep. being able to facilitate this is awesome. Um, and then we get this other effect here, which basically can become a form of removal. And, um, whenever it becomes blocked by a creature, that creature's controller sacrifices at end of combat. This is going to allow us to... Uh, basically eat cards that chump block us. So if things are chumping yep. us, where they are, or not chumping, but sorry, uh, stonewalling us. So say we, they block with a pneumatic wall, right? Um, it's not going to kill us and we're not going to kill it, but then they do have to sacrifice it at the end of turn. And so being able to mm -hmm. instant speed, you know, use a Reckoner's Bargain to get rid of Gollum. Uh, Gollum's going to trigger Tempt. Then we, you know, shift that ring bearer over onto the creature that's being blocked by the yep. demotic wall we're able to eat it at that point um and then the final one is that once we do combat damage to a player each opponent loses three life so you imagine yeah. you know uh making like vicious battle rager into the ring bearer um yeah is, that's, that's not blocking that thing terrifying yeah like uh, it's, it's yeah. coming for that cheddar it's going to be looting and it's, it's going to be yeah yeah like what you mentioned for about like reckoner's bargain like those spells like um you know the village rights kinds of things those cards are awesome because like in a situation like you like you just talked about when we're able to move uh the ring around to like take care of a problematic blocker like we're, we're generating so much advantage off of that interaction yeah um like it's golem doesn't matter so he can go to the graveyard and who cares mm -hmm. we're drawing two cards we're removing a thing and we are just like maintaining our position on board yeah. because it's like an equipment right it's just it's just a thing that exists yeah. and um we just, we can just move it around next turn if we want to it's really easy because I mean, golem is so easy to enable no card yet to no deck yet to date is able to play monarch initiative and tempt all in the deck yeah. so there there is an argument to be made for this deck being just like another great mid-range grindy black deck and you know building mm -hmm. around all the good cards that we would kind of expect around that um but with a little bit of um you know a little bit of synergy around some of the abilities that we get granted from the ring um you know one of those being looting so you know one of the ways that black is able to get more more than one body out of every life is by bringing them back from the graveyard with unearth and yep. there's a couple of ones that are really exciting particularly like the uh, scrapwork rager um the first fear garganta um because we can do this all after it's attacked right so we do our attacking mm -hmm. and everything and then at end you know end step we sacrifice the thing we bring the golem back uh, very powerful there um also cards like Viscera Dragger. Um, then I think under Fodder here, I had a couple of other ones. Like we even have the Blitz mechanic, which is really cool. So um, so using Girder Goons, we're going to 
get two bodies off of this, which is great. We're going to get a hasty 4-4 uh, under, you know, at, at co under cost, basically, because we're getting a 4-4 four, yep. four for 4 that's got haste, and it's going to draw us a card, and it's going to leave a 2-2 two, two behind, which is, m like, two instances of fodder for, uh, you know, for our golem, right? The first one is going to be we swing, and then we're able to sacrifice this thing and then get Gollum back, and then the 2-2 two, two is going to be another form of fodder as well while getting us a card. Actually, this is this this card is nuts in this deck, isn't it? Like, yeah, it's wow. pretty cool. Um, Exquisite Huntmaster, unbelievable. Like, loot this thing into the graveyard. Encore, yeah, encore. you're going to get all these bodies. You're going to get Hasty 4-4, four, four, a 4-2. Four, this is really similar, actually. Yep. Um, we also have uh, other cards, like we've got the Night Squad Commando, which is going to be kind of a 2-mana 3-2 three, two, that's going to give us a body that we can sack to the, the goons, we've got knights, the knight uh, dredgescape zombie. Mm -hmm. um, we've got basically like some of these like normal fodder things here that exist solely for the purpose of fodder. But really, it's yep. the, like the unearth stuff is amazing. We even have this Grixis slave driver. This yes, is a card driver. I, I have wanted to find homes for this card for so long. Yeah, it's a I cool think one. It's so sick. Uh, like the the flavor of it's amazing, uh, but also like what a card in this deck. Um, yeah, it's cool. I like yeah, this one a lot. It's a good one. So. And then even cards like Join the Maestros. This is going to be an awesome card in this deck. Like, you know, five mana, sack our golem, make eight power, yep. uh, tempt something. Very cool. Um, so yeah. that's what we've got here. So let's start getting into the build. Um, so some of the first cards that we wanted to talk about were the ninjas. I think I'm pretty set on, like, all of these ninjas uh, moving into the main board. Um, yeah, I'm comfortable with that, too. Yeah. These are these are all great cards. I mean, the Okiba Gang Shinobi. Maybe there's an argument for that, but still, the Ninjutsu is just the Ninjutsu alone is so strong. Yeah. Um, we also uh, had talked about the Unearth cards. So we've got the Grixis Slave Driver. We've got the First Fear Garganta. First Fear Garganta yep. in particular is also really nice. I mean, three mana, yeah. five power, haste, draw card, tempt. Yeah, real swingy. Yeah. Yeah. We've got that one. We've got the Viscera Dragger, which I like. Yeah, Dragger I like. Yeah, yep. we've got the Girder. Uh, well, actually, we'll come back to the Girder Goons. We'll do these basically in um, viability. So yep. was, is that all of the Dredge or the um, Unearth that we um, have? There, there was one other one. The There's two Rotting one. Rats. Oh, Rotting Rats, yeah. Dredgescape. Oh, and uh, Scra so you got Rager. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yep. So all those. Rotting Rats I left out. Um, I don't... I don't think we're in the market for this necessarily. No, I, I think this card, well, first of all, I don't like symmetrical discard effects in this mm -hmm. format. Um, this is also kind of expensive um, in general for like this creature that kind of sucks. Like compare this to like sure. Sphere Garganta. Pay one more mana out of the graveyard and you get a 5-4 with haste instead of a dinky 1-1 one, one that does like nothing. This thing is yeah. way, way stronger. Um, so we've got those in there. Um, I've already got them queued up in terms of their categories. Um, the next one is Blitz. And I think we only had one Blitz card, right? I think it's just Girder Goons. Yeah, just Girder yeah. Goons. Yeah, so we'll we'll add that one in there. The Blitz is great. Um, you know, yeah. Actually... The important thing with like the the suite of creatures is um, there's a there's a tension between like these sorts of cards and I think more persistent mm -hmm. like battlefield presence kinds of things um, because we're just going to need to be doing this a lot, moving Gollum around, sacrificing, bringing him back. Um, so we can't go like too heavy on these. I think it's, I think it's worth like adding them now and then kind of going and pruning them later. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. additionally, like a lot of them are very mana intensive and yeah. very expensive to do, yeah. um, like between like four and five mana for a lot of this stuff. Yeah. The hunt, um, the hunt master so is a lot of the radar. for sure. And yeah. actually the, 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 some of the reason to have these is simply that having a reliable thing that we can put into the graveyard that yep. is uh, a card later on is one of the ways that mm -hmm. we can break parity on that looting. Which I which yeah. really appeals to me. Um, Absolutely, it's one of the ways we can we can do that. This Briar Blade Adept is quite nice here too. This is also going to be uh, removal. Yeah, it's like a little removal thing. Yeah. Yep, and it's actually it's also uh, you know I put creatures in here. I, I think in the future I'm going to start putting threats because what really we're, we've got this like aristocrat sub theme, and whenever I'm doing mm -hmm. aristocrats, there's like three different things. There's fodder, there's threats, yeah. uh, or or like threats, and then there's there's uh, so fodder, sacrificers, and then there's payoffs. And the payoffs right. are threats, right? Um, so in this yeah. case, we have a creature here, but um, we're just going to call it that for time being. Um, so we've got that. 
Let's go. Well, it's, it's funny. Like mm -hmm. a lot of things that that we would be using as like threats. So I, I guess what I was trying to articulate before is that like you know a lot of the things that they come in and then we sacrifice them and they're exiled. Like we're using them from the graveyard, not necessarily like as a game piece on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So. It, it's very easy to kind of fall into this trap that we almost always fall into, where we just like, this is awesome. Let's just overload ourselves on this one, like a really cool synergy. The question's going to be um, like, which of these are premium? Which ones? Yeah. 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 And, and I mentioned this to you before we started recording as something that kind of struck me is like, this deck plays very well into like the cranial plating dynamic that you Ooh, yeah. talk about a lot, mm -hmm. where like every little dinky thing uh, becomes a threat. And the ring does that. Um, so cards yep. like Clay Revenant and Sanitarium Skeleton and Persistent Specimen, yeah, I think are really quite here. good. Um, and they also secondarily function as like Sacrifice Fodder. Actually, I should say that. Actually, they, they're primary sac Sacrifice Fodder, and then they secondarily are threatening. Because yep. um, they can carry the ring or whatever equipment you want them to do, and they just keep coming back. Yep. Um, yeah. So like, I think those cards are really great. Yeah, these are these are going to be another source of fodder um, mm -hmm. that, that are... are great these ones are still mana intensive i think we should be clear about that uh sure all, it's all broken up are... in a much more manageable way though i think yeah it's broken up kind of like uh foretold or foretell in a in, in a way right sure. like we're, we're kind of yeah. getting them back they're they're um uh they're they're definitely useful in that regard and we're, and we're gonna want to have them just because they're good curve fillers too whereas mm -hmm. like some of these other things here are more like mid game where you kind of yeah. like unleash the beast with some sort of like exquisite hunt master briar blade adept you know, nope. get all these triggers. I think, I think especially after like the recent Sanctuary CPDH tournament, um, like token decks and token strategies are kind of on a lot of people's minds. Like Abdel is a scary thing again. Yeah. Um, TPI is a very popular deck. So like having a one mana one two that can block and just like uh, yeah. get in the way of some things that just keeps coming back is like a really good place to be in general. For sure. Um, Clogging the board in general is, is yeah. really good. Um, like we saw, we saw some really abnormal games in there. One with Parcel Beast, and this was you know mm -hmm. very very like skew situation but they had like almost like 12 or 13 creatures in play um sure. and it was physically impossible and actually like nonsensical for me to swing in my one ones because right. i would have converted like two damage and i would have basically yeah. wasted all my bodies um so so I, yeah you're totally right um that that just having you know having having a board presence um which again like some of these like unearth cards they generate yeah. uh, pressure uh, and they generate value and they generate mm -hmm. bodies that we can use to facilitate Gollum, but they're also not sticking around. Um, they're gonna right. they're gonna go. Now that can be said for all fodder. Um, almost all fodder mm -hmm. is is gonna go at some point, and we can't trigger Gollum at instant speed, unfortunately. So we can't like block something and then sacrifice it to bring him back at instant speed. Um, it has to be as a sorcery. So, um, yep. so there's that. Um, the other things we had here are the edicts, and I think the edicts are really strong. Um, yes, they are. Edicts are in a funny place right now because you actually you have like half of the decks where the edicts are just god awful, and then you have like the other half of the decks where the edicts are like pretty good. Uh, your parcel yeah. beasts, your Gretchens, they are not creature heavy. However, now that I think about it too, against those decks, a lot of times a Gretchen has a Gretchen in play, and they just sack the Gretchen. So it's actually not sure. that great there either. Edicts, edicts well, if they sack the Gretchen, then then you just attack, right? That's like, true. So sacking the Gretchen... They're fourth on this creatures off the board. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, no, that's good. That You're, you're right. So against them, yeah. it means they take more damage. Because Gretchen, like the power of Gretchen is in a lot of ways that you play a two-mana card early on. Right. It just, it's, it's like a Riptide Turtle. You know, you just play this thing down and it blocks forever. It's eating mm -hmm. a ton of damage. So... Um, and if nothing else, like Innocent Blood, for example, is like mm -hmm. a very cheap way to enable our yeah. Tempt mechanic. We've got Flushback Marauder, card. Chain Devil, Slum Reaper. I think we're going to skip on the Rot Tide for the time being. Um, I like how yeah. big it is, uh, but... Um, it's, it's yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's big, but I don't think we're necessarily like needing we'll be careful that on the top particular end. card. Yeah. yeah, I think there's better things to be doing at that, at that price yeah. point. Yeah. Um, since we already have like four, four other redundant yeah. effects. Speaking of yeah. which, um, some of the mm -hmm. ones that we're not going to pass up on are going to be, um, where's our life gain here? Life gain. Yeah. Gray Merchant of Asphodel. Um, this is a game yep. ending card. Um, and ninjutsu. We got to remember that yeah. this ninjutsu can work with more than just Gollum, right? Mm -hmm. We can ninjutsu our initiative, our monarch. We can um, ninjutsu some of these like ETBs. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff that we can do with that. Yep. So, um, we have uh, that one. 
Uh, some other cards like Underdark Explorer. Again, like when you're in black, like you really don't want to pass on the initiative yeah. because you get more of it than any other color. And and it's such a good effect in yeah, general. Yeah, bolsters like, what we're doing a lot. So rare to find a deck that initiative is bad in. Um, so Thorn of the Black Rose, we're going to have quite a few bodies. Uh, so protecting the Monarch, pretty pretty not hard to do. Um, question is going to be around this, like, like, how premium is that? Because you do, you're paying four mana for a one, three death touch. You know, it, it's like mm -hmm. very below the curve in a lot of ways. Um, so maybe, maybe this is one we pass. Well, on, look at like, it like this. It, it's, it's a one, three death touch ETB draw card. Yeah. Um, that's kind of, that's it's like very similar. Rager. Um, or it's, it's like, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot better though, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not just draw it's probably one. worth it's its like price. draw a lot, right? You know, this is gonna be yeah, like the floor on it is draw mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Um. So it's it's a, I think it's it's good and and like a, a death like death touch is another one of those things like what does death touch do right like yep. it kills a creature but like how does that impact table dynamics like dissuading aggro is a, is a huge part yeah. of popper commander. The dark um, doesn't just come because, at like, you maybe exactly like, yeah I mean people people when people play scared they make irrational decisions and when people <laughs> like if you present a death touch blocker and you know, people get anxious about not being able to attack you. They might just lash out and do something stupid. And yeah. like putting the onus on your opponents to make decisions, statistically speaking, the more decisions you make somebody make, the more they will get wrong. So yeah, yeah. like, I really like cards that, um, while they may not like be overtly powerful, they significantly influence how your opponents perceive the game state. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you don't, and, and you just present it to them and yeah. you don't do anything. You just say, here it is. And then you just let them, let them figure it out. Yeah. And a lot of people, and, and the more times you do that, they're going to get it wrong more yes. times. Yes. And in, in that, in yeah. that sense, uh, the, the other thing about these Monarch cards, like staunch throne guard is another one, um, yeah. is that both staunch throne guard and, um, and the, uh, th the thorn of the black rose, what they mm -hmm. do is both cards read very well at defending the thing that they enable. Uh, Staunch yep. Throne Guard has Vigilance, and it's a freaking 2-5. I mean, it just it's yeah. so big. It's tough to get through. It's hard to get through. It's drawing us cards, and it's protecting the initiative really well. The Thorn of the Black Rose is the same way. Like The, the, the Death Touch on there makes it really hard to justify swinging in in certain decks. Um, and yeah. you might need to let them have the, the monarch for a bit and hope that everyone else tries to contain them. So some other... Oh, my dog is yelling at me. Oh, you're Continue. All good. I'll be, I'll be right yeah, back. You're all good. No worries. So, so chat, one of the things that I'm really enthusiastic about too, is we get to play Keljor and dead. Um, this is a card that I have been playing with in, uh, in sort of hyper aggressive, like suicide black decks in 60 card for some time. It's a card that a lot of people don't know about one mana, three, one. ETB, you're going to sack a creature, and then it has one black to regenerate. So um, the cool thing about this is that we're going to have the ability to deploy our, our Golem and immediately tempt with K-Dead um, on a creature that regenerates. It's like very above the curve. It's doing exactly what we want. This card is just awesome. Um, yeah, this card is great because much like, much like Thorn of the Black Rose, this thing just like blocks super well it blocks super um you don't well. have to attack with it. like anything huge. that regenerates it trades up it, it, even if you can't regenerate it it trades up as a one mana three one mm -hmm. um it's a really great defensive creature and this is a deck since we're going to be like, playing so aggressively like being able to not die to crackbacks is going to be a huge part of our game yeah yeah um it's like a card like this is really effective in that role yeah this one's going to go into the main deck we also get to play with one of my favorite flavor cards of all time <laughs> um which yeah. is ecstatic awakener um, and we're going to take a moment to feast our eyes on this amazing flavor text and just like this card is the, awesome. This 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 flip here has I think my favorite flavor text of any card ever. Okay, just just ugh. <laughs> unholy <Yeah>. laughter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it's so good. It's so cool looking. It's so Chad. Yeah, this card's uh, really cool. Yeah, and this card is also like really good. Um, you know, you're you're getting like a, a for, this is a form of foretell, right? We're getting a one mana yeah. one one, and then we're and we're foretelling it for that, and then we're paying three to draw a card and it becoming a four four. So we're yep. ultimately getting a four 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 that's drawing a card and enabling a synergy that we want. Um, this is also yeah. only activatable once each turn. It does not say in uh, sorcery speed um so this this card is is really really good um we only get to do it once but a four four afterwards is drawing a card is great uh, tempting drawing a card getting the big boy yeah um 
We also talked about some of these token generators like Horde Robber and Zentrum Bandit, both of these. Yeah, so with this is something that I really like um, in this format is cards that let you, that like slot very naturally into your game plan that let you not bloat your deck list with like 10 mana rocks, right? Like these are creatures that are doing something very specific to what we want to be doing, that is attacking. Um, and the first step of the ring makes them easy to get through. Like with Horde Robber, it's one power, so... It won't be able to be blocked by anything with more than one power if you just get the ring up to its first level. Um, and when it attacks, it gets you treasure. So, like, if we're able to accelerate or, or keep our mana on, like, a good curve with cards like these, then we don't need to play, like, you know, a, 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 insert mana rock here, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Cards that don't, that, that, like, don't provide us any forward momentum. Um, I love cards like this. It, it's something that I... I talked a lot about when we talked about uh, Dragon's Rage Channeler is like supplementing our mana production with treasures to like be able to double spell and like get a bunch yeah. of triggers. It's very similar here because if you notice a lot of the cards that we're playing, they do they do have a lot of like expensive activations. Um, some of them might just price your on yeah. the raw mana value of the card. Yeah. There's a lot of things that we want to be doing and we just want to make sure that we can do all of them. So like Horde Robber is like a perfect example of it's a good a card like this. It's a very innocuous um, card to put the ring onto that people yeah. are not going to kill. Like, like they're not like in Mayhem Devil, they will kill your Horde Robber on, you know, occasionally because they know yeah. that, like, over the course of the game, it's going to mean that Mayhem Devil comes out with, like, six treasures, you know? And that's, like, yep. a lot of damage. Um, that's a that's a loaded machine gun in Rambo's hand. And so... Yeah. And with... even, like, Zentrum Bandit, it's, like, an attack trigger, too. So, yeah. like, it, the floor on it is that it might die in combat, but it gets your treasure, yeah. Um, yeah. which is not bad, you know? Yeah, and I think in, in general, though, they're probably not going to get dealt with there's other more important things out yeah. there like there, i think you know when we, when we think about the competitive environment in cpdh there's scary shit happening and being like the mm -hmm. second or third scariest thing at the table is a really um is a yep. really great strategy um especially if you have the ability to interact on the stack in powerful ways and then generate advantage into the late game and yep. so and something like that I is think huge Something to think about, like it, with a deck like this, a deck like Dragon's Rage Channel, like these very low to the ground. I mean, like initially low to the ground, they get going quickly and they generate like a lot of resource advantage early on. Um, is like the way that things look right now in the competitive landscape, like the format's becoming more popular, more people are being exposed to it and like discovering competitive Popper Commander. And as such, they're turning to decks that are more traditionally viewed as like powerful decks to be playing in a multiplayer environment like this. You know, like, like. Um, talking to, you know, Chris from One More Game or any number of other people, like, they're talking about decks to bring to the RIW event next month, right? And they settle on decks like Weavers. They settle yeah. on decks like Gretchen, decks like Abdel, like Abdel combo decks. They're not calling um, it a CPDH tournament, but <clears throat> it's going to be a CPDH tournament. <laughs> yeah, but, like, you look at decks like that, and those are just, like, very, like, powerful yeah. standard combo decks. And, like, creatures like these you you will get through with them yeah uh, <laughs> for sure yeah they're not gonna like you get a lot of value off of these cards nobody uh, just because of the nature of cards we're playing onto this yeah like, you know exactly like, they're not gonna like the these these combo decks often they spend a lot of time developing their yes. mana is what and that do. mana is attached to creatures that don't block usually because they need them yep. every single one of those creatures represents like as much as six mana like like yep. when they untap one of those lands so they're regularly like not blocking with them and so um what what people need to understand about these is that is that like the price they pay for it for you know playing these creatures that produce a ton of mana is that they get absolutely clapped because yep. like they, they can't trade off these very precious untappers usually they'll trade yep. off their gretchen um they'll trade off you know maybe um, Gretchen's unique. Gretchen is kind of better than Weavers in a lot of ways because yeah. you're you have this blocker that just yeah, comes it's more back. resilient. And it, if it dies, you literally don't care because if you ever go infinite, you cast Gretchen infinite number of times. Doesn't matter how many mm -hmm. times they counter or kill it, it, you cast it infinite number of times, and then you resolve its ability infinite number of times. You put all of your cards and all of your lands into play, and you do all the things, and you win. So Gretchen, in so many ways, like takes the, the seat there. Um, but like everything else that they have it doesn't want to block it looks like a blocker yeah. and it's really not and so cards like zenter and bandit or horde robber you send it at them every turn because they're mm -hmm. they're they're always going to get through 
um, unless they're about yeah. to die, which, you know, in that case, and you're in a whole nother territory. So, yeah, I yeah, like these I like... here. These are going to play really well in the deck. And it, and it leads us yeah. into another area that I think, which is we're going to play Dark Ritual, I think. Um, I like that, yeah. Yeah, and then Culling the Weak is also insane in this deck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to I wanna have a turn where I go, like, turn two Golem, and then, like, turn three, you know, like, res like, you know, culling the weak into, you know, like a first fear Garganta or like an Underdark Explorer or a staunch throne guard, you know. Yeah. And there's a lot of other lines here too where you go like um, you know, like turn to Dark Ritual into uh, Vicious Battle Rager or um or Thorn yeah. of the Black Rose. And some of these black decks that have that ability to turbo things out, it's not gonna be a regular occurrence, but these cards are really cool here because when we draw them top deck late on, later on and we don't need them, the ring yeah. gives us the ability to loot them away. So they're, they're, they're like, and the same goes for these horde robber and the Zentrum bandit. I'm just realizing like, yeah. if, you don't if they're want bad, we can cards, just ditch them, ditch them, get rid of them, turn it into another card. Uh, but early on, yeah. these are devastating. There's a, there's a really cool deck you all should check out. It's by an author named uh, Nate diggity seven on Moxfield. And he built a Rograk Tormod deck that is all built around uh, running Rograk out using cards like Infernal Plunge, Dark Ritual, uh, Culling the Weak. Um, I don't know if there's a whole lot others. He has Rite of Flame and some uh, of these other things. Yeah. Um, but basically converting early resources into running out like these persistent game pieces that generate a ton of repeat value while also having um, like these wacko mechanics, like the fact that like when you sacrifice Rograk, you can send it to the graveyard and then replace that effect with going to the the command zone which generates a zombie token from tormod like like yeah there's like weird stuff like that that's really cool so but the, that's a deck that was for the first time really illustrated to me the power of a dark ritual a deck that can leverage dark ritual and culling the weak without it being bad later on um mm -hmm. and so this deck has a ton of cool stuff we could deploy early on um you know even even some some of the like the less slappy stuff, like it just it's just cool, you know. It's just powerful. Yeah. So um, we've got that there. Um, one of the other cards that I wanted to talk to you about too, and talk with you. I would about, love to talk about. Yeah, I would love to talk about face faceless butcher. butcher. Yeah. So this card is just, awesome, and and nobody respects this <laughs> no, thing. No, and nobody plays it either. I think if you no. look at how Which many. Decks I was thinking about it the other like, day, and it, it kind of struck me how odd it is that like this card sees so little play. Zero because, play. The, the things that make this card absolutely cracked are very are so low cost to include in a lot of decks that are already running cards like this. Um, like so, the templating does all the work on this thing. Yeah, uh, triggers. We're already playing cards like Reckless, uh, uh, Reckoner's Bargain, Reckoner's and Bargain. all those Sacrifice, mm -hmm. Draw, Deadly Dispute, that kind of stuff. Corrupted so like, eviction, yeah, yeah, when you play this card and you put it, you end it as a battlefield and you put its first ability on the stack. While it's on the stack, you can sacrifice it and put the second ability on the stack. So, so when the second ability resolves, it doesn't return anything because nothing has been exiled by Faithless Butcher. And then the first ability resolves and will exile something permanently. And I want to um, actually point to another angle on this too. You, like what yeah. you're pointing out there is something I actually hadn't thought about in terms of this particular deck has that density of sack outlets, right? Like because yeah. we want that. We want these LTVs. Uh, but this works with Ninjutsu too, now that I'm thinking yep. about it. Like th this... This is really gross because... It's a like, resettable O-ring. It's a resettable O-ring, but here's the thing, okay? This is what's important. How often are players going to be comfortable with the possibility that their commander never comes back to them if this resolves and they leave it underneath it? So cards like Alabaster <laughs> Host Intercessor are where I had a, a shift of thinking. These cards okay. don't kill normal creatures. They kill commanders. You know what I'm going to do if somebody hits me with this yeah. thing? If I don't have a pre if I have like one removal and spell in hand, am I going to empty myself of, of removal when there's a combo player at the table just to get my commander back? Am I going to treat my removal spell as get my sure. commander back? Or am I just going to say it goes to the command zone? Yeah, most people will say it goes to the command zone. And and you know what? I think that not only will most people do that, I think it's actually correct. 
because if you yeah most in 90 percent of cases yeah i mean think about it this way like you, you you're like oh i'll just let it go in there and then you go lightning bolt and the person next to you goes dispel <laughs> or or you cast like you know armor of shadows or whatever make it indestructible it's like I, yeah I, it can I, go honestly, wrong in a lot of ways that's to a make nightmare that scenario you might not get your commander back until like the game is over <laughs> like yeah. and i think that that's where cards like this and alabaster host intercessor they read completely different than what the card actually reads it says it says mm -hmm. tag somebody's commander this is this is four mana with two black pips for gary two three yeah. exile somebody's commander unconditionally basically mm -hmm. now sometimes a person will have like two or three removal spells in hand and it will be paltry easy for them to kill your creature and get their commander back but then they're and killing Faceless Butcher. They're killing Faceless Butcher, not something <laughs> else, right? Like, they're using yeah. their removal spell to get their commander back. And in a lot of cases, they might even just say, you know what, I'm just going to pay the command the command tax. It's fine. Um, so yeah. This is Card, cards like this, I think... So something that I do a lot when I'm looking at cards like Faceless, like Faceless Butcher is I'm looking at, what, like, the effects on the card and just, yeah. like, thinking about what, what the what the real rate on it is, right? So, like, you look at the components of it, and it's, it's, it's an O-ring, so on a body, on or, a reasonable, or, or, or like, or, or more closely, like Journey to Nowhere, right? Um, because yeah. it only targets creatures. If it so like, like that's, two, a, that, yeah, that that's a two mana, that's a two mana value effect attached to a two three creature, which so you're you're getting above rate with yeah. this, oh, like yeah. a two a two three for two is above rate, and you're getting a free Journey to Nowhere on top of it. Um, and when you contextualize cards in that way, like breaking it down into disparate parts and kind of figuring out exactly how much mana you're either saving or losing by including a card like this if you're looking right. for that effect is a really great way to go about um like evaluating what kind of cards you want yeah, depending yeah. on like what mana value you're looking for um what kind of a creature you're looking for like it's really helpful to kind of weed things out that way it is it is and there's another element to this too and it's something that i think about a lot but when you're playing the initiative um you really really want to have a high creature density but you also yep. want to have a wide variety of creature effects and so when you flip mm -hmm. off Throne of the Dead 3 and you hit Faceless Butcher, this thing comes into play as a 5-6 that is hexproof and it exiles somebody's creature. This is an That's amazing huge. hit off of the throne. This is one of the best hits we have, and I have been sleeping on it. Um, I, I think I, a lot of people sleep on it. I yeah, mean, people just see like it's a 4-mana 2-3. That kills the thing. This right? is like, all the don't... black decks uh, should be yeah. playing this card, probably. Um, I think this card's a lot better than people think A it is. lot better, yeah. And, and As again, somebody who played like Torment Limited, oh, yeah. it's I, I have I respect this card quite a bit because um, I've been got by it too many times. <laughs> uh, my, my, my poor little, you know, like 14-year-old self or whatever. Oh, no. Um, oh. But uh, yeah, it's really, it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Th I think the other thing, too, is that if you... You know, you pair this with any sort of like um, undying evil, undying malice, yeah, exactly. supernatural stamina. You set it up to block, or you play it, sacrifice it, give it that thing, tag two things at once. There's like a ton yeah. of shenanigans with this. I and do that. I, I've done that stuff a lot, like in regular commander with a card like like Fiend Hunter, which is the same template yeah, thing. Hunter, same like thing. when you when you put Fiend Hunter on the stack and and it resolves and you target a thing to exile and then you flicker it. It's the same dynamic. Um, and granted, like we can do, we have access to that same ex exact sort of thing with Faceless Butcher with um, like the Grave Flicker stuff, yep, uh, right. Undying Evil, and that yeah. kind of thing. So there's this le lens, and those effects are good anyway in a deck like this, too. They, by the way, they are, Gollum. yeah. And, and so it's going to be interesting, like what space we find for them because, yeah, those card, like a lot of black decks do have like these pretty high impact black creatures, and so like the floor on those cards is pretty high because, yep. like, the floor on those on the Undying Evil, Supernatural Stamina is that you're like, if it's good enough to play, it's oftentimes good enough to kill. Um, and yeah. so if your opponent goes to try and kill your Vicious Battle Rager that's had, you know, that's being, that's tempted, yeah. right? Um, then, uh, you know, you can, you can flicker it, right? Uh, with one of those effects. Mm -hmm. So that kind of, you know, brings me to this other element, which is like, what are some other like good, you know, ETBs that we can reuse uh, as well, you know, with the ninjutsu as well. And one of them that came up was the Okiba Reckoner Raid. Um, this is a card yep. that I've really, really liked because um, another card that's like you have to kind of grok it a little bit to think about what this does. Mm -hmm. This one mana card, yeah, I love this card, is not only gaining you life, but it's it's actually hitting everybody for one. It's hitting everybody for one, and then it's yep. coming in as a two-two. So by the time it attacks for its first time, it's already dealt damage to all, two damage to all the players. So it's kind of like it came down with haste yeah. and it hit one player. And then it hit another player, and then it hit another player, and all the while it had lifelink, and it was unblockable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then 
uh, if we ever ninjutsu this thing, we get to do it all over again. And then and it I, flips into a two-two menace into a two -two for some menace. reason. <laughs> for some reason, like you know, it just there's a lot going on in this. It's card. really easy to ninjutsu, is the yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, super. Um, if we're if we're going like super heavy, and kind of like this is like a specifically grave flicker thing, but something to keep in mind: if we go really heavy on that stuff, um, Goring Warplow is a really cool card that nobody plays with. Mm. It's a one 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 death touch prototype for two, oh, yeah, you and play then for two it's and actual a five four ninjutsu attack. Uh, no, no, no. You you uh, you block it dies, and you uh, undying evil, and it comes back as a five four death touch. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, well, no, it comes back if it's undying evil. It comes back as a uh, a six five. A six five, yeah, uh -huh. true. Yeah, yeah. Something, something just an interesting thing. Uh, you have to go pretty heavy on those effects to want sure. a card like let's, this. Let's drop that. Um, considering that, that's, that's do. interesting for sure. Yeah, because um, I mean, a one one death touch for two is not, is not, not bad no. if, uh, you know if you just kind of circle back to all we've talked about before about just like having things that get in the way or that push people in other directions um like death touch is a really great, great mechanic for that um it's so like a one one for two is certainly not bad and, and a five four death touch is much much better um and it's something you can ramp into too i mean it's a six mana spell but uh you know yeah the floor yeah. and it's not that bad now, some of the stuff we have in here that we're also not going to pass up on, let's just uh, yeah, beat, get all those things here and get it in here. We've got Corrupted Conviction, the new copy of Village Rights, um, and then we've got the classics like Deadly Dispute. Um, I think yep. there's no reason to not run Knight's Whisper. Reckoner's Bargain, mm -hmm. of course, goes in alongside Blood, Deadly, Deadly Dispute. Sign in Blood is a black staple card. Um, Dirge of Dread is the best cantrip in the deck. <laughs> yeah, Dirge of Dread is a card that we've been talking about quite a bit, and the this card came onto my radar a lot later than it did for you. You've known about this card. This is one of your favorite yeah. cards. Um, Dirge awesome. of the Dead in um, in Ghost is a hell of a card. Um, in any Ghost yeah. deck, your ability to uh, well, really Ghost Tormod, you're able to draw a card extra every extra card every turn while granting unblockability, and then later on you give all your zombies fear. Yep. Um, it, it's really strong. It's it's strong in this deck, um, so I, I like this one. Uh, we've got the Scrapwork Rager. I believe that we already have this in here. I think we might. Uh, yep, we do. We do. Um, and then okay, so we can we can remove. You this know what I will here. say about the Grave Flicker stuff is there are some. I know there's one that generates a treasure. Like yep. there's some that have like weird ancillary effects. You know, there's one or two that give life link. Like those ones might be better than the one mana ones. Oddly enough, um, for what we're trying to do here. Uh, but just something to think about. Yeah, um, yeah, we have a couple. Of, there's like the really Ashnods. The the Ashnods one is great if we're going to run all the unearth stuff because that one um, counts as things get exiled. It goes back oh, to your hand. Oh wow! It doesn't go back into play. It just goes back to your hand. But like we're filtering a lot, so like it's still a good place for those cards to be. Um, but we get yeah. the unearth stuff back when we sacrifice. It doesn't get exiled. Oh, that's pretty. So, like that card's spicy. pretty good. Yeah, 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 I like that. That's actually really cool, and it allows us to. Yeah, no, this is this is definitely interesting. Um, and it gives have, two power too, so it's like and a pump two spell. power, yeah, that's like good in this deck where we're gonna actually have ways of converting on a lot of um, on a lot of pressure. Um, yeah. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, driver. There's wait, a couple like dies, cards like this, dude. This actually, yeah, you, this brings you get back a two, all you get a two mana value creature. Yeah, it does. Um, so like cards like this are, are I think, are pretty good generally. Um, this one and like dutiful attendance, a three mana one two, and it dies. It raised dead's a thing. Um, it's just like a nuts and bolts card that it basically it just reads like I think Neuer talked about this quite a bit like cards that rebuy things from your graveyard are way better than drawing a card because you get to choose something that's valuable uh, something that has been chosen uh, that's been designated by your opponents as worth killing you get to have mm -hmm. back yeah um, yeah like that's why like dutiful attendant again it's a card that plays much more powerfully than it reads and driver is similar um, you're a little bit more limited because it has to have mana value two or less but our commander is going to be in the graveyard a lot and it has two mana yeah. value so I've like got a couple that's an interesting thing i have a couple selected we've got the dig up the body and the new unsealed yep. and acropolis are both pretty good in this deck um mm -hmm. we could also look at something like this where uh putting it into the graveyard is is actually kind of where we want it um it's also just a reasonable like three mana three one that's going to mill some cards um, yeah this card i think so this card i, I i'm less high on it, it it's, it's pretty clunky um it's, it's, and... weird. it's expensive actually to do the and it's like what yes. are we getting it's not that we're not getting something back that's useful like with the way this card plays is you play it out on three you do stuff with it you're attacking all this stuff eventually it dies and then it's going to come back and give you another card yeah but it's like pretty a three mana three one's much less impressive the mill three is like very specific decks get to abuse this yeah um, we don't care about the mill on this deck we that don't much. we don't 
So here's Feign Death. I think this is one of the cards we were talking about. Um, Fake mm. Your Own Death does make a treasure. It grants some power, but it's two mana. And there's a part of me that thinks that really the one mana ones are going to be just very... So premium. the reason I like this one better is because not only does it add power, which is like a big game in an aggro deck, but um, it kind of rebuys that one mana by providing you a treasure. So it's kind of you need to have two mana on tap to cast it, but it rebates you a little bit. That's true. Um, yep. And provides you, again, like something that you can use for other things. Oh. Uh, so it's, it's pretty good. I hadn't thought about Madness. Ray Scrabbler is uh, one of my all-time faves. This card is awesome. I mean, awesome. we have not yeah. talked about it, Madness with this card. Yeah, I don't want to go like too heavy on it. Madness uh, is a very, like, like quote-unquote, draw the wrong half of your deck oh, yeah, kind of mechanic 100%. if you're not, like, all in. Yeah, uh, yeah. But Grave Scrabbler is quite good. But w one of the things to keep in mind is that Tempt gets online with the looting very quickly. It's just the question yeah. is, like, if we have this and we don't have anything we care to get back, like, are we happy to have it? And I think the answer is probably no. Um, probably not. So kind of a mid game card. That's probably high value in that context. Um, mm -hmm. Here one sec. Um, um, we've got Kaya's ghost form here. Um, yeah. I, I think. Uh, it's an interesting one. It's very similar to the Ashnods thing that we yeah. talked about earlier that rebuys your, um, your uh, speed though. On earth stuff. Yeah. It's an aura. Uh, one of so you have to like, I, kind of like set it up, but yeah. you know, I, it's one of the things I tend to avoid is like protection that sorcery speed because then it's not protection. It's like an invitation so, like, to for one us. Think about this though. Like, so you're exactly right. Is that like sorcery speed is always technically worse than like instant speed, but like imagine casting, like what effect will it have on the game? If we just put this on Gollum, for example, like how does that influence how people interact with Gollum? Right. Um, uh, it's three power creature on its like on its own, and it's something that we're going to be getting rid of anyway. When it dies, it automatically comes back. It's giving us like, a free reuse, basically. Um, no. So you could look at Kaya's ghost form as you put it on on Gollum, and instead of having to sack a creature to get him back next time, you just you just get him back. Yeah. So actually, that that's it's kind of like a creature. It it's kind of like so I, I look at it as kind of like a rattlesnake, right? Like um. Huh. You, you understand what I'm talking about when I when I refer to a rattlesnake. Is that's the... It's a card that sits on the battlefield and it basically like oh like a like an ambush viper kind of a thing or yeah something. kind of like yeah. um like it, it like uh think of like seal of primordium yep, or yep. seal of cleansing. It's just it's there. something that sits on the battlefield and nobody wants to play into it. Yeah. Uh, because there's no just because like it gives you a free thing if they do. Now um that being said and, and granted like like those effects aren't aren't necessarily the most powerful. Right. But the uh. The points you get in the, the how they influence table dynamics, I think, compensate a lot for the lack of power level compared to like other anal analogous effects. And the question is going to be like, is that a thing that people run into, or is this something that's enabling our things? And I think that when I see Kaya's Ghost Form, nobody mm -hmm. really wants to block Gollum early on, anyways. And so Kaya's sure. Ghost Form doesn't change that equation. It just says like, oh well, I, I still don't want to kill it, um, but right. we're the ones killing it. We're the ones sacking it. And so when I see mm -hmm. this card, it's it's reading to me like put this on Gollum, and then when we sack it, we get him back right away. We get our tempt, and then we get him back right away, and we're not having to spend a creature, which is, yeah. which is like, that could be powerful enough, and nobody's going to... Well, like, and think about it this way. Things. Like, we've only discussed this card in the context of Gollum. Putting it on, like, an unearthed thing or That's any other story. creature is is much more persuasive, I think. Like, if you have... A if you, like, hard cast... Garganta. If you just hard cast a first sphere, not even unearthed, but just, like, hard cast it for six... And you just put this on it, like nobody's gonna want to kill it because it's gonna waste their removal spell. Why would they waste a removal I, spell on it unless they are forced to do that? I like this actually, particularly on unearth creatures. You unearth yeah. the creature, which you put into the graveyard as a form of card advantage, because you mm -hmm. got to draw another card and you discarded a card that you're gonna get another use out of. You put yeah. this on a Grixis slave driver when it comes back with haste. Or actually, mm -hmm. like the best use case I can think of this is that you go. Uh, loot away your first sphere garganta and then I you love it with first sphere like you, that yeah, it's, that's it's nuts. unearth it Kaya's ghost form on that thing it's gonna sack at the end of turn or exile at the end of turn it's gonna come back in and draw another card and now it's a 5-4 that's there again and it's drawn you like three cards yeah right? and it's like, sticking around I, I like this actually this is this is this is good um this yeah is one of it's really times. important yeah I want to I want to actually make this point like if so with the but going back to like the sanctuary event um we were not, if you were watching coverage for it, there, you weren't able to hear like table talk or politics, but like that's such a huge part of these games. Um, like convincing people to do things that they may not even realize are against their interests. Like 
these sorts of cards that sit on the battlefield and just passively mess with people's heads and yep. make them not know what to do. Again, you get so many points doing yes. that. It's Creating insane. Cognitive like, dissonance is one of the yeah. freest things you can do. You it's can do really it easy to fall into bad habits when you're building competitive decks to just say, like, I'm going to build the most powerful, like, uh. quote unquote, correct, optimized deck. But like, if and and granted, so like, it's not it's not considered best practice to like use su technically suboptimal cards. Um, but there's qualities of these cards that the ceiling is so much higher than yeah. it otherwise would be because you can use them in ways outside of like the actual battlefield itself. That's right. Um, and people don't account for that when they're brewing a lot of the time. Yeah. yeah you need uh, if you play a lot of commander, if you, if you play a ton of commander, like mm -hmm. you're, you, you'll probably be more familiar with these sorts of things. A lot of casual commander, like it's very apparent, like the influence that, that these cards can have, if you play a lot of casual commander, but it's very easy to translate into a competitive environment, particularly in one that's very battlefield focused, like pauper. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think the, the ceiling on these cards is insane. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, I think what, what you're talking about there is interesting too, because what you've highlighted is there's, there's like this, this, and it's a bit of a misnomer at times. Um, when I, when I hear it where people are like, I'll talk about this possum equity, right? Like the, the sure. amount of value you get out of being the second or third scariest thing at the table. And it's not that you're building mm -hmm. your deck not to win the game. And it's not that you're building it with bad yeah. cards. You're just building it to be slightly less immediately scary <laughs> because you don't yeah. have a combo. Right. right. And, and that doesn't guarantee the victory at all. Doesn't automatically mean that you as the mid range deck are automatically going to take over or anything that you're in that slated to win. But what it does yep. is that when something spooky happens, people are forced to use their resources in ways that preserve their opportunity to yep. win, which is they have to kill the combo creature. And yep. yeah, you might be pressuring them, but if you don't have like, you don't have lethal in play, like, okay, well, I guess this is what I got to do. I got to use my bolt on something that yep. isn't the thing that's going to, you know, a deck, a deck like this is very rarely going to be like the thing that people need to take out or else the game will end. Like yeah, that's not going to no, happen. No, no. Um, so like the self-preservation thing is going to be a huge factor in, in how we slide under the radar in a lot of ways. Um, and yeah, I, I think that, you know, self like this gets a bad rap, like I said, in the sense that like, it's kind of a gamble. Like, so like uh, sure, you might put people in a tough spot, but like they may might make the right call or not do what you intend for them to do. And like, Sure, if that happens, but if they don't, your chances of winning get so much higher. And and that's just like a, that's a trade off that I am very comfortable making when I build yeah. decks. Yeah. Um, because I'm very I'm much more familiar with like those social dynamics just from like my experience playing multiplayer magic. Yeah. Um, so I think that if you're adept at reading the table and politicking, um, and just like being persuasive, uh, you know. I think that these sorts of rattlesnake effects and these sort of subtle ways that you can influence people's perceptions oh, of yeah. the battlefield 100%. can get you can can get you a big edge. Well, they get you, they get you a they, they they do add a delta to your your to your win percentage, um, yeah. And and the you can increase that delta by being honest about what you have in your deck, and then in the in the game in the basically the beginning of the game, which is what we're doing right now, we're building our deck, and it at turn zero is is as much. Yeah the you know the um uh the turn zero effects like your um uh, uh gosh I'm, I'm forgetting the four mana card that exiles all the graveyards in legacy um that comes out for free. Leyline of the void Leyline of the void so turn zero to me is as much those as it is the deck building process so when i'm mm -hmm. building my decks i'm thinking about how i'm able to communicate with that deck honestly where i'm not hoodwinking people Yep. about what this deck is doing and what its capabilities are and what answers I have. And that means that yeah. people can try and like game that, but I'm not lying to them at right. all. And, and yes, like in the end, there might be an element of what I'm doing that is working to my ultimate advantage, but everybody is trying to do that. And if your limited yeah. resources are, you know, usually resources like removal, things like that, counter spells are very limited. You're going to have like one, maybe two in your hand. Um, and you're yeah. going to have to use those in ways that aren't against, they're not going to be against a deck like this. And that's yeah. really good. Really, really, like really I, good. Just as an example, like, <laughs> not to get too far off topic, but just yeah. like, it's a really interesting example that it reminds you of. There was a, a gameplay video, it may have been a stream, I don't know, it was something on, on the Connoisseur's channel, yeah. uh, that you were playing a, a game, and I think immediately after I watched it, I just started spamming you messages. Um, because you were involved in a stack war at one point in the game, you had a, a card on the stack that I, that like, would have probably won you the game 
and then someone responded, and then you cast another thing, and then another thing, and somebody cast a counter spell, and you said, are you targeting this or this? <laughs> like, marking the thing that you wanted them yes. to counter um, instead of the thing that you wanted to resolve. Uh, so, like, little subtle things like that, using your language very specifically to, like, if I want, like, my Clay Revenant to resolve, and I'm involved in a stack war, and, like, I cast a removal spell on something else, and I really want... The Clay Revenant to resolve for some reason, uh, and they put a counter spell on the stack, and I say, "Oh, you want to counter my removal spell?" And they, if, I mean, if in a, in a in a vacuum, they may just think, "No, I'm going to do the Clay Revenant because this is what you need to win the game." Yes. But like when you point it out to them, their mind clicks to that card. Yes. And they start overthinking it. Yeah. <laughs> so we we, we um, had a podcast recently that came out that talked about how your words don't cost any yeah. mana. Now you don't yep. want to be that person who who talks too much during a game, uh, and it's not manipulative it, it, either. It, it's no, just it's like not. it's literally just like like pointing, like asking a question that's very like well, frank and 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 and, 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 and meaningful to like the game itself in, in a non manipulative way, right? Like yes, we want to know what you're targeting with the spell. Yes. you're just using your language to point their attention in different directions. And I think that we we have to be honest with, and this is maybe where you know maybe where because of the pods that we play in, we're going to have a little bit of, mm-hmm. of a different view. Manipulating people in CPDH is name of the game. If you can accomplish it successfully, yeah. you are playing the game better than everyone else. And what we're actually seeing right now is that combo players, if you're good at combo, it's because you are amazing at bullshitting everybody else and to think that you <laughs> are not going to try and kill everybody on your next turn. And so, yeah, like, like call it what you want, right? Uh, you, you know, it, yeah. but it, it is a subtle form of, of influencing and manipulating people. But the interesting thing is like those deals where you're kind of like the devil with like the shiny object next to the cliff and everybody's running yeah. towards a shiny object. It's not that the thing isn't shiny. It is. Yeah. It's an open faced gambit. In fact, there's a terminology for this and it's, I believe, believe it's a biblical term called Moloch. And Moloch is this like concept wherein there's this open faced gambit. There's your, it's an open faced ploy. There's an appealing thing that is in front of you that might yep. even be in some ways like correct like a Malachian problem that we experience is climate change. You know, we, we like, uh, do we want to damage our home, pollute the air? No, we don't. But I also kind of want a fast cell phone. Right. Right. And so, and it's like, like they're not, um, you know, this isn't bad. What it takes to get this has consequences though. And so when we're talking about these social dynamics and these elements of like how you leverage the battlefield, building your deck from the very beginning in relation to the the boards that you're going to see and the players you're going to be against is so valuable. And it's kind of like the tier three level of like, you know, you're, you're, this is, this is where you're starting to think about the, the meta implications of what, of what cards we're playing and, and putting people in a Malachian situation where, where you are making a good argument, right? You're making a valid argument, right? Um, And yes, it benefits me. Yeah. Right. Like, like I, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm illustrating how this thing that you're doing will benefit you more if you don't do it or if you do do it. And yes, I'm a beneficiary of it too. Right. It is, yeah. is a, that's, that's a really powerful thing to, I think it's to a, do. it's, it's a big part of a big aspect of playing like aggro decks effectively in the format oh, right sure. now is being able to oh, utilize yeah. these, these different things. Well, um, cause there's nothing as like, you know, transparently powerful that that'll just like run a table other than gut really. Yeah. Um, and that's not even true. Like a lot of the time, like, you yeah. know, in tournament metas, like gut has not performed super well. Um, yeah. but at the same time, like, when you're running out a lot of rinky ding things like we are, like a very high synergy deck yep. that has a lot of interplay between a lot of its pieces, you're mm-hmm. sacrificing the raw individual card power level to do that, yeah. to create something more than the sum of its parts. So you need to find ways to leverage those weaker cards into stronger board positions outside of those synergies right. a lot of the time. And, and being able to leverage people's perceptions of the board state um, in ways that advantage you is, is a crucial part of being effective in Absolutely. that regard. Totally. Um, it's tough because like people look at competitive play in the context of like one v one sixty card, but there's no social dynamics in that. There's none. It's just like, are you playing? Like, are your are, are your skills better than your? Are your technical skills better than your opponent? And your right? top decks. <laughs> um, yeah, and that stuff matters here too, but it's only half the puzzle. Oh yeah. Um, the rest of it is just like reading the board and like do making decisions that 
influence the decision making of the players around you in a way that advantages your next turn essentially yeah absolutely so we have a question in chat or a comment in chat we had jake was saying is this the golem card probably figured that yeah. already uh ooh, talking about sneaky plays now this is how local tables <laughs> destroy me is t- it's tilting yeah i mean it, i think part of it is that you just got to learn to play that game right um, it can be yeah like it, there's it certain feel bads associated with the term manipulation right especially in a competitive setting because it, it, it's it's at it in in casual games, the expectation is different. Um, yeah, it's more like jockeying for social position. I find it whereas lying. in CPDH, yeah, lying is be. a different level. Um, lying is what pills, pisses well, me off. If someone lies it, it, to it me, it can be. I think in competitive play, though, like it's something where people will oftentimes take it more personally because yeah. these sorts of like manipulations are at somebody's explicit expense yes you know absolutely um it's much more targeted and, and, it, and it it makes people feel stupid which yes. nobody wants nobody to feel nobody wants to feel it, stupid. it causes a lot of feel bads in a competitive environment specifically yeah. for yeah. that reason because there are stakes yeah um so like yeah it, it's it's something that like you just kind of have to recognize it for what it is yeah. um yeah. the idea is like there's ways to do it very very well that don't require you to Demean you know people. put people in that position yeah because yeah. um, like, like what we were saying about like mark like marking decisions and things like that yes, like yes. pointing things out to deflect attention here and there like that's all very um specific and it's very effective but it's not something where it's like you know making people feel like an idiot yeah. for doing something yeah like i i try like i i work hard to not um to be very careful about like baiting people into like baiting like actively baiting them into doing something that's mm-hmm. going to make them distrust what I say in the future. Right. Yeah. It, it, a, social capital is a huge deal. It's like, a huge thing. I'm I'm always honest about what I say in games because if people learn that yeah. I'm not, they will not trust me when I'm making a valid point right. about something because they shouldn't. I was dishonest with them. So yeah. like the, the, the honesty around things like that is really important. And so, and it's you know, funny, screwing like screwing people out of things and like, and, and it's not that like, you might yeah. not like, you know, lead a person down a path, um, you know, to, to an outcome that's still going to hurt for them. But, but like being really cognizant of how our words translate over time and the fact that yes, mm-hmm. there's this game, but what about the next game and the next game and the next game? And of course that's more important for me as a streamer because you know, I don't want to be the source of ire, right? Um, yeah. But but I think that's all something we have to think about, and that there's implications for that too for local play groups, kind of like what you're talking yeah. about, Jake, where you, like, you like, don't want to be that person that people don't trust. Like yeah, right? social social multiplayer magic, like it's social first, even at competitive level, it's a social game. Um, so it's something where like you were saying about trust, that's a huge deal, and establishing a pattern of like doing what you're what you say you're mm-hmm. going to do mm-hmm. is a great way to do that. Like when I play magic. Um, if I say that I'm going to do something and oftentimes say just like, if you do what, if, if you target my thing with this, I will reciprocate in this way. And then if they do, then I do that. Even if it's like not the best play sometimes, because like you want people to know that when you say something, you mean it so that when it comes down to something that's, that's meaningful, that matters, um, that has like higher stakes or more significant bearing on the game that, um, they will take you that much more seriously when you make, when you like make a threat. You know? it, it's kind of an interesting one. There's certain lines there that in competitive get a little tough, right? Because if yeah. we're just saying I'm going to use this spell, if you use this thing against me, is mm-hmm. uh, always has to be evaluated through. Is this? Going yeah, to those sorts of those sorts of decisions right? are 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 meant to. That's with the, that's the long game, right? Yeah, like yeah. it's to establish that pattern of behavior yes. for further games and further encounters down the road. We, we had so a, it. it yeah, there's value to that, I think. We had an uh, you know instance like this in the tournament where somebody was coming at me with a Dargo, and I and I told them, um, you know, I, I took it the first time, and I said, N- if you have to swing, if you swing it to me, you know, swing on yeah. me again with this thing, I'm gonna have to use my Aether spell bomb. Um, yeah, and, I, it, and this yeah. Aether spell bomb is not here for you; it's here for the freed from the real target, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. uh, and so they that was a promise to them. It wasn't, it, you know, it was just like like yep. if you do this, you are draining your self of the interaction that you're going to need to not die to this thing and they chose to do it again so i, I used my aether mm-hmm. spell bomb and then they they protected it they used their resources they tapped out and then they died to the combo player and so it was more yeah. and that was like more of a and there's nothing i could do about it because i can't change their behavior but it it should instill a sense of learning in them it, later on that like okay if they're going to like yeah. force the player to do this who's keeping them alive essentially while not pressuring them then that's like that's just a promise to them 
It's not sort of yep. like, if you sweep my board, I'm going to kill your commander kind of a thing, which is kind of can like verge on spike play. Yeah, just right? like insane, um, like spike yeah, kinds of things. Like, but like, like very, I, I'm much more referring to like mechanically, like I if agree. you do this, yeah, yeah. then I will be put in a position where like I'm going to do this and do I this. will do it. Yeah. yeah, of course, of course. And that's, again, it's a promise versus like the sort of idle threats and the sort of like, you know, low key spike play stuff. But um, this yeah. is a, this is a great line of thinking. I'm actually going to tag this in the video so you all can come back to it because this sort of social yeah. game stuff is really where cpdh where you're able to take it to the next level you're able to really yep. amplify the success of your gameplay because um, you're going to be able to draw resources from other people um, you're going mm -hmm. to be able to uh, manipulate or influence the path of the game in ways that are mutually beneficial or exclusively beneficial to you yep. and and generally just play better in a game where you don't have to use your resources if other people do so um, and it's something that a lot of competitive commander players are not used to doing because See, EDH is not a is not as resource intensive and resource focused as CPDH is. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's much more on the stack, and like resources matter very significantly, but like not in the same way that they do in this format. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this format is very battlefield oriented. Super. It is very resource oriented. Everything matters. Um, popper like has always matters. been that way. Sixty card. Uh, popper, yeah, exactly. If you, you go back and read some of like Alex Olman's uh, posts about this. He talks about every popper deck having like value engines. There's a tendency towards like mm -hmm. clogged board states. It's a lot of resource exchange, and it's because yeah. the answers are better than the threats. And so that's just one right. of the things to, to to be keeping in mind. And uh, did Jake yep. says, yeah, that combo death would have been a useful experience for players. I think it was a useful player experience for the other players watching to see it happen. But for the person who yeah. did it, they were actually headhunting me. So like, it, it, it was <laughs> like, it didn't really, didn't really ultimately probably like change oh, their perspective very much. Uh, Cause they actually had no answer to the combo in hand. <laughs> so it was like, so you sure. just like ran my removal out, ran my counter spells out, tapped me down, forced me to block instead of attacking the combo player and then died mm -hmm. to the combo in the following turn. And it was like, good, good, Good for you. I'm so, so proud yeah. of you. <laughs> but for everybody watching, I hope that they were able to pick that up and see like, yeah. don't be that. Don't be that person either because you're going to, you're going to lower your win rate too. Not that you don't yeah, need exactly. to force people to have it, but it's important to be able to know like, is this Aether Spellbomb serving a role that I want? And furthermore, like, do I want to spend resources protecting against this thing? Do I have a strong impetus to be able to force the TPI? I yeah. mean, in this case, it was a Dargo and Dargo fucking runs over TPI. Like, like I, I what am I supposed yep. to do? Throw like eight blockers in front of it? Like, you know, it's like, so, so like using my resources in that way wasn't actually leading to them um, uh, yeah. having a higher win percentage. So anyway, yeah, not to it's get really, lost on that kind of, uh, that I, I, I just have, I just have, I just have one more. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, for sure. One more example. Cause yeah. I just remember that this happened uh, when I was playing uh, with, with Chris from one more game and Alex Arnett of trivial encounters a couple days ago um, on stream. And uh, I was playing Heritage Druid, and it was a really grindy game. It was great because I got to play Heritage Druid, and uh, out of like seven pieces of interaction, six of them were used on my creatures. So like it, wow. it was the deck was the deck was working. Uh. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, we got to this position where it was just like me, Chris, and Alex left, and I had a bunch of things. Chris was at like four life playing Gnarlback Rhino. And I had enough, Ooh, enough like one one elves. I was going kind to of whittle down to like a big elvish vanguard and a bunch of one ones. Uh -huh. And I could attack through his blockers because he devoted resources to killing Scooby Drew. I think he was the fourth player. Um, so I could get through and deal the four damage I needed to to kill him. But like, I needed him to kill uh -huh. Alex because uh -huh. he gained like fifty life. Wow! And he had a ton of creatures. So like, I just chose not to block yeah. and just like presented blockers, and like. Again, like these are subtle ways you can influence the battlefield. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He could kill me if he wanted to, but like I can't win if he's dead. Yeah. So that's right. yeah. you're in a position where you just have to like keep that thing, keep keep that threat alive, and mm -hmm. just like don't do anything to make them think about attacking you. Yeah, you're possuming. right. You just want to. You're, you're playing. Dead. Yeah. Well, not even possuming. You're 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 just you're playing magic. Like I'm, I'm not saying I'm not like. Oh, saying, oh, I, I'm, not, I'm like, not saying oh, I'm so, is bad. Oh, I'm so weak. Okay, you know, that, but um, I don't yeah. mean that. I don't mean that. There, there's, <laughs> there's people who do this, and I, I do find this yeah. to be um, frustrating. Is like the oh, I'm dead, or I'm already dead, or I'm I've already lost. No, for like 90 percent of the game, I was like the arch enemy, Just which like, I should have been. Right. My board was insane, when but I, like yeah, yeah. Plus some equity. I mean, more the idea that like when you aren't as scary as other things. Um, mm -hmm. you're getting value out of it. So just just to clarify yeah. that for people, because possuming, I think, has a negative 
um, connotation towards like a person who's just constantly complaining, complaining about saying, losing, I'm not, I'm threat, not going to win. I'm not stuff. the threat, all this stuff, you know, but like building the deck with the idea that you are, um, that you're gaining value from that is, is kind of what I'm yeah. referring to. So, yeah. yeah so yeah, I just want to like, I guess the point of that is like, there's a lot of counterintuitive plays you can make that are not like the technically correct, most powerful thing you can do to win the game. Because I could have killed Chris right then, but yeah. I'm like, how does do that, I kill Alex when he's at so much life? Does that increase you know? your odds of winning? Right. Like it's kind of the no. same math that we do in, in competitive. So, right. So getting back to the, the deck build here, this is, this is great yeah. stuff. So this is like, and this is the kind of thing that I love, you know, this is like very clippable. So, um, what, you know, this, this is not, not anything mm -hmm. we need to worry about there, but, um, just want to get to finishing this here. We have, um, a couple of cards that I just added in pestilence and crypt rats. Do you think yep. that these are both just like, um, I, I, even, I like bread and butter cards. I, I like butter. it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I personally don't enjoy playing with Crypt Rats or Pestilence. I just don't find mm -hmm. them fun to, or interesting cards. I like to do things in spite of them, actually, personally. <laughs> but I think they're, like, again, like, they're, they're too powerful not to include in yeah, a deck like yeah. this, I think. They're nuts. Um, so, yeah, throw them in. Cool. Um, you know what I will say? Ashton's cards that I, yeah, these two, there are two cards that I really, really like. Um, uh, you Are Already Dead and Mirrodin Avenged. Yeah, so these ones. I think these um, the, these are two more cards that read way worse than they play. Read way um, worse than they play. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, so they're these much better way, than they they're look. They're very good. Yes, yes. these cards because are nuts. The, these are the latest in a long line of cards that people discount because they require your opponents to play into them. But people play into them all the time. Yeah, yeah, they'll like, all the time. regularly. Yeah, yeah, and they're people and they, play, like what's yeah. the what's the floor? They draw a card. Like, like, yeah, exactly. like one mana draw a card, kill your thing is like exceptionally good rate. Mm -hmm. You just have to be careful about the fact that it doesn't, um, it's not always removal. And so the question is like, how, how many slots do we have in our deck for cards that aren't going to translate to removal? Um, so, well, I think with a deck like this, they will almost always translate to removal uh, because we are presenting creatures that need to be blocked yep yep absolutely yeah and you can always use these when people attack each other too um like you were saying before you know when you have a bunch of tpi tokens or whatever and your opponent has a bunch of uh mnemonic walls three toughness creatures or whatever and someone just says you know screw it and they throw their board in and oh easy blocks i just match up my things and then you just well i you just have those cards and you just say for one man i'm just gonna actually kill the thing that i care about and, and get that card. card back um <laughs> yeah it, it's just like Provoke is another card that I think is very similar. It's a green card for yeah. one and a green. You you untap it. You, I, I don't know if you untap it or not. You might untap it, but you force a creature to block. Um, and then you draw a card. So, like, that's another way to... It doesn't read as removal, but that's what it is. Yep. And it draws a card, a cantrips, which is, like, a really great place to be for cards like this. Um, so if you have a deck where you're presenting a lot of threats that people are going to need to get in front of, you can, always you can almost always engineer a scenario where it's going to be live. Um, and that's not even counting for like the other players at the table attacking each other like yeah. like ag like people are i think with the turn with with how well combo decks have been doing um i think people are going to be kind of recalibrating aggro decks a little bit yeah um, well the behavior of them is the main thing there's a lot of aggro yeah decks play, a lot of aggro players playing extremely greedy by trying to mm -hmm. get some sort of head start on like the mid-range and control decks and ultimately sure. that leads to those decks deploying their answers in ways that keep them alive instead of uh, actually keeping yep. the combo players in check. And, um, and the open face gambit of an aggro deck is that you are trying to do something fast in yep. where you have to reduce a lot of people's life totals. And the one place where you can do it, where you're only going to have one person trying to stop you, is if you mm -hmm. go after the combo player. In fact, like when I'm playing mid-range and control, I'll let an aggro player develop all sorts of crazy shit if they continue yeah. to attack them. Um, and then it does come down to this sort of like, you know, like I'll, I'll even defend their stuff if they're trying to yep. kill the combo player, right? Um, I'll deploy my counter spells to try and help them, um, knowing that I will have to go toe to toe with them. But guts like, you know, decks like gut, you know, they, they have the ability to punch through so hard in, mm -hmm. into that late game that you're not losing by not going after the combo player to the mid-range. Yeah, I have a lot of thoughts about playing aggro in a competitive it, environment, it, a multiplayer. It's, it, it's, it's stuff like the way that I like to do it is to uh, attack one person until they're dead. 
Uh, yep, yep. that's going to yield, in my opinion, the best results, because a lot of times you'll find when you're playing an aggro deck and you kind of split attacks a little bit, is that you're always going to be like a few points short of actually like I killing agree. something that killing yeah. somebody that matters. So like you just need to pick somebody and you, you need to take you need to make that decision early. It does and depend, just like commit though, to it. Right. We need it to does be careful. depend. It sure does. Yeah, we need to be careful um, that like if we're going after some like, for example, some combo decks cannot win mm -hmm. without certain things in play for a turn. So, for example, yeah. if you see a Gretchen player and they spend a whole turn cycle and they're like low life, they're like not drawing cards, they spend a whole turn cycle not deploying, you know, anything, then really you know that their only lines are going to be to play a Strider Harness, play an yep. Untapper, you know, do these things, resolve a, a Freed from the Real, they have to do all these things to get through it, then yeah, you can let off the brakes on them and you can spend your turn hitting somebody else. But when they well, also have cons like two consider, consider this, <laughs> yeah, like like think about this, right? Um, so if you're just like it, kind of circle back what you were saying before. When you force players to commit resources in a disadvantageous way to to remain alive, um, that is a form of that's that's removal, right? Yep. Like, so what you're doing is you're streamlining what you're doing to again reduce the effectiveness of, of that player specific player's resources that frees up your actual interaction absolutely to use to stymie the other things that are going on Bingo. while you finish that player off and then you and then you pivot um or you hoard your resources like uh, an aggro yeah. player can hoard some removal some card draw yeah while they're being best case scenario people leeway. people take a couple turns not yeah. doing anything important and you can just like you don't have to cast any spells. You just have like, in this case, you have Golem or like another two or yeah. three power creature and you just attack for six. Um, yep. And Golem's path... a tough sell to block because you just get it back. Yeah, nobody's going to block this thing until it's late yeah. game and we've already completed the ring, right? Um, a lot yeah. of um, a lot of combo players, I think too, ought to be considering whether they, needing, they need to counter like a gut or they need to counter mm -hmm. like some sort of early pressure creature um, in, yep. from the command zone. Um, so that they can buy themselves time. Because uh, the difference, the damage differential on turn five with a gut is uh, 24 mm -hmm. damage if you counter it. Um, it's, sure. it's an enormous quantity of yeah. damage. It's like the difference between getting six in and getting 30 in. Um, and yeah. so there's going to be some of that as an adaptation too, because yeah, like Combo did very well um, in the tournament. It was uh, the ultimate winner of the tournament was that. It's something I've been saying literally nonstop for two and a half years that people get lost in the sauce and they forget to attack the combo player. They get greedy, they get distracted. There's all these other things going on. And um, yeah, and, and so yeah, it was, it was exactly as, as anticipated. Not, uh, you know, not that, you know, not, not that I'm um, some sort of seer or anything, but just because I've been playing right. CPDH enough to know that when the combo player doesn't get pressured, they win. Um, so. But not to get too lost here, let's get back into this. We yeah. got um, Vulturous Aven I brought in here for draw. Um, this card seems great in this deck. This is a yeah, um, like Knight's Whisper. It's an evasive um, threat. Evasive threat. Yeah, yeah this is a, like a, this is kind of like you're reading with Faceless Butcher. It's a 2-3 with flying for two mana because your yeah. the two mana uh, effect is draw two, lose two. Yeah. But it's also better because we're sacking Golem. And yeah, we the resource we Golem. lose with the exploit is is not a cost, really. Yeah. And what's actually kind of funny is you could even sack the Vulture Saven to Golem to get him back if you wanted. Um, so yeah. it's, it's doing yeah. a lot there. Um, it's kind of fun. I added Echoing Decay. This is a card that I've been playing in a lot of decks Yeah, right I think now. this card's actually quite good now. Yeah, yeah. yeah you tag Gut it's with always it, been like or good, you can tag like, Gut's tokens. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's it has good. a lot of play right now. Yeah, so I, I like this one. It plays as a sweeper. It also hits uh, tokens. So this is hitting yep. all the TPI tokens. It hits all the Abdel tokens. Echoing Decay yeah. from like a, like a, like a, a, a niche decent spell to like as good as echoing truth um in yeah. that you're you've it does a lot of the same things minus two minus two kills most of the untappers too so um yes, it does. which is the same rationale behind final flourish and then the other one that i was looking at is um is uh vicious offering both of these kill dargo yeah while also killing malcolm so yeah um, i i was going through like a big pile of like mono black cards that i had on my desk just to see like if anything kind of like uh inspired me in terms of like building a golem deck and, and those two cards i thought were, would be quite good is, yeah. is vicious offering and uh, final Flourish. and they're they're instant speed there's also all mm -hmm. of these here the spark harvest mutual destruction eaten alive bone shards annihilating glare what are your thoughts on these in this deck it's kind of like we i don't like a... them as much <sighs> so these are tough all of them. because <laughs> yeah they're they're generally a little bit weaker than what we want to do just by being with, with removal you want to be um able to react effectively so like there's a knock against them there they're also it's easy to overload on ways to like sacrifice golem because golem's like the one thing that we want to be sacrificing to all of these things but we don't like 90 cards that sacrifice a creature and like no. 
we can't cast we can't like get we going back food. and recast them like enough to like take advantage well of we don't have things. enough food for it like that's one of the yeah. things like like i think we're gonna you know we're at 64 cards here and we're we don't want to rapidly... be in a position where we have to sacrifice our first spirit gargantua to like cast a bone splinters right like that's not what we want to be, be doing um no yeah yeah absolutely so um with that said we need to get the fodder up here um yeah. and and and, and also I'm going to be looking at some of these other like generically good black cards like Doppy Horror, Doppy Slayer, Basilica mm -hmm. Spacer, pretty good. False Scourge, Tormented Soul, Changeling Outcast. We were talking about both of these cards being uh, great ways to, once we have the, um, the ring leveled up, being able to put the attempt on a Changeling Outcast and start hitting the whole table for 10% of their life total every turn unblockable. Mm -hmm insanely good um i i like these cards in general um yep. but i think that there's a lot of good reason i think vault scourge maybe no not so much uh here we could you know tormented soul also also shadow alley denizen yep um, i was gonna say that card is, this, this is another so card that's really really good god i've had people like kill this thing on site because they're like no i'm not gonna let you get yeah. fear for the rest of the game or you know is it fear mm. or intimidate yeah intimidate, intimidate. Yeah, yeah yeah um so I like this one. I like the Changeling Outcast. I like the Tormented Soul. Um, I like the Basilica Screecher, which basically... Importantly, you know, like, if we play, like, artifact creatures with... Uh, what is, Bring up a Vampire, the Vampire again. Uh, Shadow Alley Denizen. Oh, Shadow Alley Because if, if we give, like, an artifact creature Intimidate, then it's just basically unblockable except for artifacts. Um, yeah, your aura block. So that's a synergy we want to exploit. Where, where is it? No, Intim it? Intimidate is its color or artifact. Um, so yeah, black black creatures would be the case in, in this particular one. Because yeah, so yeah. it's like if a black creature enters, then if we give an artifact creature intimidate, then it cannot oh, be blocked. I, some oh, artifact sorry, creatures. I was describing intimidate. Yeah, so and yeah. it can't be blocked by artifact creatures and or creatures that share a color with it. So yeah, so like yeah. so like a colorless creature, you get a lot more value out of with a card like this. Oh, um, unblocked. And again, yeah, yeah. So well, except by artifacts, which I mean, yeah, TPI tokens, but that's pretty much it. Um, and you also dip into well i mean it's a whole like synergy rabbit hole like cranial plating like that kind of stuff um but yeah, uh yeah. yeah it's just something interesting yeah for sure um i you know i have uh, unearth in here i don't know that this is actually going to make the cut i'm looking at it and there's not a lot of hits um it's basically just a one mana way to get back Gollum. Um, without yeah. using Gollum has a one way, way to get him back, though it's on it's on himself. It is now. The one <laughs> thing about that is you're you're not wrong, right? That that is true. But it does take a creature, and the more we have to go into mm -hmm. like playing bad fodder creatures to support Gollum, the less I like it. So there are right? I, I I guess I wouldn't describe a lot of these creatures as bad necessarily. Like Lassitep Reaver, I mean, for example, a lot like, of... is a great fodder creature, but I don't think it's bad at all. Um, it's pretty low impact to me. Uh, like it's just, it's ultimately still just like, like none of these cards are going to be high impact, um, but they are very multifaceted in, in how they interact with mm. the rest of the deck. Interesting. They enable a lot of things. So that that's where the power level of these cards come from is they make other cards more powerful. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you sacrifice something on the front end to enhance other, other aspects. Mm -hmm. A lot of these cards, like for example, um, yeah, you look at like and like I said skin. before, like like cards like like Clay Revenant, Specimen, and and Skeleton, mm -hmm. they are things that can just keep coming back and yep. holding the ring. Yeah, and there are things we can discard too, which is yeah, really it's nice. it's it's inevitability. Yeah. I think which yeah. is really important. So we've got those um, Rotten Reunion is one that I wanted to add to the main deck here too. That's mainly just for um, graveyard hate, but it's also two mm -hmm. bodies that we can use to yeah to get back Gollum. Yeah, I like that card. Um, That's a really good card for this deck. I added the Dothy Slayer, Dothy Horror um, cards. I these cards continually overperform for me. Um, yeah. The ability to just hit every single turn. You, you know, you talk the Philosophy of Fire. This two mana two two is going to get in for like eight, ten, you yeah. know, crazy amounts. If we ever forge it up, put counters on it, put a bone splitter on it, tempt it with the ring it's it's a it's just a lot um and mm -hmm. they're giving us an infinite way to get the initiative and the monarch back basically just like yep. always guaranteed to do it so i'm i'm bullish on these ones and this is where we sort of are like um you know skinny dipping between the space of of like just good black deck and good black cards and direct synergy with Gollum. um mm -hmm. so that that's one thing you know that we we'll want to be thinking about like is shadow alley denizen like how off like it's filling this curve out nicely which is actually really good 
Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually pretty pretty nice. We have a nice low curve here, but we are going to have to get some lands in here, and we need more food as well. I don't think Rod Tide Garganta is going to make it in at all. Um, yeah, I agree. I had Gloomfang Mauler in here as a card that I wanted to play with, but again, like the qual, this card's really sick, but um, it's very expensive. On yeah, I don't see. I don't think we're gonna. It gets Witch's like Cottage, um, but I I just. I'm going to leave it in here for now. Goring Warplow is probably not going to make it. Probably not, no. Um, Dross Golem is a card I've been very impressed with, too. Um, I like this card, actually. Yeah, it's an evasive 3-2, yeah. usually for no more than 3, oftentimes for 0. Um, I had Whale yeah. in them here uh, as a way to, um, as a sweeper, but also so as a what I really spell. like, Yeah, what I really like about this card is that, so... Let me put it this way: like it's tough to justify devoting a lot of slots in your deck to things that just do like like uh, end the festivities or uh, yeah. electricery, like those sorts of cards. When they're good, they're great, but when they're not, they're, they're really they're bad. They're, they're um, dead, completely dead. But this card is modal, which is, yes. and or you could do both, um, yeah, or both. One sided yeah. wrath, you know, for like a. T it's just for a creature deck, like being able to regenerate and blow out a, a, a cannonade or something like that is going to be a big game. It's massive. Um, so I like a card like this, yeah. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan of Whale the Nim. Um, hey, and it kill it kills Gollum in a pinch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It does kill Gollum in a pinch. Yeah, we can make that happen. Um, yeah. So that's a good one. Uh, do we already have these in here through Supernatural Stamina um, and Undying Evil? Uh, we have a, a number of yep, them, not do. all of them. Yeah, so we yeah. got both of these ones here are in. Okay. Um, those are good. We've got the Dig Up the Body, which actually. It should be in the deck. Like dig up the body is a very good dig up's card. Good, yeah. Um, question is going to be how much space do we have for that? I think because we're going to have to sure. make cuts. I, yeah, I am feeling like there, nested course. shambler is like one of the better. Nested shambler like is I think that card's good here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, serrated scorpion probably not. It's not making yeah, another body. Impressive. Uh, carrier. So there's certain ones of these that where where you actually are left with a worse thing when it dies. So Carrier yeah. Thrall, Discord, and Piper are both actually you're less with a wor you get a worse thing. Whereas Doomed Dissenter, you play a one one and you upgrade it to a two two, and I mm -hmm. actually like that quite a bit more. So like, like we could also I, I'm I'm generally pretty high on Doomed Dissenter as like a, a sacrifice target if you're in the market for that kind of thing. Um, yep, here we go. Like yeah, the Butcher Ghoul is another one um, that I think is really good. But yeah, it, it comes back and and granted like. We're going to be using them a lot of times for sacrifice fodder, but something with two power again yeah. is going to is going to be effective on the battlefield regardless in a lot of situations. As opposed um, to sacking, yeah. paying two for a two one, sacking it and getting a one one, or yeah. or in this case like playing a two one, sacking it and getting a zero one. Like I'm not as excited right. about those because those game pieces aren't as useful as like yeah. Upgrading and and if you, and if you look at carrier thrall, like because we're going to be using them a lot of the time as like creatures that play to the battlefield and not as like a resource to use in other ways i think like the kid the, the, the scion we make out off of carrier thrall is going to be a lot less valuable yeah um, yeah i agree there was an, yeah. another couple of cards i wanted to look at too we have <laughs> Glenn, this, like, awesome. this is a card that i'm playing in almost all my black decks right now because it regularly gets so big um so yeah this golem makes this into whew. a 3-6 doesn't it well um Just by itself no, so so the way that works is that it's um because because evolve is only going to do it once per time that something enters where it's bigger. Right. So gluttonous slug is going to come out, and it's going to be. Yeah. Like... So what I'm saying is like even if we have nothing else going, like so we play gluttonous slug, cast it throne. becomes a one four. Yeah, and then uh, you know we do some things. It doesn't evolve because we're making a bunch yeah, of one, yeah. to, one power creatures, whatever. Cast Golem again, again it becomes a two five. Cast Golem yeah. again, it still has lesser power, so it becomes a three six. And that's like a three six menace. Like a, a six toughest creature is really big, especially yeah. when it's black. Well, dodge like slot of removal. Two mana, one four menace that is gonna get bigger is also good. Yeah. In fact, like if the way that Golem works is that every time we cast it, so Golem will alone bring this thing up to a three yeah. six menace. For two, just golem, yeah. just golem things, right? Because the power and like, um, and just circle back to what I what I I always come back to this, just like things you can do to dissuade being attacked, having your life total just like incidentally chipped down, um, 
high toughness, low mana value creatures are a great way to do that. Amazing. Uh, and yeah. it's really great when you can just like sit back on this thing and block for a little bit and then grow it up and then just get aggressive with it. Yeah, totally. Um, totally. Yeah, I think it's a good card. So I added a couple of cards while we were talking there. We had um, yeah. the, uh, the, let's see, where are they? Falconrath Noble. Um, seems quite good with all the sacrifice stuff, yeah. um, as well mm -hmm. as just being like a generically amazing black card. Um, mm -hmm. This one here is going to go in under, where's life gain? Um, is that life gain? I got to, I got to, yeah, come on, huh, huh, huh. <laughs> <laughs> push it up. Um, where's life gain? Where is Gary? Gary, Gary. Oh, there it's he is. The very bottom. Very bottom. There we go. Um, and yep. then uh, drop this under creatures as well. Um, draw Scollum under creatures. Demir Houseguard actually is this is another great like great deck for it. Yeah, this have, gets a lot of stuff, doesn't it? We have a lot of And it has force. a sack outlet. And it's got oh, yeah. fear. Yeah, this card's great. It hits Throw it in there. It does everything. It hits uh, Thorn of the Black Rose, it hits Vicious Battle Rager, it hits uh, yep. Slum Reaper, Chain Devil, it hits Siphon Mind. Uh, this is just like a very staple black card, which we don't actually have Siphon Mind in here. This is Yeah, um, you could Yeah. We, yeah, that's a great example of like a card that is perfect for this deck because everything that the card does is something that we want to be doing just in different scenarios so yep, it's like yep. the most modal thing it, yeah it's beautiful it's it's a super super good card for this deck undying evil here this is another form of uh, protection yep. we'll get that in there so at this point i think i've found all the things i really want to play i'd love to have darkness in here um, i would too I, that, that was one thing i was going to say is amongst these cards that we've left out i think darkness, darkness is the one that darkness I, would, I would strongly such a, encourage such a dumb magic card and like and, i always say like when you're I, I have a lot of opinions about fogs. I love playing them because people don't respect them. Um, well, they 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 flip games and they end games. Yeah. I if you if it's you all get a huge... chance to, I don't I don't want to spoil it, but I played a Thrill Parasite yeah. game not long ago <laughs> where opponent produced a sixteen power lethal creature and uh, did not have an extra mana up for a counter spell, and I just darknessed. And they yeah. lost the game. It was it was I so think, simple. It was fogs, one mana, <laughs> one mana to cause somebody to lose. Holy and shit. like, and that's just like it's like a, you know a, a general case for a card like that. Yeah, yeah. I think that fogs are at their best in aggressive decks like this. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. The the tempo you gain by blanking a combat step when you have forward momentum as the aggressive deck is is like way more powerful than just like being a control deck trying to stay alive. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Which is what those decks use Fox for, if they do at all. I like Gretchen, for example, where we're on like Moments Peace oh, or yeah. something like that. Or um, which is like very effective to like again when you, it's more, it's almost better in your graveyard than it is in your hand yes. because people know it's there. Again, it's something that messes with people's heads and makes them make bad decisions. It does. Um, like they should be making the person use it. Nobody, nobody wants to lose their combat step to a Fog, no. so nobody's going to make Gretchen use it. No. Um, yeah. Unless like you're a really savvy aggro player, in which case you'll just like be willing to sacrifice that one attack step to gain leverage later in the game which will, is what people should be doing yeah uh, but sure. um when you're trying to kill people and not trying to die um it gives you so much freedom and how you can allocate your attackers like you can just turn everything sideways uh you don't yeah. have to worry about leading things up to block you don't have to worry about full yolo um, just yeah exactly you, you have so much freedom in how, in what you choose to do and that's not even guaranteed that people are going to attack you and make you use the darkness um depending on like what you establish as how you play the deck up to that point, people might just assume that you're just like doing what you would normally do and just like, and just like playing to a gambit anyway, just like, it's like anticipating that no one's going to attack you. And so you're making a ballsy play where, where in reality, like if they decide to like say that you're full of it and that you have nothing, then they'll get blown out. Um, but yeah, fogs are awesome in aggressive decks, and more people should play them. Yeah, um, especially a color shifted one that is half the yeah. mana of the normal fog. Um, like nobody's playing around this, and um, yep. and they and technically they shouldn't. It's one card in your deck. I yep. don't think you should. Yeah, it's literally, literally the only black card that'll do that. Yeah, it's the only black card that does this. So now we're gonna have to make some painful cuts here. Um, we I have will. 85 cards. This is nothing new to us, though. So we need to open up slots for, let's just uh, throw this in here. It's probably a 34 land deck, although we don't have any mana rocks. Interesting. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, something that we might swamps. be able to do is, is like I mentioned before, like try and find cards that fit our game plan that also generate treasures. They might in a vacuum be like less powerful cards than what we might be doing. But again, like we're playing to a specific kind of play pattern. And um I think cards that generate treasures while also supplementing what we're trying to be doing with Gollum anyway, like be aggressive and like 
hold the ring uh, are good places to be. So if, you know, we find that we need more sources of, of ramp or whatever, then like we can explore that. But I don't think that ramping is as good as a lot of people think it is in a lot of situations. It depends. Um, I yeah. think playing, play, I think, well, I think playing on curve is more important. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Right. So yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not like one of those like I'm going to start building my deck and first thing I do is put ten mana rocks in or whatever. You know. Oh, that's in fact, I, I I don't play with <laughs> mana rocks most of the time. Yeah, um, yeah. Unless I, I'm doing something very specific where I need them. Yeah. It's it's kind of an interesting thing. I I really like one of the reasons I gravitated towards like TPI and towards Thrall is that both of them are decks where you get to do those things and they still do something. Even they reward you, you for it. Them, yeah. Right. Like. And that's where you're not, you're never punished for playing them. You like, you yeah. never have that bad top deck in the late game. We're like, Oh, there's my arcane signet. Super cool. Mm -hmm. um, it's like, no, this is still a, this is still a yeah. trigger. Um, Cause we're not looking is... to go over the top of people with this no. deck. Like no. we're not, we're not looking to ramp over the top of the game. We're just trying to present car. We're trying to use our mana every turn. Yep. That's that. That's what we should be doing. So the things that I'm seeing here are um, that, that aren't probably, that, that are like ancillary, it seems like, are probably mm -hmm. like fake your own death. Um, sure. Maybe even Whale of the Nim. I know this card is really good, but like, is it, it's, it's, it's really good. A fake your own death though, the thing is, is two mana, right? And I know you, you get the mana back, but yeah. we could throw that one in considering. There's also Kaya's Ghost Form, which, um, now how is this templated? So you exile it. So Kaya's Ghost Form yeah. is one of these ways where we can get a lot of value out of an undying creature. Yeah, it lets us rebuy the unearth stuff and no, or, or and like uh, anything that would exile otherwise. I, I also think too, there's this other element where like, um, like how many people are gonna try and stop us when we go Kaya's Ghost Form on a, on a first Fear Garganta? Like, are they gonna kill the first mm -hmm. Fear Garganta that's gonna die anyways? So I feel like it's very reliable. Something, That's kind of what I'm thinking. Just like there, it does a lot of corner case things too. Like it influences the game in a lot of small ways. Yeah. For example, like if you look at Kai's Ghost Form or Astronaut's Intervention, like they trigger when like the thing is exiled. So it gets around things like Journey to Nowhere or Oblivion Ring. Um, it gets around. Astronaut's Intervention is a little less exciting because it does come back to our hand. It goes to your hand. But, right. it, but, it, but it can be used aggressively with and plus two it, power. And putting it back in our hand also allows us to loot it away. Yep, that's true. So it's really like... Um, looting it. So this card is reading like, okay, so say it's a first fear Garganta. Say the first time around, we loot it into the graveyard and then we swing mm -hmm. and we're drawing a card. We're getting some pressure off of it. We cast yep. Ashnod's intervention on it. Um, it uh, exiles because it's unearth. And uh, then the replacement effect of Ashnod's altar is going to take it and put it back into our hand w while buffing it. Right. Yep. Um, and then next turn, we loot it into the graveyard again and we get to do it mm -hmm. again. And some of these yeah. effects would be like Grixis Slave Driver. That's like strong because you're actually getting like bodies every time this thing leaves um, yep. as well. First Fear is going to be cards. Um, something like uh, this one is also Encore sacrifices them. Oh, you're exiling yeah. it from your graveyard. Right. Yeah, you're making tokens. You're not actually like putting the card uh, itself into play. Yeah. Um, so that's but so like this one probably could go. Yeah, maybe right. the Encore stuff could, and, and we could just, like, take that. The um, Encore is really, like, there's a lot of bodies, but... It so, is, but on the other hand, like, it's less synergistic. And if we can find other ways that are more synergistic to create bodies, then maybe we should do that. Prior, um, I don't think it's something where we need to make, like, a huge glut of bodies right. at once. Just we need to have, like, things accessible to us. We don't need, like, okay, right. you know, unearth this thing, I'm going to make three elf tokens. Hooray for me, you So know? Briar Blade um, Adept in particular doesn't leave any bodies behind. But you know what does right. is the, um, is the um, where is it, our Exquisite Huntmaster. It actually does mm -hmm. leave bodies behind. It does. Um, but it is five mana from the yard. It's, it's, it's mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh... yeah, it's very mana intensive. But again, like we don't need like a million tokens to sacrifice. We just need like three the of them. One. Is we just be amazing. It's, we, it's like <laughs> we just need to have like one when we need it. So yeah. like that's why I think that it doesn't. We don't need to focus on like cards that generate a, a lot of bodies. Just mm -hmm. like things that replace themselves that we can kind of nickel and dime an advantage out of and just like accumulate resources that way. It doesn't need to be a big splashy thing. We just no. need to be able to cast and, and, and get Gollum back when we need to. And it doesn't require a lot of tokens or yeah. fodder to do that. And, and my eye really so we, we can like... we, we can avoid playing a clunky card like Huntmaster because like there's many other ways to do it better, I think. Mm, interesting. The only thing I'm concerned about is this is one of the zones that we have to mm -hmm. like guard because there needs to be some sources 
of this and actually we're missing sure, a but, few but things here also like think of think about this is that like we have like specifically designated fodder but we can use any creature we want to do this that's true i just want to minimize the amount of times i have to sack something that i don't want to sack you know that's yeah, I know, one but, of the but it, it's not like like a zenter and bandit technically is fodder too um so actually let, let's like broaden our, our definition zenter and bandit horde robber these are fodder cards um something like a butcher ghoul is fodder um, the only things we don't want to be sacrificing the only things that like not that's really not fodder are the creatures that like we really want to put the ring on yeah we you can know but, but the ring could go on anything okay, so yeah. it doesn't really make a huge difference what about night squad commando this seems pretty good i don't like it you don't like it i don't as like much? it no it's a two mana two a three mana two three that makes a body if we attack so Which like it's not always attacking. Right, so. but there's sometimes where it might not be turned on. So it, it has a fail case. Um, for a card that's not like impressive when it's turned on, if that makes sense. Um, like I think that Three. Wake Dancer is a much more impressive card than this. Oh, that's because a four creature Yeah, Wake Dancer. Right. Is I, I think creatures are gonna be dying with, with, with the same frequency that like Night Squad Commando is gonna be active and it makes a zombie and not so a soldier. He, here's the here's the reason why I like Night Squad Commando more. So Wake sure. Dancer is four power across two bodies for three mana. Yep. And just to be clear, Wake Dancer is this one. Something has to die for this. Yeah, to happen. more of a trigger. Yep. But what's interesting here is that um, is that I would rather sack a one one and keep a two three. Sure. Than sack a two two and keep a two two. But the two twos are better individually if we're not sacking them. But the point of having them in the deck is to be sacked. So there's a part of me mm -hmm. that thinks that the Night Squad Commando actually is the card that is superior to the Wake Dancer because of what we're sacking. Or even, like, for that matter, the sure. Hobbling Zombie. Because this is a 2-2 two -two Death Touch. I like, so I like Hobbling Zombie. Uh, but this is lot, when it actually. dies. So it's actually, there's another yeah. awkward thing. So this has to die. But we, what we really don't, we don't want... So this is another funny thing. We don't want the Decayed Token. When Decayed Tokens dies. are not good for us. No, yeah. we, we want the Decay... We, we would prefer that it was, like it was like the other way around. So, so all, all mm -hmm. of those are kind of weird that way. I like Wake So here's, Dancer, here's but... a thought. Do we like like one mana death touch one ones in a deck like this? Um, like typhoid rats. Yeah. There's a bunch of them. Um, yeah, there are. In fact, Battlefly swarm is a card. I really, really like um, just, gets in every turn and then when you need to be defensive you can hold up death touch or you know what even something like sturge like a sturge one one flyer that... for one that you sacrifice a draw card yeah like is this a space that's like worth exploring like if we if we think that like uh like shadow creatures are good like these creatures are great because they can block you know they can block I, and while I hear that, I feel like our job is attacking. Like that's the role that yeah. we're, no, that these, we're these, doing. And these cards, well, I guess what I'm saying is that like they're, they're modal in that way. Their, their primary function is to attack and people don't like to block these creatures. Um, so they have like a weird like social form of evasion because yeah. people just like are of naturally averse to trading with a one with that touch creature. Um, it feels and bad. then if we, <laughs> it feels very bad. And then if we need to, we can just put them on defense. So again, like it's, I'm big on modality. I think that a lot of great like avenues of card and resource advantage in this format are gained through modality and like finding cards that function under several different contexts at I once agree. in the same, in the same deck. Mm -hmm. And I think that like, I don't know, maybe just because like this sort of a deck is so open-ended, like I I'm curious if like exploring that, like really cheap death toucher route is, is, is a valid way to go, particularly because like they also are low power creatures that hold the ring really well because yep. like with, with the evasion that the ring grants it uh you know excludes creatures with greater power from blocking so like if you have a one power creature that's kind of where you want to be um because it's the lowest power you can have while still being able to trigger the fourth mode on the ring yep. to drain your opponents for three so yeah having the, the... like a one one death touch that is is good until you get to that point um I don't know. Might might be worth looking at. In, indeed, I, I the 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 question is, and and maybe this is partially where like I have a difficult time, mm -hmm. like drifting away from some of like the best cards we can possibly play in black, and those are the ones that kind of look like they would have to get cut, or you cut protection, or you cut 
like so what i'm talking about is like some of these like some of the top end stuff like your staunch throne guards your thorn of the black roses your vicious battle ragers um and if it's not that is it vulturous haven maybe like dross golem could potentially go like it becomes quite hard right if we're looking at these one drops mm -hmm. and thinking like what are we cutting to make this work are we cutting good draw spells are we cutting we're probably cutting like are off the top of my head we're probably cutting join the maestros join that the maestros. Great with the ring right um it's like an easily blockable thing it's just like kind of yeah, I guess the way I see this is join the maestro. Like it's it's a play. synergistic card, but it's yeah, very it's you, very expensive, and like the tokens don't it is the expensive. Ring well. So like, it's very. Expensive. Why wouldn't we have cheaper ways to make smaller tokens? I I actually think that the expense of this card is part of the big problem, right? Like yeah. like we can sat golem to it, and we get to tempt, um, and we make eight power, or, uh, you know, eight power and six toughness, you know, for five mana, which is a good rate. Right. It's a very good rate, especially on two black bodies, um, uh, but. You know, is this anywhere near like, you know, getting the initiative? Is this anywhere near Gary? Is this anywhere near getting the monarch? Is it anywhere right. near like even Grix, you know, Grix's slave driver? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but mm -hmm. I will want to pay attention to this one in, in the games and playing if we find that we that this would be good. So let, let's toss it into considering. Yeah. And actually, you know what? Even more so because I'm getting a hunch about that card. I'm going to put it in the sideboard. Um, okay. I also added Bone Splitter while we were talking. Yeah, to I was going to say, like, Bone yeah. Splitter is something we should play, and yeah. I think Cranial Plating is something we should play as well. So, Cranial Plating, we only have six artifacts, though. So, I don't know that we well, can actually. So, we can easily rectify this with cards like um, uh, uh, Vault Scourge. Um, we could. Those sorts of things. Because to... Vault Scourge is, 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 I think, again, a really good card because it's a 1 1 with Evasion and Lifelink. Um, that comes down on turn one, and just like chips and damage. Chip damage is really important. People like to say that like aggro decks need to be built to be able to deal ninety damage to the board they don't. In, in Commander, but they you need don't. to deal like thirty-five um, or forty. Uh, yeah, they do, they, a, the a whole, fraction. The whole ninety so much... damage thing is like a, to a totally yeah. weird misnomer that I keep hearing, where it's like they people need to use deal it to write damage. off aggro decks all the time. And it's like and, and... what? Yeah, it's like no, there's other yeah. people swinging. You know, like there is so much incidental damage. It's it's insane. Yeah. Like, People's life totals just naturally trend down do. a lot of the time. They use a and the like, deep analysis. They cast Knight's yeah. Whisper. They cast yeah. Snuff Out. Like today, and, we saw Yalaran cast a Knight's Whisper, a Snuff Out, and um, a Knight's Whisper and a Snuff Out. So he started the game at 24 life. Mm -hmm. And did that yeah. help me kill him? 110%. <laughs> and that's why like, I find value in a lot of cards like, like uh, Vault Scourge, like, yeah. like Sturge. Like things that come down and they're tough to block and they just do a damage here, damage there. And it just like yeah. just softens people up a little bit. And again, like when you attack people and start reducing their life total, even if it's in small amounts, it affects how they play the game. It does. It does. <laughs> it does. No. And, and, you know, you can't overlook stuff like that. Something that we haven't explored too much right now, by the way, that I don't know if it's something that we want uh, is cards like um, what's it? Something Vivisector. It's a two two for two when oh, I think you control dies. Oh, Vivisector. Um, yeah, the there's Lord a classic Iwitch, cards that do this. The, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, there's a but whole sacrifice out. They're cheap things that come down and 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 do it. Um, yeah. Nefarious Imp. We, Nefarious Imp is, is probably like one that's worth considering significantly just because have... it buys. Yeah, Nefarious Imp is really good. We don't even have like Carrion Feeder in here. Um, although the thing oh, with yeah. Carrion Feeder that I think is tough, and I've played a lot of Aristocrats, so like I, mm -hmm. I, I have a strong sense of like what what problems I've run into with those decks, and I, I'm nervous about going too much into that realm because mm -hmm. those decks need a very specific set of things in play to accomplish the very powerful thing that people dream sure. about with that, which is you need your sacrifice outlet, your payoff, and your food all in play at the same time. And mm -hmm. when any one of those gets disrupted, then kind of our whole thing starts to look really weak. Um, and so yeah. I, I like carry and feeder because carry and feeder is gonna come down turn one, turn two, we can sacrifice, we can play Gollum and sacrifice it and immediately yeah. tempt onto our, on, onto our um, carry. Yeah, Gollum, Gollum greases the wheels a lot with these sorts of cards, just because like we always have something that we want to sacrifice and it's Gollum. So, um, yeah, I, you know, the more that I think about this, the more I just want to go like super low to the ground. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Like, like cut like, the grindy stuff. Like, like keep the good, keep the obviously very powerful cards, like, like for Sphere Gargantua. Um, and I'm sure there's other ones. Which is low curve. There that... We're discarding it. Right? Yeah, we're exactly. We're, we're, we're going to unearth it most of the time. In fact, um, but just... like cut, 
cut cut things like scrap work rage like the big clunky things um and granted like i this is just like something that just struck me right now like as i'm thinking more about cards like like vault scourge right like that's kind of what spurred it is like we just want a lot of things that yeah, we let's, can let's, um... move the ring around to and like move and just have equipment on things diversify threats because like when you start to think of the ring as an equipment i think it kind of like recontextualize a lot of like what we might want to be doing um I, like when you think about how we... effective bone splitter cranial plating and, and again like cranial plating i think is absolutely worth including because it's very easy to build towards we just include like vault of whispers yeah. dark soul citadel like a lot of incidental stuff um you need you need uh, 15 artifacts in your deck is the math i've done to make i don't think that's tough plutter. to do we're not going to get there in this deck though um we're at six so we get two in our lands with um dark steel citadel and vault of whispers so that's eight vault with mm -hmm. vault scourge would get us up to nine um, and the, the trouble is, is that, um, like we're also cutting Scrapwork Rager. We're probably, well, it opens up if, if, if so we can play like, like, uh, what's the battle fan from mom, like the indestructible mm -hmm. thing yep, gives a power. That. Um, so like diversifying threats with equipment and turning like our cheapo little guys that are already like, not. We're already just incentivizing people to block, like with like small death touch creatures or flyers that fly over um unblockable stuff uh i mean we're we're kind of back to where you know when i first when we first talked about this like, like my hunch was that it was going to look like this deck um which sure. is like in passageway seer the way that i ended up building it that that was um that has proven to be just like far superior to the way that i had it before and super effective yeah is focusing on yeah, i think this kind of a shell i think is a lot better with golem if i'm being honest like like we play this stuff and a lot of like the good sacrifice like there's ways to weave in the sacrifice things that we, we want to be doing what if we do this what if we um well, let's just um let's just try something here yeah um this is this is what we're here to do chat is i mean to... maybe i'm crazy i i love a good linear aggro deck if i'm being honest um I, so i mean it's it's this is the way that i was initially envisioning it but then like there were so many elements of like grindy sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, and this is like, going to be a the more I think about what the ring does, like with the loot and the damage, I like it a lot more as something that we're not like using to supplement like grind your elements, but more just like to further hammer people to death, <laughs> you know, like, like yeah. using the loot to like enable things or just like discard drunk cards, or just draw an extra card or whatever, like dig. Uh, yeah. rather than just like let's play madness synergies and maximize the discard just like let's just draw a card get something out of our hand and just like keep going you know interesting and and yeah. so what this would mean is that um because if we go back because, and like look at this this uh this one right here let's we'll switch this commander over and i i will say this like about using a lot of these small creatures is that like when we're dealing with equipment like we're, we're when we're trying to go with maybe like a more equipment centric strategy like what i'm talking about um it's not something where we're gonna like play out all of our one drops and turn all of them sideways like we're gonna leave a there are a number of them that just won't attack that we'll just mm -hmm. have back on defense which is why the death touch creatures i think serve a good purpose but also like the ones that we're not attacking with we can just sacrifice to golem and just move the ring around it's, to the ones it, that matter like kind of as long as, we have a, as long as we have a density of these creatures We'll always have stuff to play with. Uh, so it's quite you know, funny that if you were to just put Gollum in this deck, it would slap. Um, mm -hmm. Like, like you just don't change anything and you just do this. Like, yeah. th because because what we're looking at here, this this um, formatting of like fifteen one drops, and I've done the math on this. It's very consistent to go one drop, one drop, one drop, or one drop, two drop, three drop. Like it, it does this this thing over and over and over again. Or you go like one drop, yeah. two drop, one drop, two drop um you know uh like turn one turn two turn three um and it's it's like a it's kind of a like a like a package just like big blue right um in a sense yeah. and so the question is what here changes that that allows us to lean into some of the ring stuff because what we're looking at with the ring is is there's there's some other stuff that we want to be doing like there's ninjas that we want to be putting in there and these are all up and down the curve so they they probably fit in like this is a two mana card this yeah is a two mana some card. of the yeah maybe not all the ninjas but uh like well, I, mean, I think at least at least the six three and the five five i i think well I, but like, these ones are the cheap ones we want the cheap oh ones, sure sure sure. Right? okay i see what you're saying this is yeah, a one yeah, drop right, right, this right. is a two drop this is a two drop this is a four drop four drops a little harder uh like okiba yep. 
probably still goes in. I mean, because the thing is, the ninjas are the absolute best way in, in a lot of mm -hmm. ways for us to trigger Gollum because it doesn't involve us having to recast Sacrifice Gollum something. by sacking something or recast it with command tax. So this yeah. is like all these cards would go in there. So let's do that really quick. So let's, and thanks chat for sticking with us on this. We're, we're, this is. Yeah, uh, we're taking a, a 180 here. Yeah, yeah. It's, it, but it's important to be able to do this kind of a thing. Damn, this is all yeah. by alphabetical. So there's no way for me to bulk. Like the more, the more I think about like, if you look at Gollum's text box and he's like, what does this creature ask me to do on a fundamental level? It's just play a ton of creatures. Yeah, it does. Um, That's it. That's really it. And it's, yeah. it's the same as, it's the same as Passageway Seer in a lot of ways because Passageway Seer is like you want a lot of initiative, yeah. a lot of creatures in an initiative deck, right? They're very similar. And it's why it was the first thought I had was yeah. like, this is like what we want to be building towards. Um, so yeah. these ones here all slap. And the funny thing is that with like 35 lands and no rocks, you hit land drops in this so regularly. Mm -hmm. um, of course, with Passageway Seer, you get a land drop on four, which just feels insane. Um, right. But yeah, so battle, let's see. So... What are the cards that have to come out to make this happen? Is it these axes, except for probably Bonesplitter? so dark steel? Bonesplitter would stay. I would, I would, yeah. I don't think like we need to prize particularly like the plus two power ones, like equipment, like um, uh, what is it? Um, like you can see in this deck, uh, we don't have cranial plating shit. in this one either. Is, yeah. Uh, what's the what's the thing? Uh, gold vein pick, gold like vein like pick? those sorts of cards. I think those cards are really good here because again, like they keep us, they, they allow us to keep momentum um, and keep playing things out because we're not playing ramp spells or we're not like accelerating our mana. We're just like playing on curve. So yeah. letting us playing ahead of curve like that, you know, we're already playing on hitting our land drops. So ramping is more meaningful when we're able to do that. Um, and we don't yeah. need to have like do nothing mana rocks, charcoal diamonds in our deck or anything like that. Um, Mm -hmm. the question and even is like gonna be even like frying like, blade maybe but i right. don't know those are all going to be adding more more stuff to this but like blade of so... battle fan i think is a really great card in a shell like this um it's like a, just a proactive like protection spell that are are we so one way we could look at this too is that we could trade raw draw spells for stuff that we cast from the graveyard mm-hmm so like one way to look at it is instead of having a lot of cards in hand. Do you do you have like Sanitarium Skeleton Specimen? And, they're not uh, in this deck. No. Revenant. I would add them. I think those cards are quite good. And the here. reason, and I think we can actually, because one of the things that you'll see here is that like in Passageway Seer, you don't get any evasion from your command zone. Right. But, but we do here, so we can actually mm -hmm. change the nature of these creatures because some of them are like mm, you know they're they're just one mana one one evasion creatures. But in this deck where yeah. you buff them up with a forge and you give them weapons, like it starts mm -hmm. to be a lot. So like eye collector could go, um, as long as yeah. as long as we're preserving this curve of well, fifteen before, 12, yeah. You know, it's like, just about like prioritizing like which ones are the better one drops, right? Like Nightshade Stinger, for example, would probably be the one I'd cut before Eye Collector, just because Nightshade Stinger is like the worst one. Um, um, Eye yeah. Collector at least like has has an effect. Sturge uh, also can't damage. block. And the thing is, is yes, right, but we can patch this one in. You can, but how often are we going to do that? Right, like I think most of the time we're going to just be using, like, because this is going to come out for a Sanitarium Skeleton. Basically. So again, like this is a card it's that like is good to put is, is good to turn into a threat because when people point removal at it, we just blank it and just draw a card off of it and mm. just re-equip something else. That's why I like this card. Um, Ooh, Confessor is nice here too because we can yeah, uh, Menace Creature. Through, that, well, yeah, and Ninja. Kicker is great for the same reason that Kicker is great yeah. in like limited formats yeah. because you just you can you can just have that option, you know. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, typhoid Rats can come out. Um, we can find better than that. Unwilling Ingredient is insane. Yeah, another good. menace creature. Menace is really good. Bone picker is another card we've we've we um skipped on. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can get rid of the eye collector because we need basically three slots for right um, oh, for those three re yeah returning so creatures. It's uh it's sanitarium, sanit sanitarium skeleton skeleton, and then we have persistent specimen. Yep. And then we have and chat here. Uh, I'm gonna drop the link for you all. Um, on this list here in the chat so that you can follow along with what we're doing here. Um, and I'm going to make sure to add you here to its dear reader. Mm -hmm. um, and y'all can tell I've done that a couple times. Um, so we've got those two are going to go in the one drop into the one drop. And then we have one more, which is the clay revenant. 
and this is going to go into the one drop. Okay, so that preserves that. Now in here, we're going to have a lot of creatures that actually hurt us. The Fledgling Jin and the, um, and the what's the other one? Is it, uh, there's, a, there's a few here that look kind of mopey, and they're really good in passageways here. They're going to be less good here. Like the Fledgling Jin can go, the Foul Imp can go. These are yeah. two mana tutus with flying that have a downside on them. Um, mm -hmm. The Vampire Interloper could go. Um, it doesn't block. Um, yeah. So I'm, while you're doing this, I'm looking actually at like equipment that we can use. Dagger Down. There's a couple that I too. find. Yeah, there's a number of them I find quite interesting. Um, and granted, like cranial plating will obviously be turned on in a big way by including a lot of these cards. Um, let oh. me know when you're ready, and, and we can kind of look at a couple. So yeah, let's just get a couple more things in here that we because we want to mm -hmm. basically bat, we want to like uh, equalize the decks in a sense, like bring them sure. to parity. So there's a couple things like the the Chain Devil and the, the Slum Reaper, which are all just like so much better in this deck than mm -hmm. in most places. Um, okay, so both of those, and these are also... Um, I really like Ravenous Scourge. This card's sweet. You know, there's another one. There's a, a two-mana 1-1 one, one that gets two power when it attacks. I don't know if you want to leave it. Oh, it's, it's, um, it, it's a... Way three... Ambush Force. Wait, what? <laughs> it's a Portal 3 Kingdoms card. Uh, W-E-I Ambush Force. What is this card? Wait, yeah. what? It's a heater. Oh, I like that a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Because we grant this... So how does that work with, with Temp? So if we go back and let's just take a look real I quick. I mean, you'd, uh, you'd still be able to... It would be able to be blocked by, by a three-power creature. Or by a greater than three. Um, or three or less or whatever. It, it so would have it three power jumped. for the purposes of determining. Yeah, it would be able to be jumped. But again, like it's a three-power, two-mana value creature that uh, is really aggressive. Um, Man, again, so like if you give it evasion. This, this temp mechanic card. is is like, uh, the, the intuition I'm getting from it is that it makes this, this these decks very good at hunting combo. Because yeah. you're Probably like, don't you're, need the ambush force, but it's a cool card. I, I, like I didn't know this card existed, and so I'm, I'm yeah. like excited about it uh, because there's a couple of cards that I play like this in this deck, and one of them is called... Yeah. Um, oh, there's those. also the horsemanship creatures, actually. If you go back, there's um, That's true. A, two, a two mana one one horsemanship creature. So and a three I, mana two one. Uh, the only one. The only. Oh one I like shit, to... Ryan! Oh. By the way, I just yeah. thought of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's here's two cards. Right, let me find. Okay, never mind. Keep doing what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, the horsemanship stuff I like a lot. Uh, and but, I am gonna um, take a quick peek at madness. Um, while we're at it here. Sure. Um. Let me is there anything here we here. like? Oh, hell, mongrel! Jesus Christ. <laughs> Actually, Gorgon Recluse, that's a hell of a card. It's a good one. You know, a 2-4 in this deck is like, it's almost like we want more toughness, right? Like, like we don't want as much power because when we make something, when, when something blocks us, we're going to kill it anyways. If we're yeah, tempted. the thing that has the ring, we want it to have like lower power generally. It doesn't matter if that is higher, but like lower power is generally better just because that oh, gives kitchen us better imp. Kitchen Imp. Oh, Kitchen Imp's pretty good, yeah. Whoa! It doesn't get to haste out off of our trigger, right? But we're still... It's still just one mana. Yeah, it's a one mana 2-2 two, two flying. Oh, I really like... Yeah, like, like those that. Madness cards I like I like a lot. They fit really well. Um, I, 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 wouldn't I wouldn't go like... I wouldn't go heavy into the Madness no, stuff. No, like, uh, Madness is a But trap. just like the good, solid creatures. <laughs> yeah. I think like, like Gork and Recluse is, is an awesome just one. That thing is stuff. hard to kill. It's like for toughness yeah yeah um, it's two four that that kills things yeah. in combat when they block um and we've got kitchen imp which is a one drop um yeah but these are these are great um and this is okay so if we're playing a lot if we're playing a lot of little guys that we're just gonna like kind of move equipment around get aggressive with um we i think it's important to have the option to alpha strike um, for a lot of damage, oh, and there are two cards that do foul this. Tongue there's shriek? one called. No, uh, if you want, it, there's two cards. They're both sorceries, so they're not as powerful as the other ones could be. But for this purpose, uh, the first is called Swarm Surge. Okay. I don't know if you know this card. No. It's from Zend Battle for Zendikar. I'll probably recognize it. Oh, this is the one that gives colorless and first strike and plus two plus zero. Oh. Um. Yes, that's exactly yeah, right. That, yeah, yeah, I do know this card. <laughs> I've recently and... discovered that I have a photographic memory, so <laughs> <That's> like... <laughs> this card is this yeah. card is really good. Um, wow! And there's um... and if you think this is good, uh, there's another card called 
called Desperate Charge. Yeah, Desperate Charge is a good one too. Another Portal Three Kingdoms yeah. Uh, heater. Yeah. yeah. Um, both of these are interesting for sure. They're basically like the trumpet blast effects that we would play in like TPI in a sense. Yeah, um, it, it's it's interesting because like it's similar to the dynamic that I have in my heritage to a deck where the deck goes tall as a function of going wide. Yeah, so yeah. we are powering up individual creatures with equipment, but we have the option to utilize our board, our wide board of creatures um, in very specific ways to kind of crash in. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah. So, so one of the things I gotta get faceless butcher in here too, by the way. And and actually, I wanted to uh, mention another. Um, what did I just do? I messed that up. That's not a ninja. Come on, Ryan. That's not a ninja. Um, wow. That's uh, that is uh, MV four. So basically, in this deck, I have it organized by mana value of creature. So it might look weird, but I had to do that mm -hmm. to like get my brain into the space of like really looking at curve. Yeah. Um, because I, I've had some people hate on this deck. Passageway seer. I just want to say is. Like a really disgusting commander, and you know, like these these not, kind of like creature shells are very powerful. If you're not People winning don't lots them. of games with them, I don't know what you're doing wrong. But like you're doing something, <laughs> you're doing something um, wrong. Uh, they're they're so strong. Uh, yeah. But it, so so one of the things that I wanted to see here is like, do we need to be going in? And it might seem crazy, but like point to discussion, blood pact, read the bones. Um, you know, like these sorts of we things. We don't need all this stuff. Maybe even Sign and Blood and Night's Whisper, like, and then replace them with cards that are uh, working with our looting. Because our looting gets online so soon that, like, turning the looting into Monarch, where we're getting a card mm -hmm. every turn, is, is like, better than having yeah. lots of cards in hand. Because we're just, like, emptying our hand every turn, except for the removal, right? So I think a really important thing about, like, playing this shell of creatures in a deck with a commander like this is to understand that like nothing no individual piece is sacred like you can you should be willing and able to sacrifice any creature no matter like if it's something that you want to attack with or not like to enable the rest yeah. of what you're doing we don't need fodder right like our fodder is the fact that we have like a bajillion creatures yeah 43 um, of them <laughs> exactly so so like you can do things like play um cards I like, like what is it called this. Like uh this. Oh, shit. Point yeah, of something macabre, macabre oh, something. It's macabre? a two-mana spell. No, no, no. It's a two-mana sorcery where you 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 raise dead two things and discard yeah. a card. Yeah. So if we're playing, like, a couple tertiary mana stuff or, or stuff that we want to put in the graveyard, um, it's just, like, it's a draw two, right? Um, these cards, I think, are, are pretty good. It's kind of like Dig Up the Body. I would kind of um, prefer Dig Up the Body in that slot because it gives us a Oh, it's better. Right? It's better. But it depends if we want, like, like More. this in term, this in, in, as an alternative to, uh, like, Blood Pact, for example. Like, yeah, the, the cards like this are a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Cards like this are a lot better than those. And because actually, we're going to be sacrificing creatures that we want to get back. It, we're not going to be rebuying fodder. We're going we're gonna to be rebuying potential threats. Mm-hmm. So I just cut a couple of things. I'm going to cut Read the Bones, too. It's going to sound mm -hmm. crazy. Um, but like, I basically just want, like, we don't necessarily have to have tons and tons of cards. What we want mm -hmm. is for the, to have the ability to regularly loot away. Th and so what I'm thinking is replace, like to put it out open, I want to replace some of the draw spells, generic draw spells with creatures that unearth from the graveyard mm -hmm. as a way to break parity on that and essentially draw more cards through tempt. Sure. Yeah. Right, um, so that we're always finding ourselves discarding stuff that we're like happy to get rid of. Um, why is this? Oh, MV4. What did I do wrong there? Oh, yeah, it needs to go down here. Um, MV4 creatures. There we go. And then remove this tag. Um, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I also, by the way, foul tongue shriek. What do you think of that? This is dope. I, yeah. I love cards that just Heavy. like so like like I said we're gonna be like powering up like a small quantity of our large massive creatures at a time yeah. and we'll just be shifting stuff around so like the option to turn everything sideways when we need to and get massive value out of it I think is is big game that's why I like the mm -hmm. trumpet blasts um oh we don't have calling the week in here oh yeah did you is, is this is this one that we're um like what are our you know, use cases I... for calling the week. Is this like turn one? This, is, this this shell is probably not as good for calling the week. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm actually starting yeah. to lose it. So it's like if we play because dark ritual is sick because on turn two you can play a vicious battle rager or a thorn of the black rose or sure. like 
or like a falcon wrath noble i mean there's just like like big stuff you can play yeah with, um, with, with this shell i i'd be concerned about bloating those mana slots like the yeah. fours and fives i'd want to keep those to a, an absolute minimum um personally uh, that's just i think with these kinds of decks you just don't want to so, have an opening hand with like two five drops in it so like like how does does calling the weak translate to just emptying our hand on the battlefield because it requires the guts there or not gut but it requires a golem is there because i really only want a calling the weak golem i want a calling mm -hmm, the weak right. golem um but again like then... like i said before nothing sacred right like we need ways to rebuy creatures are going to be way better than like raw card draw um so you know who knows maybe it's just what like are our use cases? we're sacrificing anything you know what i think my intuition is saying that this is not dark ritual um because yeah i mean the, my, my my first instinct is, is is that like these cards are not three. great and this, this is a turn three yeah. play and that's weird mm -hmm. because it's a ritual like i want this to be like yeah. turn one and two like dark ritual in this deck is like turn one uh like you know, turn one, like Persistent Specimen, Shadow Alley Denizen, and Tormented Soul. Turn two, Golem. Yeah. And we have six power in play, and we're, like, already, like, off to the races. So I think mm -hmm. Culling the Weak is going to not be in here. Um, yeah, it's fair. Uh, I like the 35 lands. I think that's going to be really good. Um, yeah. Did we uh, cut uh, the... We, what the fuck is it called? Um, Staunch Throne Guard, is that gone? should be. My it's opinion. not in the deck. It's not in the deck. Yeah, I don't think it yeah. should be. No, I don't um, think I it should be sure. either. Too too high curve. Gary ends the if game we're gonna, if, under Dark Explorer. Yeah, if, if we're, we're going to play a big O creature, that it's going to be these two. Under Dark Explorer, yeah. Um, we have Dothy Marauder and um, and Ravenous Scourge. These are two cards that basically are like three power evasive creatures, but they're like they're not they don't necessarily do much core else. to like what we're doing here we have a lot yeah. of other evasion it's different than passageways mm -hmm. here those cards are scary when you give like forge to the dothy uh the dothy marauder and it's like yeah this is a five three that you can't block like it's, right it's coming for them it's coming for that honey um <laughs> so we got one slot that we've opened up it's actually two because we have foul tongue shriek this doesn't necessarily need to be in the deck i like the idea mm -hmm. that this is a boom headshot um this just is going to do a lot of damage to somebody, but it's kind of like a yeah. one-time use. They can blow us out with a sweeper. Um, let's just throw this in considering for a second, sure. and we can kind of recap. Yeah, we should definitely that. focus focus on like we definitely want... streamlining oh. the thing that we want to be doing with the ring and the, uh, in my so, opinion, the equipment stuff. Knight's but, Whisper yeah. and Sign and Blood. These should be Reckoner's Bargain effects, right? Yes, they should be, in my opinion. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is another. I know this is going to seem strange chat, but like you really like, this is why we had to build a new list. It's very easy to get yourself into a place where your list is too far down the rabbit hole in a wrong direction. And you need to go back mm -hmm. up the rabbit hole and dig a new one. Um, and so we're, we're, that's what we're doing here. Um, this is going to go in the main deck. Um, yep. Reckoner's bargain. Is there anything else? We have corrupted conviction, village rights, deadly dispute, um, and Reckoner's bargain. Those are the main ones that I can think of. Yeah. There's also like final flourish was another one that I wanted to see in here. Um, the thing that I also really like about these this suite of spells is that they they're instants. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. I almost I I want to call see me crazy. I almost I almost want to cut Siphon Mind. I I'm on the same boat, dude. It's crazy to me that I'm thinking this, but it's like this yeah. is for a different kind of black deck. This is not. We're not spending our turn casting casting no, Siphon Mind. No. Yeah. In in no world do I want this over. I don't know, maybe if I'm empty handed and I and it's like mid game and I have six mana. Yeah. But like I that's not the I don't know. It's just not right for the deck, I don't think. Um Yeah, I agree. So let's go back over to our other Oh, you know what we, we can, can like, do? We, we we don't need a ton of raw oh. card draw just because like Here, the ring's gonna loot us every turn. Check this out. We do the compare feature. This is oh, great. Sure. Oh, and in fact actually it's built into this. Oh, I I love you, Moxfield, so much. So we go compare, and then we go my mm -hmm. decks, and we go to um, Golem. So, G, it's too many decks. Um, <laughs> there. Okay. Oh, this is how, okay, cool. So we know KDED's going to go in. Um, we know that Ec Ecstatic Awakener is going in. We liked Dirge of the Dead a lot. Dirge of the Dead's going to be better than Foul Tongue Shriek. It's, um, yeah, in terms of like the cards that to fill that role in like that niche mm -hmm. place where we want a spell that like lets us go wide, like Alpha Strike. How do we feel about Kumbaj Witches? Right. This kills a lot of our own stuff. It um, does. I don't think it belongs here. Again, like I, I want to keep 
the creatures in like the one two slot, like devoted to like if this creature does not attack well, I don't want it. You know? Yeah, yeah, I hear um, you. Um, I so the le- the losing the draw spells is where I really want to have cards like Grixis Slave Driver, um, and the uh, are basically the creatures that are unearthing. So like our first yeah. pure Gargantas, um, because that's coming with a card. Um, I think actually, you know what? It, with this creature suite, it might make you're already dead and mirrored in Avenge that much better. That's they're so good. I mean. Like I mean, letting thing, any like, creature we have, letting any creature we have trade up. Oh yeah, it's big. It's big. I think is great, and it's a one mana removal spell. It is kind of two cards for two cards. We trade a creature and our card, and they lose a creature, and we get a card back. So it's a two for two. Right, but you think about like what what creature. That's why like the idea of trading up is very valuable because like when we're going even on cards, like. Are we going mana positive or negative compared to like what our opponent is losing? Mm-hmm. So we're spending, you know, we have a, a one-one flyer that they block with, you know, a four mana creature or something like that to chump or just to get in the way of it, and then we just kill their thing. So we spend two mana to kill four mana's worth of things, uh, going card neutral versus our opponent. So like it, it's eking out like a small resource advantage there. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple. Those are the other... situations where I really like it. There's a couple of other cards that I wanted to cut here too that probably don't fit anymore. And one oh, also, you're already dead is great with pestilence because it deals damage to everything. Uh, you are already dead. Oh yeah, there is that too. Yeah, and crypt rats. <laughs> um, yeah. So ghastly gloom haunter. I really like these cards. You can use stuff with ninjutsu, but um, and they, and the life link is really nice. And the fact that you can like, yeah. late game top deck this and just be like, okay, six mana. Here's my three three flying life link. So is, like this, surprisingly these cards good. are great if we're gonna go heavier on the equipment stuff. Um, because lifelink is just life so much link. better when you're boosting the power. Lifelink is uh, so good in aggro deck. Yeah. It's crazy. Do we have Vault Scourge in this deck? We do have Vault Scourge. Yep, it's here. Um, okay, so we just, just added a bunch of it. one drops to this here. So let's get those in. Yeah. Where are they? I do love a one drop. Yeah, me too. So Static Awakener. <laughs> we've got K Dead. Some of these are like super non negotiable. Um, <laughs> like K Dead is, is one of the best cards. Zentrum Bandit is going to go into our two drops, um, two MV. Did I just put a two MV card in here? Uh, Horde uh, Robber, I did. Yeah. yeah. So Horde Robber can come out of there, because um, the incentives are different here. So like, mm-hmm. there's a part of me that thinks that actually like these um, Gloom Haunter, you know, like basically we're trading these cards for like Horde Robber type stuff. Because so yeah, like I think. Dusk Hunter Bat can go. That's the Bloodthirst one, right? That's just like... It's a 2-2 two, two for 2. The, the, ce- the ceiling on is a 2-2 two, two for 2, yeah. Yeah. These two are great. Those are great. Yep. Um, this is looking really solid here. I like mm-hmm. everything that's in here a lot um, for different reasons. Um, yeah. The Ghastly Gloom Haunter is the last one I'm kind of looking at where it's like... Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, it does, uh, a, it's a good thing. It works really well. It actually, it's almost better in this deck than it is in Passageway Seer because of the ninjas. Late game, we top deck a ninja. We've already completed the, dun- we've already completed Tempt, right? So we've already completed all the way down. Yep. Top deck one of these things. We just have this ghastly gloom hunter that's been like poking people all game. We ninja to it in. We replay it for six. Oh, sure. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good use for it. So it's like better here than it was there. Um, so I like that. Uh, are there any other one drops? Because we actually went up on one drops, and so we're actually uh, we're, we could be a little bloated on them. Um, like we could cut things like um, it's ironic. Battle. I've killed people with Blightkeeper, which is bizarre to say, but like I've straight up used yeah. this ability before. Um, st- Dirge also still not a card Steve. I'm like high on. I know we can sack it, but like, so it is kind of like a creature that can draw us a card. But like, you, you, you said you have Blightkeeper already. Yeah, Blightkeeper is okay. in there. Yeah, um, you should have the invite by the way to, to get into this if you want to see okay. yourself. Unwilling ingredients, good. All this stuff is really good. Um, Okiba, um, Kitchen Imp, Static Awakener. Yeah, it's it's looking pretty solid there. Um, what about blind you know zealot? Inter- How did, what do you think of this card? I've been I've been testing it and I've been pretty like happy with this like evasive three. It's it's a three drop, 
But yeah, I don't know if it's what we want in this deck, but it, it's I a mean, good card, I think. You hit them every turn until you don't need it anymore, and then you you oh sure kill their that makes thing, sense right um, yeah so that's kind of cool yeah I'm just looking at one drops right now you know what's really interesting is a card like Duty Bound Dead it's a one mana zero two with Exalted and Regenerate oh but we're always gonna swing with more than one thing right probably, I mean, maybe probably maybe, I maybe almost, not I don't know well so when I play Passageway <laughs> Seer. Uh, it's 100% yeah. of the time. Uh, that would not trigger. Um, sure. It does have regenerate for one, right? Uh, four. It's expensive. Oh, for four. Regenerate for yeah. four. Oh, no. Yeah, we can't. Oh, you know what? We're a mortician beetle. Get that in here. Um. Okay. So that is a rabbit hole, right? Because there's the Gixian infiltrator. There's mortician beetle. There's carrion feeder. You start getting into that territory. Do we want to be doing that? Is that um, I don't. The... Well, yes, because I don't think that we need to like build out specific shells of cards to support them. They just naturally grow um, as we as we just do what we're already doing. Yeah. So maybe. So let's cut something from the top end. Like Slum Reaper could go, and we could just keep mm -hmm. Chain Devil, Fleshbag. I think Chain Devil and, and, and Fleshbag. Yeah, I like, think Slum Reaper's the worst. Chain Devil, I like a lot. It's in terms of like four mana. Like I said before, like it's I don't better... want to bloat that mana value slot. Yeah, um, it's, it's the better the better version of um, yeah. Chain Devil's a better version of Slum Reaper. Um, but yeah, like just three. to kind of go back to what I was saying before, like Mortician Beetle, Gixian Infiltrator, these cards are just going to grow naturally because as long as we're of the mindset that like we can sacrifice whatever we need to, um, and nothing, no single creature is precious. Nothing is sacred. Just because That's the thing I'm yeah. having a hard time processing. But yeah. it, I think it when we play it, it'll be more clear that that's the case because mm. we'll just have a lot of these, right? And that that's yeah. how it is in Passageway Seer too. Um, when you're playing, is you just you have a lot of bodies. There, none of them are particularly sacred. They're always hitting. Um, so, mm -hmm. uh, Dirge of the Dead here. We can put this into draw um, as well as. I mean, it does other things too. Yeah, um, I mean, you may end up with a creature suite that like looks suboptimal, but like at the end of the day, like we're not optimizing for like the most powerful creatures. We're optimizing yeah. to achieve a specific play yeah. pattern. Yeah, and, the play pattern of Passageway yeah. Seer, and and we can refer to this one, has been so disgustingly effective. Before people started playing bad versions of Passageway Seer, my win rate with that deck was over forty percent, um, and it's sitting somewhere at like some some other kind. And when I say bad, I, I don't mean that pejoratively. It's it's just more mm. that like I used to play versions of Passageway Seer that were very, very chunky. Expensive cards, single cast yeah. turns, big ramp. I played my old Passageway Seer deck, just to just to clarify this, uh, had 14 mana rocks in it. Okay, like the whole yeah. point of the deck was turn two, turn three Passageway Seer or turn one or turn two Passageway Seer off of Dark Ritual. So like this this plan with with Passageway Seer of like going super aggressive is super effective because you are just swinging every single turn and you're always converting damage. You're always evasive, right? And then when people swing back at you, you've got Passageway Seer to gain life. So th so this this template of these cheap creatures flooding the board, doing taking a lot of game actions, all that stuff is really good. Um, yeah question is just how are we going to make the room because these ninjas are taking up slots we don't even have like the, recursion the uh, spells like we, we got don't the even got the even exploit thing oh you like you don't like the even four mana two power creature if we're if we're trying to streamline it and just like get super aggressive low to the ground uh, it's probably a little funky yeah yeah because we're not hurting on like the ways to draw cards i mean we get to loot we're going to be looting for free it, yeah every turn yeah the looting and it's actually better to play into the looting than it is to draw so like mm -hmm. I would almost even though it's a great card, Vulture Saving's a great card. It's so good actually. Oh man. Um, is there something else that's worse? <laughs> is there, like Sturge. I'm just, just I I'm sorry. This card's gotta go. I I don't like Sturge. It doesn't block. Nobody's ever gonna point removal at it. We can draw a card when it's gonna die to a sweeper, but like. Well, they will when it's holding the ring and a bone splitter. Even then, I don't think they're gonna kill it. Okay. I'll I'll trust you on that one. I might be wrong on it, but we have 17 one drops. And yeah. like Passageway Seer is so consistent on 15 that like and we're trying to add two more, Mortician Beetle and yeah. Carrion Feeder. So like I'll 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 blaspheme a little bit and say that I would probably cut pestilence. Oh god. Mm -hmm. I know it's your favorite. 
Yeah, the thing. Yeah, so here's the thing. Pestilence. I so I blasphemed for a while, and I cut pestilence from Rilsa, and I didn't play re- mm-hmm. pestilence in Rilsa, and I'm coming right back round to it. It's just the the card. Is, it's is, immensely powerful. It's, it's absurd. It's, it's one of the best cards in the whole format, in in the way that it's like saving you when you're behind and it's ending the game sometimes when you're behind and sometimes when you're ahead it just like it's this reach in this deck here it is killing a lot of our stuff um mm-hmm. and it's a little bit different here than it is in real in in passageways here because in it passageways costs us a here, lot. you like kill half your board you kill everybody else's board and you still get to keep your passageways here and you're playing the initiative so it's like mm-hmm. really good there i could see it being not right here um, because like all this stuff dies. And it's like, we here's the thing also is that up. we're not, we're not ramping either. We're playing on curve. That's the idea. So even if we are like planning to cast and activate pestilence, mm. like we're, we're putting all of our mana into that yeah. kind of a thing. Um, and it's very, very costly to do that. Yeah. So it's it, again, like for as powerful as it is, I think it plays kind of clunky and a it little does. bit counter to what we're trying to do with the rest of our deck. I agree. Um, and I, there's always exceptions to be made for like super powerful cards on like pure rate, but I don't think they're always slam dunks. I think the cost is too high here. That's mm-hmm. the big thing. In Passageway Seer on two, you forge something up. It's immediately three power. Uh, like Passageway Seer comes down as a three power creature. It's like everything is like half of your stuff is going to be bigger, right? So it's like the yep. juice is worth the squeeze. Yeah, you do lose stuff, but everybody else is losing a lot more and you get to keep yeah. the things that you kind of care about. In this deck, we're not putting counters on things so much. These are like right. these are like chipping in. They're offering us bodies to Gollum, um, and they're carrying the the tempt. They're carrying the ring really well, especially mm-hmm. these evasive creatures. Because eventually, when we get to that point where we're hitting for three every time, then it's then it's really good to have these evasive creatures. Well, that brought yep. us to a hundred cards. The thing that we're going to notice is the difference if we if we compare these, is um, is that we are missing. Every single one of the um, graveyard. What, what, what do you call these? The grave flicker cards. Grave flicker. Okay. We don't yeah, have any of them. We also are missing a lot of the really good. We're, we're missing some of the undying effects. Um, There's a lot of like we don't cool have synergistic these. stuff that we're missing. Um, we don't go back to what we have right now. Or, uh, yeah. So where are our slots? Like Gloom Haunter, let, let's just do this, okay? Because you can hear that I'm I'm on the fence on it already. Um, yeah. In fact, like Stronghold Confessor is like on rate is like just better. Um, it's like a four mana three three menace as opposed to a six mana three three flying with lifelink. It's just better. Um, so, what I what my instinct is to do here is just cut anything that is not going to come down early, carry an equipment, and convert damage very early. Well, we only have um, one piece of equipment, too. So they're keep- oh, I know. I want to carry the, the, ta- the ring. The ring. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, any equipment. I think there's a lot of other equipment that are actually very good here um, that we haven't even discussed. Ceremonial so knife and prying blade. Oh, not even that. Like Silvok Lifestaff. Oh, um, Silvok Lifestaff. For example. So good here. Yeah, yeah, like there's a lot of really great stuff, yeah. and 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 so like stuff that even adds like a power to our creatures. So, like yeah. that, that that it it does it does a ton of stuff. I'm um, like like things like faceless butcher. If we're not making room for all the grave flicker stuff, which I don't think we need, honestly, um, that can probably go. Oubliette, I think is awkward, and 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 I don't think it's necessary. Um, I think we the the reason for the faceless butcher here still involved. Well, we're not playing the flicker stuff, but we are playing ninjas. So, like, the ninja mm-hmm. thing with Faceless Butcher is, like, an expensive thing, right? Like, you're paying for the ninja, mm-hmm. but next turn you're playing the Faceless Butcher. So you're kind of, right. like, getting multiple uses out of it if we're targeting commanders. Sure. Right. Um, I, I, I think, and, and granted, like, it's all very compelling, but at the end of the day, if the goal is to play on curve we want and, and not ramp, we're going to be playing, you know, one mana, two mana, three mana, four mana. Like, to get to the point where, like, we're able to do the things where we're, like, ninjutsuing a Faceless Butcher, recasting it, that's, like, seven, eight mana. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's just very awkward to make that work, yeah. especially, like, when you when you know that, like, that's why you put it in, is to enable these synergies, and you're just, like, holding onto these cards, waiting to and do something like with them. there. Yeah, you want to just be able to, like, play your cards. Yeah. Um, like, this card And, and looks... have them do what they, what they, what, have them do what you put them in the deck to do when you cast them. Um, so faceless, and faceless butcher, butcher 
it wants it's to be good. along those flicker spells, right? It wants like mm-hmm. because like if it, 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 it's not that it doesn't it doesn't need to be, but oh, and by the way, we need to fix this. I'm so sorry. Yeah, everybody. please. Yeah, um, it was hurting my eyes. To, <laughs> to, um, it, it doesn't need to be because we actually have the ninjas, which, which are a great way to do it. We have the throne of the dead three with the initiative, um, but yep. the but the the ability to cast one of those spells on this and then patient plotter sack it, you know, to bring it back and like hit another commander is exceptionally compelling. It is a sorcery speed interaction. We don't really have slots for those flicker spells mm-hmm. unless we're going to cut. And we have the room, you know, we're, like this is the number we had before is 12 two mana creatures. We've gone up on four for the ninjas. We could cut two of these and we would still be on parity and we could play some flicker stuff. We could cut like a dirge of the dead's really good, but like we could cut it. I'd rather I'd honestly rather play equipment than flicker stuff in this kind of a deck. Yeah, the flicker stuff feels a I, I want to play things that like that 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 do the powerful thing we want them to do just on its face. Like, like what are these flicker if going, spells if do if against combo? Like what that this is the problem. Not a, I run not into. a lot. They do nothing. Like, yeah. They're like Yeah. So like we want this if we're going to be linear, we want the cards that we play to be linear cards. Mm-hmm. Um and, and and like Sovak Life Staff is a good example of that because it's a one mana equipment that equips for one and it gives a power to a thing. So like yeah, it's advancing that not not in a huge way, but it also gains us a ton of life incidentally. Yeah. Doubles um, the power just on a one drop. It's pretty. Yeah, good. exactly. Uh, like a two power flyer is 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 fine, especially if when we sacrifice it, we gain three life. Yeah, the game and it's cheap three. to move around, which is like a big deal too. Like equip equip costs of one or two, we probably wouldn't want to go higher than that. Um, yeah. Yeah. So then, so then, what we're looking at is also another another one. Assuming because we're going to be drawing a lot of cards with the ring, is um, what is the name of the card? Adventuring gear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, one mana equipment, one to equip landfall. When land enters, yep. it gets plus two, plus two. Yeah, I've thought about that one. It's one to equip is really nice. One to cast is really nice. Um, it's very easy to hit all our land drops in this deck, I think. So, like that card becomes much more powerful. Well, the, the only trouble is that the looting is during combat. So if we loot to try and find our land and don't find it, sure, then that's kind of awkward. Because then we're. But I'm saying like if we're if if we're drawing two cards a turn, then uh, we can set up adventuring gear whenever. Yeah, we that's want it true. To that's true. Do you think that's better than Silvok Life Staff? Uh, I think I don't think it. I mean, I I, it's not I an either or you're thinking. Yeah, it's I don't think so. A, so then the question is, what but again, like that's just a like a. a like we, it doesn't we need cut... like that. We don't need to play that equipment. It's just like an example of like something that could that could be good and convert a lot of damage. I like it. another thing that's interesting yeah. is dredging claw um, yeah. from Brothers War. So this one, the second clause on it, when something enters from the graveyard, you may attach it. That probably won't come into play nearly as much, obviously, because we're not doing like the grave flicker stuff. But like one zero and menace is very oh, good. Oh, but this attaches to Gollum every time, doesn't it? No, because Gollum doesn't enter play. He goes back to your hand. Um, no, no. Oh, to your hand. Yeah, Golem goes to your hand. <sighs> yeah, that's a thing. I I I did not, you know, you just read things with rosy colored glasses. That is mm-hmm. less 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 exciting, but it's it's still fine. So let's let's see. We got yeah. It, it, it it's it honestly like it's not a huge deal either way because. It's never going to cost you to- more than two mana to redeploy. That's true. Yep, yep. It's always a, a creature that we can play, mm-hmm. swing in with, yeah. and then retempt with. Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay. But like Dredging Claw is, is not bad because like the floor on the card is one zero in menace for two mana. It's um, two to play and two to equip though, and we don't have anything yeah. that's actually coming back. It's on the more expensive side. Yeah. But and also the... things like um, uh, Gold Vein Pick and. So uh, my intuition yeah. right now is saying to cut Thorn, and I, I know you love it, but Dirge of the Dead. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I, I think, think Dirge it's okay. of the Dead is really good, and it's a game-ending spell when we when we when we cast it. But mm-hmm. the the things that I want to have more of in the deck are ways to break parity on our looting, because even though sure. we're built aggressive here, this is li- really similar to Rilsa and Passageway Seer, where we are aggressively slanted combat decks that ultimately still have these like endogenous ways to um to generate advantage right and that Mm -hmm. means that we are aggressively slanted decks that are kind of mid-range decks actually and it's what we have here we have a super low curve we're playing on curve we're coming down early we're hitting people right off the bat we're getting tons of damage off of these one drops like tormented soul is going to come in and deal way more than three damage over the course of the game and so um but in our command zone we have something that's that's generating 
a fair bit of advantage, right? Yep. So, um, so I guess I'm I'm looking like I like I want to so like be here. Able let's to break try that let's with try un, this like unearth. Right? Um, yeah. So like the unearth cards that I really want to have are like. Slave Driver's one of them. Viscera Dragger's another one. I like Viscera Dragger just because it's cheaper. It's cheap, yeah. Um, it's cheap. Um, and it cycles itself into the graveyard. Um, mm -hmm. I love the bodies that this produces. I'm not going to lie. It's, um, you know, yeah. it's not as cool with uh, without the Ashnod's Intervention and the, um, the, the um, what was it called? The uh, Kai's Ghost Form. Kai's Ghost Form, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, because otherwise Ooh. right now it's like, what is this, swinging in for four? It's like, yeah. Not as good as first Fear Garganta for sure. Go back go back to the full list for a second. I just want to take a look at where the removal spells are running. Like honestly, I think we can, I I'm very cool on Butcher and Oubliette in this deck, if I'm being honest. Um I think being able to it, playing at instant speed is like a huge advantage for us uh, with what we're trying to do. Interacting inside of combat is gonna be like crucial for a lot of the things that we're trying to accomplish. Man, so losing Oubliette is, uh, is a heresy too far for I don't me. think it's heresy at all. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like the, one of the best removal spells in the game, though, right? It's for, I mean, command, it for commanders. Sorcery speed, sure. of course, but denying somebody as their commander is... Uh, yeah, super, super game-breaking, right? I can see the faceless butcher because what we're talking about here is a slow, sure. a slow interaction. Um, no, I mean I, I understand that I like it's it powerful, but like again, again, I, I I'm trying to be as um, yeah. adaptable and and aggressive as possible. And Oubliette is it runs a little bit in the other direction. You know, I could see faceless butcher being more important than Oubliette even because it's a creature. It's probably better. Yeah. Um, so we're actually like developing our board while we apply pressure, which is one of the I reasons think, I, like I think it's easy. Zillet to look at a card like Oubliette and, and look at that interaction with phasing and like removing commanders and things like that and just say like, this is the most powerful thing to be doing so it's like an auto-include, uh, which you're not wrong, but again, it's something, I don't know. I feel like I'd be much more comfortable running an instant speed removal spell in that slot because we're trying to be efficient and not like the most powerful deck in a vacuum. Mm. Um, like being able to... Being able to, I think, remove a commander with an instant speed spell on a crucial turn or during a crucial combat step is going to yield us far greater advantage than like holding it till we find the perfect spot to deploy it, like an oubliette. Yeah. Now, luckily, you know? all of our removal except feed the swarm is instant speed, and it's like yeah. pretty damn good stuff. So it's not like As... my concern is like we're at 12, 12 kill spells, right? So this is like mm -hmm. starting to get pretty shy on stuff that can like solve problems and. Um, and that, that, that worries me a little bit. Um, well, we don't need to be able to solve all the problems. We just need to be able to solve like problems, like one, maybe one or two problems. Sometimes we have a problem that somebody else yeah. is creating for us. And, and like, if we don't solve it, we just lose the game. And that's one of those places I get really Well, sure. But nervous. yeah, that's what I mean. Like there, there's going to be like some, there, so I think when it comes to like removal packages, people tend to get into this headspace where they think that they just need to always have something up to, you know, handle yeah, whatever happens. But really, we're like we're we're trying to engineer specific scenarios, and I think our removal package should be set up to enable us to do that, um, while also being able to help us maybe deal with a threat or whatever. But like, I think we should be primarily able to use our removal package to enable proactive things, um, rather than just mm -hmm. trying to like sit on it and prevent people from doing. Because we're the, we're about asking the questions, right? Yeah, so we should engineer yeah. our remo our removal package to help us ask those questions better. Um, so, you know, that's just mm. kind of how I approach mm. it. Yeah, I, it makes sense. So something like Oubliette, man, it's crazy. Usually this is like, this is, you can, you can tell chat that, that Derek is, um, is like uh, pushing, yeah. pushing the boundaries of what I'm comfortable. With I like here. to just, you know, when it comes to like finding a room for the things that I think are really interesting and cool, I'm very willing to just like shed these cards um because we know what they do and they're not they're not going to enable us to do anything particularly like more impressive they're just like very there's like powerful cards for the sake of a powerful card um 
I mean, yeah, and... it's, it's the sake of a removal spell is part of my worry, right? Sure. Like, cause, cause, and if there's going to be a removal spell, then like I already have, what, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them are mm-hmm. are instant speed. So most of them are instant speed. So I'm okay to concede a sorcery speed spell. And if it was yeah, but I guess so, like... I guess what I'm saying is like mm-hmm. when you say that like we're kind of shy on removal spells, like I don't think that's the case. Um, I think we might even have like maybe more than enough. One, if two, I'm being three, honest, four, five. Um, so we have so we actually have 18 total. I think that's way more than we need if I'm if I'm being frank. I mean, yeah. I think that the sacrifice creatures like the edict creatures like Chain Devil are really good cuz obviously else. like those 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 kill multiple things and it lets us upgrade. enable stuff on our end. Yeah, we're um, either upgrading so, a creature like a 1/1 one, one, or we're getting rid of Golem, right? Yeah, so yeah. you know, I I think cutting a removal spell is is not the worst thing, particularly let's if it just it. lets us be that lets us be a more uh, uh, effective aggressive deck, I guess. Like um so yeah, I, yeah. Let, I let's let's try it out and see how it works. I think like the, there's a good yeah. argument that we want creatures over Oubliette. You can't hit Oubliette off throne, um, mm-hmm. and and frankly, like Faceless Butcher is going to go after commanders too. So if we're thinking about it, like both of them are commander killers. I really think I wanna... Faceless Butcher's best place is killing a commander, and then they just they just tuck it they just tuck it back in the command zone. Um, yeah. Except that this is one more mana, but it's giving us a two three. So it's a lot. What I'd like to, to do is add a card add a card to considering. And I think we should goldfish a couple of hands and see how it plays to yeah, kind of yeah. figure out where we need to go. Mm-hmm. But I, I want to add a card right now and just put it on your radar is Chain Flail Centipede. Yeah. It's a reconfigured card from Kamigawa. Yeah, I know this one. Um, that, that does some very interesting things in our deck. Um, so it's something that is hard to kill because we can turn it into equipment. Um, so when the creature dies, it turns back into a creature. We can move it around. It Wait, buffs power. Wait, when this creature dies, it turns back into equipment? So, no, when you put it on something and the equipped creature dies, it just falls off and becomes a creature again. This falls off and becomes a creature? Yeah, like like a, like a bestow creature, if you think of it that way. Um, except this one we can keep reattaching. Uh, it's something we hit off the own, so mm. it, can, it, can, it can be a threat on its own, or we can use it to so make something else a, a threat. Play it as a 2-2 as a two, two that attacks. So it's, if you play it as a 4-2... And then mm-hmm. at a certain point, you want to move it over onto something. Pretty soon, yeah, or, or, or you start, or you start it as a baseline, as an equipment. Like you treat it as an equipment. Can you pay? Three and then, to, like, but but that's five mana to equip the first time, right? Sure. Yeah. No. It, it. What the point I think with this card is that even though it's more expensive up front, it gives you a lot more flexibility in how you play the game. Yeah, I like because it. Because this card is very aggressive. Like, mm-hmm, what mm-hmm. you do with this is if you start with with the floor of it being a three mana equipment that equips for two that when the creature attacks, it gets two power, like, like a really, mm-hmm. really expensive bone splitter. Right. Mm-hmm. But then what you do is you attach to a creature, attach to another creature, just keep swapping it around. Yeah. As you move through creatures, you grind down the board. And then it's just a thing that attacks for four when it's the last thing left. I, I, I mean, um, I admit, I like that when you kill the creature that that has this, this just becomes the creature again. I didn't yeah. really understand how the reconfigure worked in that case. And so what I like about that is then it's just two mana to repeat that process over and over and over again. And yeah, you, you pay a little more as the price of entry, but you get a lot of value in I mean, how you are able to allocate damage. So, so and, and the other thing two. that's important about this card that makes it better than normal equipment is that you can reconfigure it to turn it back into a creature. Like, you know how yeah. with equipment, you, once you equip it, you cannot unequip it. it yeah, you can just yeah. move it. Yeah. This you can unequip and turn it back into a creature if you want to attack with it. Yeah, I, so it I, hides I it, it hides behind cool. whatever it's equipping, um, which I really like. So like if if a sweeper hits the board, yep, um, left with this, this thing doesn't die. Yeah. 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 It's so, everything else dies. This comes back as the four two attacker. Yeah, it's just a really interesting, like aggressive card. Um mm. that I think is something that and, and granted, like maybe it's too cute. It very well may be. But I think hold on, I'm a little blurry here. Hello. Anyway, only, still only blurry. Oh, there we go. I'm back. There you go. But um, but you know, maybe once we goldfish a little bit, we'll get a better idea for how it may fit in the deck. It's just something that I thought was very interesting. Yeah, no, I completely agree. It's um, I like the play pattern there of essentially like giving us a backup plan against sweepers. And, yeah, this is a card um, that's like a, a, a curve topper for yeah, us if you look at it, it that way. So that one puts us above 101. But let's get this viscera dragger in here real quick. This is going to be under draw. Sure. Um, this is also going to be a two. Viscera Dragger is also a two mana, uh, two mana creature. Yeah. Uh, so two MV. Um, 
And then uh, the thing that I want, well, actually, did we? So let's see. Can we? Well, let's do one more compare, and then we're going to do some play testing here, just so we can. I don't think it'd be the worst thing to cut Dark Ritual if we're trying to cut one card. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a very aggressive deck that benefits from it, and it can loot it away late game. Um, yeah, which you is know, nice. But, Are you there know, any cards in here that we cream. like desperately want more? Like, like we're you know, missing out on the Dredgescape zombie, which seems. So I think importantly, just so we don't kind of like go down all these rabbit holes is, is to play test what we have now and mm -hmm. see where the gaps are, um, kind of identify like where these different cards may fit in there and, and kind of make swaps mm -hmm. based on that mm -hmm. okay. uh, rather than just kind of like trying to contextualize it, yeah. in, it, it like kind of in a, it, agnostic of context. Let's, right? do, uh, like, let's do Chain Fail Slenipede in the sideboard for now. Yeah, uh, yeah. I want. I, I, I think it's good to stay there for now. Opal Palace and Study Hall. These cards are kind of weird, right? Because we're not actually. Yeah, we don't need them. Yeah, like we're, these cards aren't. What are they doing with Gollum? Like, like, well, Study Hall might be good because it'll always scry one. Um, well, we if that's something that we want, but we could just play. We, I mean, well, yeah, we could just do that. You don't really like Halfling. Well, Horror actually does. We've got a couple of horrors. How many horrors do we have? It'd be like two or three tops. Five. Five, okay. And one shapeshifter. Yeah, Faceless Butcher's a horror. That's true. It's just that... Okay, so yeah, put Path of Vance. Oh, yeah, that's it's also good. a horror there. Yeah, that's kind of... Because um, we're going to be we're, we're gonna be casting Gollum a lot from our hand. So, like, yeah. Path of Vance, that Much by itself, I, it's going to generate enough advantage to be better, yeah. And then Opal Palace, is there any way... Is there any world where Gollum has been cast enough from the command zone where this is, like... I don't think so. Not unless we're specifically not unless we're specifically like sending him to the command zone to buff up our Opal Palace for some No, reason. but Study Hall is gonna um, give us a trigger, which is good. Yeah. So this is good. Let's uh let's take it into a play test here. Let's do it. Yeah. Um okay, this is not keepable. Um this is it's actually uh, fine. quite fine because we go one tormented soul, two golem, three um attack for three attack and we'll just blood. see what we draw i guess you yeah know, wow that was a good draw oh, that's pretty good yeah yep. so we go tormented soul to oof. um i think actually i would take a turn to set up and just cast yeah. awakener and bones Twitter. yeah that's or or actually uh let's see or well do golem and then turn three we can cast exact awakener cast bone splitter and equip bone splitter yeah exactly or cast golem innocent blood or sorry, well, no, we've already got Golem. Okay, so we yeah. swing for one, and then we're gonna untap Crypt Rats. Is you know wh whatever. Um, uh, so how do we maximize this turn? I want to play this on four, basically. Mm -hmm. So it seems kind of like we go one two. To equip this. Yep. You know what I might do like, is like attack. Yeah. Well. Depending on what the board is like, I, I, there, there's a world where I would actually like put Bone Splitter on Golem, which is attack for five. Well, we can attack with both of these, right? I know, but like in terms of like, nobody putting someone under, under, putting somebody under a commander damage pinch, like five is oh. much better than three. Like you can pressure people, yeah, it's a, a lot in terms of like the, the commander damage scale, Ooh. which I think is is valuable. This is nice. So we actually just run the Ecstatic Awakener out, right? Yeah, that's then... that seems good. And then this turn is where we actually get to start tempting. So yeah. the question is, um, let's see, let's get the, oh, they don't have it in here yet. <laughs> so I would attack with everything here. Yeah. So attack with everything. Most likely scenario is that we end up transforming Exotic Awakener. Yeah. I mean, we, there Sacrifice. could be a world where we do this at for do this first mm -hmm. because then we have a four four and we draw a card see if there's another one drop maybe another thing i like about the aggressive equipment in in a deck like this just from the way that like looking at this board mm -hmm. it makes you think like we when we have things like bone splitter or like you know uh whatever other equipment that adds power or whatever like things that buff our creatures we don't need to rush to to get the ring to max level because we have other ways to like buff our board and we can just kind of yeah. casually do yep. it 
Um, so like, for example, like if we didn't have bone splitter and we were just like fully committed to pushing the ring, we would kind of pinch ourselves on creatures here a little bit because you don't have a lot of things that are right. like, we don't, we don't, we don't have a lot of creatures right now. So we're kind of at a, we, we could easily run out of resources. I, I kind of like um, here the idea of sending it back to the command zone actually. Um, because we don't have like tons of creatures that sure. we want to like do this with. Although like when we drew this card, that changes that a little bit, but like, I'm okay. Like paying because we have lands, right? Yeah. Yeah. If we have, if we have the lands to do it, then that seems like a fine decision to me. Yeah. And then go. And we still leave one up for innocent blood too in this situation. Yeah. So we go one. Oh, unfortunately we can't. Um, we're probably just going to get in with these. This probably has like a combo player we can attack. And then mm -hmm. we go one, two, three, four, five for this. Yep. Like that. And then next turn, we can just actually hard cast first sphere. Um, Why are we paying five for Gollum? Because from the command. Oh, four. He only costs oh. two. Yeah. Only costs oh, so wait. That under. completely changes that turn. Sorry. One sec. Yeah. So, so this is uh, tapped. Oh yeah, that's that's huge. So we swung with all this, and now we go innocent blood. So we we want to do all this before combat because we want to. We want to. Um, yeah, I would I would cast Gallman immediately innocent. Blood yeah, innocent me. blood. It. Yeah, so this is the way to go. Salute. So then we put him in the graveyard this time. We're yeah, gonna bring have up to the two. tempt token. So let's just do an infinity token here, and yeah. we'll how do we how do we draw in it? Do we go edit? No idea. Yeah. So we. Uh, like this. <laughs> now we have some spooky. Oh wait, no, we gotta. How do we undo? Undo. No clue. I've never used this before. Cancel. <laughs> Edit token. We we can do better than this chat. So we do this. Uh, we do this this ring thing here, and then like that, and then we. Can you fill? Come on, tell me there's a fill. It's just gotta be paint. We just need Microsoft Paint here, right? Yeah. Just just get the API for Microsoft Paint and and put it put it in here. Okay, so we got that. And then we have the letters, right? The squiggly doom letters. Do, 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 do. Squiggly doom, that looks perfect. Yeah, there we go. And then the inside of the ring here, which conspicuously mm -hmm. is not black. Okay, that's actually right. kind of cool. I dig it. Uh, so ring is gonna go on Yeah, a level two ring we can put on Tormented whatever we soul, want. I guess. Um, I would actually probably put it on the uh, Confessor just to diversify our threats a little bit. Um, because it does have Venice and it's tough to block anyway because it's going to be a legendary thing that needs to be blocked. Maybe I put it on this turn? Yeah, maybe. It, yeah. I mean, I, either way. Just, yeah, just, I, I, I this way. Just double up. Yeah. yeah, okay. And then now when we attack, we get a loot. This is what I wanted. Yeah, so we're going to we're gonna attack. We're going to get this, which is also a great card for us to just like yeah, move that's every gonna turn. Yeah, things over a lot This for is us. a three-mana monarch is what this is. Yep. Um, so in this case, I think because we want to... I think We, like, we can hard cast this. I would not simply because we can unearth it and do shenanigans with Gollum. And uh, I think well, we don't. That... Oh, that's right. We're going to be able to get to yeah. use it. Oh, that's a good point. So we put this in the graveyard. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then, you know, we hit them for a lot. Um, this is like, again, this is like these, these dinky one, one unblockables with bone splitters. And mm -hmm. like, they're really terrifying. They do a lot of yeah. damage. Um, so we do this. Uh, and this oh, is actually too. a rank. This is a rank two ring. So let's. Yep. Um, and then, Wow, another gonna, another one of those. It's going to be three pretty soon. So now what we do is we go one, two, three. We're going to bring back this, and we're going to draw a card. We're getting this yep. amazing flow of, of, of materials here. Um, what's the rank three of the ring do for us again? Uh, when it um, blocks, when something blocks it, they sacrifice they it. Sack in it. Okay, cool. Um, so in fact, it's going to be great on a menace creature. Do we want to do that? But we can't really, I mean, we... We can't really. Um, we want this so, to get into combat first, right? So that's the that's the only rub here. We could sack the stronghold confessor. It's not that important. Um, well, think. Of, well, I I was gonna say like making the stronghold confessor the ring bearer in this situation is awesome because if it has to be blocked by two things because of menace, it's gonna make them sacrifice two creatures that end up combat. Oh yeah. So it makes it. Oh yeah, yeah. No, that that totally makes sense. It's yeah. a big feels bad to block that thing now. This tempt mechanic is complicated. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. So we do this. We bring this back. 
I think what we're going to be, what we need to do though, is we need to get our trigger right away. So we actually mm -hmm. got to play out a, a persistent specimen. And then we sacrifice the persistent specimen to Gollum. It goes to your hand. Yep. To, to put it in. Why is this not working anymore these days? This, something's broken. I've been noticing this. Uh, put it back into my hand. There we go. And then this goes into here, and we're going to put another, we're going to rank this up. Nope, because the Gongolm leaves play a trigger, so hasn't it, he needs to be in play for it to trigger. Oh, fuck, yep. man, this is complicated. Yeah, um, so we could sacrifice, like, oh, I, uh... So we would have to, like... You know what? Strongful Confessor is not sacred. We'll sacrifice him to put Gollum into the hand. And um, yeah, that'll save that us some mana us that we to... can use to do other things. Yep, just well, get rid of the Confessor. Yeah, because you get rid of the Confessor. We keep this. We, this thing is going to go on here. Um, yep. That's the next next best thing to do. Yeah. Um, and then so, we get to play yeah. this out, right? Yep, and now, now we have it. So yeah. if okay. we block with it, we'll tempt. Attack, if attack, next turn, attack. we'll tempt it a bajillion times for gonna sure. We're going to loot, and we're going to put this one into the graveyard. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. There we go. And then yep. we've uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We actually have a land to play this turn, don't we? Because it's turn uh, seven. Possibly, yes. Yeah. One, two, three, yeah. And we've played a land. No, I think turn this is turn... Six. This should be turn six, I think, right? Because we played... Turn six. Three, three. I felt like I played a land this turn. That's why I'm confused. I'm seeing turn seven. Maybe I hit the next yeah. turn one of those times. So we'll go... Um, this thing's going to go into exile. Um, we're mm -hmm. going to go to our turn. Corrupted Conviction is so good here. Holy That's the perfect card here, yeah. God, Lordy Moses. Um, and we also just have Sanitarium Skeleton and Persistent Specimen. So the question yeah. is, do we want to get this to four? And I kind of feel like the answer is yes, we do. Um, yes, we do. And we not only do we want to get it to four, but when we get it to four, we want to move it to the to the Spirit. Or something stupid like this. Well, yeah, well, the way that we have it now with, like, the unblockable creature, I think that um, it's fine to do that. Because, remember, the Gring is a form of unblockability in a way. Um, sure, yeah, no, you're right. So it feels like putting... Yeah, let's move it to the little guy, this then. Is like a, this is like a bazooka, right? It's like a, it's a force <laughs> multiplier, right? So we, yeah, we bring it's just it back. A, again, like, it's an equipment that we're just moving around all the time. Oh, the funny thing is, though, is that we want to... We actually... Oh, man, the sequencing here is really tough. Um, yeah. this is, this is big brain, um, because that brings it into play tapped. We can't attack with it. We want to be able to attack with this. So, um, so then how, so do we just go and swing and then sack Gollum? Like, uh, depending on how they block, I might, I'd probably depends on how they block, Gollum. right? Um, because like if if they if they try and kill the, the yes. awakener, then we can instant speed move the ring onto the tormented soul. Yeah. Okay. Um, so say they try to do that because they don't like what we're doing, then we go corrupted yeah. conviction on Gollum to swap this over to here. Yep. Um. It goes up to three, which is not important. Or, or does it go? Oh, do we already have it at three? Okay. Yeah. Then it goes yeah. up to four. Oh jeez. Yep. Um. Oh, and also, walkers, and we also didn't get our loot as well um, oh yeah so this is going to go into the graveyard because we can always bring it back and loot it back well what i probably do in this situation is discard a land because we can spend our mana to cast the skeleton and then return good point. the specimen so we can kind of like get them both in well, a position we're actually where we, can... we drew these cards before combat damage now we can go like this yeah. watch this this is spicy dorkuchi shadow walker yeah that's spicy. like that and then we go um one mana dark ritual one mana ecstatic awakener one mana well yeah and then set that up um like this and then uh pay the last one to bring this back into our hand sacrificing the skeleton yep yeah yep like that and great then... yeah that's that's a perfect for next turn to activate the awakener again yeah draw for turn uh swamp uh, and then we, this time we're going to use the, this thing right here. So we're going to mm -hmm. go one, two, three, one, two, three, three, to bring this back, sack it to this, 
turn it over, draw a card, and then run. I uh, actually want to see what we do with this, right? Because oh, I, I would probably not flip the Awakener yet because it's an instant speed way to, again, move the ring if we want to do that. Oh. Um, yeah. It's nice, though. Look at all this damage we're going to deal. <laughs> It's, yeah, I know. Uh, 3, like... 12, 16. <laughs> this is 21 damage. Um, yeah, I think I think if there's one thing, so granted, like, it's felt a little weird kind of getting used to the sequencing. Yeah. But you'll notice that like we've been doing a lot of damage. What if we just what if we just golem as a blocker? And we, we go and we yeah. do this thing um like that, and we're gonna loot. Oh, that's really good. We're actually gonna loot a land away. Mm-hmm. Because this is two bodies now for us to use to sacrifice. And then yeah. we're going to probably block because we're dealing a lot of damage and people are scared. And then, uh, yep, we get this. So at this point, um, so I'm just going to hold these things out of the graveyard so that we kind of can like visualize that they're, that they're there. Yep. Um, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, land for turn. Um, cause we're one ahead cause of the next turn thing. Yeah. Um, also, I, I think just like based on just looking at how we're drawing cards, um, and we're able to hit our land drops very easily. I think chain fill centipede is actually really, really good on this deck. Yeah. We're, we're drawing a lot of cards actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, maybe it's just the way this one is felt, but it feels that way. Right. And this is also mm -hmm. in our graveyard too. So, Right. Like this these cards are nuts when we have tons of mana because it's just like da 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 like yep. um uh so in this case here we don't have a whole lot going on. I feel like we just go to combat. Yeah. Because we want to loot. Feed the swarm, pitch this. Pretty good. Yeah. Um and this is in the graveyard right now, so we can go mm -hmm. one to, like we're in no rush to use this. Yeah, get um, specimen out, sacrifice it to Gollum, I mean, cast Gollum again. There's also Crypt Rats, and by this point, it's possible we need to pop this thing and like wipe the board of stuff. And if we do that, then we have to switch mm -hmm. the ring onto something, which Gollum can do yeah. for us. So let's just yep. say we have to respond, because it's always important with these playtesting to assume that we're getting hurt. Like, people are hitting us. Mm -hmm. you know, we're doing something scary. Uh, we play this out, um, and then let's play out a... Uh, um, So usually with Crypt Rats, you want to hold up the mana so that you you just yep. like dominate other people's turns for a turn cycle. Mm -hmm. Usually people will then force you to have it by bolting it or something, but then you're getting another card from them, which is even better. Right. So we kind of in the spot where we're just holding pattern. If you come at like, like they're going to have to force us to use it now. Um, mm -hmm. So we pop it for, let's say three, because that would kill gut tokens yeah. um, and gut. Yep. Um, so this would die. We this lose our soul. Die. No. Um, this is now, now we don't have anybody with this on it, right? So this Right, is, nothing's holding the ring. Nothing's holding the ring. And then um, end step, we just go one, two, three, return persistent specimen. Mm -hmm. And then draw. Darkness is sweet here. Yeah. Um, so like now, really, we're, we're really well set up here. Like yeah. in a situation like this, like even if say something happens where we lose our entire board, um, we still have, if we have any one of those three creatures, Clay Revenant, Sanitarium Skeleton, or Persistent Specimen, we always have access to a Golem that we can attach a Bone Splitter to and just attack. Yeah, Golem, <laughs> so, is, Golem like, is like... We'll, all, we'll always have it. Yeah, yeah. Like, Golem is amazing so like, here as like a blocker and also... So like, like yeah, j just cast aside all of the synergy stuff, all the game plan, like, tempting stuff. Like, at the end of the day, you have just a 3-1 that is always going to be on the battlefield attacking. And... yeah. yeah. Like, is there a way I can't. To I can't express how powerful that is. So we can't. Can you can you trigger the sacrificing of a creature? To what do you mean? Wait a second. Would you do you have to have Gollum in the graveyard to sack a creature? Like you have to have a valid. Yes, you got, yeah, it has to be in the, in the graveyard. You can't so. do the weird like mana sink. Um, yeah, I think he has to be in the graveyard for you to do it. And since it's a sorcery, you can't like put it on the stack multiple times. It's kind of interesting though, because it's as a cost, right? You're sacrificing a creature as a cost. So you sacrifice mm -hmm. him 
and then you target him, right? That's initially how how I thought it could work, but uh, after further investigation, that is not how it functions. Not he needs to be in the graveyard for it to work. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Fucking magic rules. <laughs> 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 trying to trying to destroy all of our fun. Um, I know. So we got we got Gollum. There's no way to swap this over, which is something I'm kind of miffed by. Like I want that to happen because I want to I want to loot more. But you want to move move the ring onto something. Yeah, I want to um, move the ring so, onto something. So do this. Uh, cast feed the swarm on Gollum. <sighs> yeah, yeah, you're not wrong. Uh, that's this is the thing we can do. Uh, feed the swarm Gollum uh, back into the grave. Uh, we're gonna lose some life. Um, and then yep. we go, what, one for two, three. This is a lot of screwing around to swap this thing, but like. Well, it, we just, we just moved it. We call him when, go, when he goes, when he leaves the battlefield, it moves. Oh. Yeah, that's why we kill yeah, him. God, this deck is really like throwing me for a loop. So now <laughs> we're going to put this on probably the smaller one. And then we yeah. pay one to put this on here as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then yes. I think we just go to combat. Yeah, it's a big fat 6-4. Ditch this. Yep. Um, yeah, 6-4. And then we can go... We could do... So I think we hold up darkness and then persistent specimen. So during mm -hmm. our next turn, we go three mana, return persistent specimen, or probably darkness first, so that we see if they have a mana leak. Um, yeah. And then you know just to protect our life total, and then we we get that back, and then our turn comes around. Turn a lot of lands. A lot of lands. Yeah, it's crazy. A turn twelve though, like I, the, this is so much damage that we've been dealing. I think this game is probably over, but you can see mm -hmm. that we have things we can do. Like these things here are doing things. We're getting card advantage from this. Um, you know, there might be even a point in time where like the amount of mana we have here suggests that Opal Palace would actually be playable because at any time you can send it to the command. Yeah. Zone, right. And then if yeah. you do, then it's like, OK, here's my here's my uh, seven four golem. So I also think that like this game is a good case study in terms of like how Mortician Beetle, Carrion Feeder, Pixian Infiltrator can be very powerful because like, yeah. Just look at how many things we sacrificed that game. Just like it's very not gross. explicitly trying to sacrifice for value, but just like doing what our deck is doing. So just incidentally, we... they just get very large. And like large creatures, even if like we're not, I don't know, large creatures are just good to have. So then we're just like very low investment. Carry and feeder. We have to remember to carry and be a uh, mortician beetle benefit and, and Gixian infiltrator benefit mm -hmm. from these edicts very strongly. So mm -hmm. keep, that's something to keep in mind. I think that, I mean, in, in a situation like this where like we, we've seen it once and kind of saw how it, uh, how it interacts, I think, um, I don't know. I think like cards like this or Dragon might be too cute and, and too low impact. I think a card like Mortician Beetle is going to be much more in line with what we're trying to do than something like this or Dragon. Because it's a one-time. Now, I mean, yeah, we had it, the benefit there of having two of our Sure. but even if we only had pieces. one i mean we're, we're like we looted like eight times that game um yeah it's like we're seeing a lot of cards and I this like dragger's like this card would it's very out. it's very synergistic and like it does a really cool thing but i think it might be too cute and i think the the raw power of a card like mortician beetle is something that we want more just because we are a linear aggro deck well like more linear than 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 most uh but What's, I don't a, know. what's a, like a less or we less could even cut something like prickly bogger you know like i think i like prickly bogger more than i like blight keeper i think flying's better than fear is flying better than fear i think fear is better because it's like only black creatures and artifact creatures as opposed to flyers which are like everywhere right now but but, but uh it can, it can also it can block work. um and it has That's the ability why. on it so okay so let's let's cut prickly bogger then um yeah, okay, Prickly Bogger. Now we're to 100. And I, I brought Opal Palace in again. I think that that mm -hmm. like, seems like a play pattern that we might do. Yeah, like kind of circle back what I was saying earlier about how like, um, you know, we can always cast Gollum as a, put Gollum on the battlefield as a 3, as a 3 1 to attack for basically free. A, a 4 2 is even better. So, yeah. Yep, okay. 
Um, yeah, I'm sold on the sacrifice stuff here. And the funny thing is that it just ended up making us have more one drops, which. Yeah, I but thought. not like the cute sacrifice stuff, right? Like, no, like these the are, stuff these that just really like good. very naturally <laughs> becomes large. Yeah, a free sacrifice outlet on it, it, free sacrifice outlets have a, a, a long and storied history of being yeah. b -b 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 broken. Um, <laughs> and even and, and even after a couple more like draws, if we find that like uh we want to expand on that a little bit like viscera seer is probably very powerful here too if because if, we're looting so much like being able to scry off of all of our sacrifices just to smooth it jesus christ this but, deck has look at this curve chat like yeah I don't that's what i like how to many see people are still here with us let me let me take a look let's see how many i'm a 24 one drops kind of wow, guy we so got we got this, this, this actually six people still still watching us do this you all are fucking troopers i'm a throw yeah. that out there this is this is more complicated than a lot of the other ones we've done because it's like an entirely new mechanic that we're working with and it it works in really strange ways like like the text on this tempt mechanic is is exceptionally confusing um mm -hmm. can't be blocked by greater power like what yeah. is what is that skulk. skulk right but like <laughs> how does that interact with like your creature base and like what kind of what does that incentivize right yeah um yeah little guys the looting right like there's another part of it like we there's so many interwoven things here there's like sacrifice outlets there's like yeah. value engines there's discarding there's you know unblockability yeah. there's like instant speed moving the tempt onto things there's equipment yeah, and this is something that's really cool stuff. about this deck <laughs> is that like it, it wants us to play smaller creatures which we have a lot of yeah. but also like to go back about diversifying your threats like it's really important to have like larger things too um so like that's why mortician beetle is great because it fits that role right yeah, it can be either a little thing that comes down early or it's a, like a huge th threat later and we have a couple of those diversify. right like like the, um, um, the other one being the uh um the two mana um the gluttonous slug yeah, um I like the initiative cool. is also buffing up creatures we're also like kind of mm -hmm. buffing them up by playing edicts right where we're sacking yeah. like a one one and turning it into a four two that's kind of reading everybody sack a creature i put three plus one plus one counters on my on this creature yep. right um so yeah let's let's throw this one more time here wow mm -hmm. what a curve sounds pretty good yeah i like this um it's a little we were not playing something on one which is very oh is highborn ghoul still in deck yes we could cut something for that i think you think so? We cut that for something, yeah. It, it, it I don't know for what yet, but that's something that that's a okay. card I think I'd be good for something. One like drop. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Nope. Right, there we go. Um, this is very atypical. You almost it's never fine. have. Let's we'll play Golem on too. Play. I kind of what I want to do is go Highborn Ghoul and then Golem oh, sure. Decay Dead. Oh yeah, we can do that on turn three. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. good. I like that. Whoa. <laughs> Uh, I would do it. I, I would still. Uh, yeah, that's still what we want to do, right? We go yeah, one, so. two. This goes to the graveyard, and then this becomes the, the. Uh, we're not going to make ring the ring now. again, um, but we're gonna. Okay, yeah. fine. We'll make the ring again. Okay. <laughs> here. Wow. Oh, it's clumsy. It's close enough. Reset the token. Here we go. Like this, and just the ring. We're not going to do all the fancy shenanigans. Okay, we got the ring. Beautiful. Yep, it's awesome. And we're going to add a counter. We're just going to put it above so we can track that. And so this mm -hmm. is going to be now um, it is we can't can't be blocked with creatures by greater power. Okay. Yep. So it's cool. like uh, it's, in, it's yeah, it's just kind of like double the layer evasion. Yeah, I like, by the way, the idea of tempting onto Keljor and dead because it's mm -hmm. got regenerate. It right? regenerates. Yeah, yes. this hand is so good. Um, yeah. Like. So what are we doing here? so there's a couple things we can do um i would probably i might just cast the blind the the three mana two two blind zealot and carrion feeder yeah or leave a mana up for defile depending on what we're on turn like. four so i'm usually like okay to tap out then unless there's like a gretchen who's or we just obnoxious. don't even cast the carrion feeder we leave the mana up to regenerate keldron dead during combat if they oh, don't yeah. block if they leave it up then we can use that mana to do something else that's right so we do this yeah. they don't they don't block uh, because they know we have regen and then we run out the carrion feeder mm -hmm. um this wasn't able to attack but we know that um Oh, cool. Clay Revenant's a yeah. great card right now. So now yeah, that, we turns, that turns us on in a big way. One, one sacrifice, get this back. Why is this yep. a problem right now? Um, sacrifice to get this back. Recast it. Yep. The Tempt does move slow. This is a very, this is a somewhat slow mechanic I'm noticing. It's kind of interesting. 
So now we're we're attacking on turns. What turn five? I mean, this is like, and actually, we're only doing this if we we were going to use the regenerate first. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, well, wait, no, we've got the carrion feeder. Yeah, now oh, we can. So now, now we're just we on. Now we're cooking. This. Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. counter. Um, like that. This is now going to go to two, which means we loot, which is exactly. Yep. Kind Probably of... want to keep it on the highborn ghoul. Yeah, we kind of wish we had. Do you have? Is it a may ability? No, it's not uh, a may yeah. ability. Well, you can choose the same creature though. It doesn't have to move. Oh right, but what I'm saying is yeah. that is the discard of may ability. Oh, uh, and sure. It, and it it is not a may ability. Um, so what we'll do so is we, we pitch a thing. That's fine. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we could use a land here anyway. So uh, no, it's not bad. The thing is that the Mokotai Ambusher is what I want to use on Gollum. But yeah. Gollum okay. oh, and just pitch, pitch the is thorn. actually like, pitch the thorn. Yeah, I like the removal spell, I like the ninja. Thorn we don't need. Because mm -hmm. we've got the engine online right now. So like, This is drawing three cards a turn. If sure, we get it but... down. Right? Uh, well, maybe we don't need the ninja. The, the if, we ninja have, if we have carrion feeder, right? Yeah, so we don't need the ninja then. And actually, I think okay. we move this onto Carrion Feeder, by the way, because this is the most likely sure. to get blocked here. All this other stuff, you know, like, and so yeah, we, we do this. We ditch the the this thing, and mm -hmm. then we play out the Bajuka Bog. And yep. by the way, we held up mana here for this, I think, too, because we can we can uh, if we want to get the trigger, we have to do that beforehand, which exposes this. Mm -hmm. So I think we don't attack with that unless we have like a good target, like a Gretchen. You're not blocking. All right, there sure. we go. Cool. Um, and then next turn, um, this is a turn where I'd almost just feel comfortable just like Thorn Defile, hold up Graveyard Hate, mm -hmm. uh, Monarch. Um, and then we actually have a thing we can loot with here. So we attack uh, with all this. We have the Regenerate mm -hmm. now. We're going to loot. Um, Rotten Reunion seems fine to ditch. Um, and Probably then, just hold up the removal spell. Yeah, just hold up a removal spell. Let's just say we yeah. have to use it. Okay. Um, and now we go to our turn. This uh, this this is looking great. I'm loving this. Mm -hmm. um, so I would love to get. We're turn seven. I would really love to to to. You know, get to that point where we can start to apply a lot of pressure to everybody so there's yeah. a so how do we do that here so we go we need to sacrifice so it probably i mean we'll probably because we're not going to get it this turn so i think it's worth it to blight attack keeper. we could go like well, well like what if we ran out blight keeper and then we mm -hmm. sacrificed it brought this back and then recast it yep and then sacrifice it to Carrion Feeder mm -hmm. to tempt one more time. Um, and then, do we draw at the end of the last turn too? Did we? Did we, um, we drew I the think, Rotten Reunion, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then I think we just keep the mana up for regen. And we yep. swing. We're going to get a loot darkness. Is it's not better? bad here. It's pretty good. Well, because we, yeah, when we swing out, I think it's worth it to keep it up to the whole other monarch. Yeah, so we ditch this. Yep. Which this is our path to cheaply getting this out, but we could go. We actually do have a ma enough mana to go clay revenant. Mm -hmm. Back one gall. No, we're we're shy of being able to bring clay back, play it, play golem. Okay. Well, let's then let's yeah. If the goal is to get to the top. At this yeah. point, then we'll just pitch the darkness. Which which sucks, because... Well, maybe we yeah. draw a card off the top. We're going to draw a card off Monarch. So let's pitch oh, that's this. True. Let's pitch this, yeah. Sure. And then uh, end of turn, we draw off Monarch. Oh, that's fine. Um, mm -hmm. And then we uh, draw again. Vault of Whispers is not a creature. Um, mm -hmm. But we could sacrifice, like, the Highborn Ghoul. It doesn't need to be... Yeah, yeah we don't right? need that anymore. So uh, bring this back into our hand. Won't do it, but that's fine. One, two, uh, play this, sack it to get this up to four. Yep. And then and, go to combat yeah. just to see what happens here. 
This probably stays with, behind. With, with, with it on with it on number four, I might be more inclined to put the ring onto the throne, oh, onto the thorn, or onto the Keljor and dead because it regenerates. Well, that too, but but with the thorn, just because it makes it more, it's more evasive on that creature. Oh, it, so it's yeah, more... it, like it's not gonna get blocked anymore. Yeah. So we're looting. Ooh, that's I'd pitch. No. We're gonna probably play this land so that we can have yeah. these two up. So we're probably pitching this. Well, I'd probably keep the chain devil. I, depending on what the board looks like, I'd yeah. pitch the removal spell or darkness. Because um, we haven't played a land, so we can hold up all three of these if we if we mm -hmm. don't do that. And we're going to draw another card. We don't really sure. have any explicit synergy with this right now. Um, yeah, that's true. That's true. So let's ditch this, play this out, draw for Monarch. That's, wow. Yeah, that's good. Nice. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah. yeah, and let's just say we have to use all this. Um, cause mm -hmm. we're just, you know, so. and more, we have mortuary mire in this deck too, right? Uh, I don't know if we've made that change yet. So this is, because turn if eight. We're... this is turn eight, just to go, go over this. This is turn eight. This looks really good. Yeah. This looks, this looks solid. We've been applying pressure since very early stages of the game. We've, it, it, it's funny how this effect builds up. Yeah. Right. Like, like it, 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 it grows, you know, in, in power, which makes sense. Um, and y like, this is a, this is a, an aggressive board state. Um, if we wanted to make it even more so we can always bring the golem into play. Like there's this, I think at the end of the game and where the opal palace makes a lot of sense is that you get to a point mm -hmm. where golem is now an attacker. Yeah. Right. Um, and, but up until then, he's just kind of like this weird form of like, yeah. Water. Um, and and I mean in a real game like it might even be something where like people do block him and kill him so we don't even have to like engineer this whole thing you know yeah it depends uh, it yeah you just kind of have to run it into a pot and see but I, I think moving forward with this what I what I personally would want to do is just like gut the removal package if I'm being honest um, I think this deck would be a lot cleaner if we I mean it's kind not of a, it's not a CPD cut shot down on the react removal in it <laughs> uh, well I, I I certainly think it could be I mean. I like it. Like I said, I I think when, and this is kind of the same tack I take with like heritage druid is, mm. is that like when we're trying to achieve very specific things, the amount of cards that muddy that up should be kept to a minimum, like only to the most essential things. So like I would only keep the most like efficient and broad spectrum removal spells. Like it would have to fit into both those categories, like the middle of the Venn diagram, things like snuff out things like defile. Um, spinning darkness. We haven't talked about, but if you're playing mono black and you're not playing spinning darkness, you are probably spinning doing darkness is good. Yeah, um, really good. But like the free stuff, the stuff that hits the broadest swath of creatures for the lowest cost. The ones um, that come on the bodies. things that I would keep. Like feed the yeah. swarm is kind of an interesting card here because like we don't actually care about. I would cut feed the swarm. Like like we don't care. Like our commander doesn't get tagged by pestilence. This is like never happening. Um, so we could cut that, um, even though it's a good powerful card. I would um, probably cut like. This, I'm not cutting any further. There's no fucking way. <laughs> I'm just saying like what I would do. I would probably cut. <laughs> victim of night, blind oh. sell it. Ah. Oh. Uh, Oh my god, you'd go even deeper. That's yeah, savage. That is, uh, well, we got room for chain flail centipede now, which is crazy. Look, and we're cool. we're just trying we're just trying to get them. So you know. Yeah, I hear you. A lot of all of our pieces are like very redundant, and and there aren't like How it's do, not like we're trying to you know protect the queen as it were. You How know? do we feel about these two cards now that we've seen? They how can many probably lands go going, right. Like they could be like. What are some other? So let, let, let's go back to this. Will be kind of our our our. What last are some other thing aggressive here. things we can be doing? Um, so we'll go compare <sighs> other ideal like like. This could be where we put in stuff like the girder goons. Or... I'm much more inclined to to put in something like nested shambler. Um, yeah. Or, or something or something that see again like it's something like with with girder goons or. Um, the slave driver, those are built in to take advantage of very specific synergies that, that require setup. Like it's something that when we draw the card, we're not going to be like, oh, great, I'm going to cast this now and do the thing. Um, and I really like this deck as something that just like is able to draw a card and play that card. Mm -hmm. um, 
and not have to like wait for it to be good. I like nested or, shambler and um, because like one of the things I was seeing there is that while we did have these things like clay revenant, that mm-hmm. that loop is insanely expensive. It's three mana to bring yeah. it back. It's, it's, it's a great late game thing it. to fall back on, but yeah, it is expensive. But it's a super expensive thing. And like nested yep. shambler in line with what you're saying is a card that you just play out and it gives you mm-hmm. two uses of Gollum. Yep. Done. Like, like done and done. Right. It's very clean. Yeah. I, and, I like and, it. and it, you know, what I would do when I cut a lot of the removal spells is I would put in a lot more equipment. Um, so that makes that a shambler better too. Yeah, no, that's for sure. We've already done a couple of that. Like the nested shambler with the um, chain flail is pretty sweet. The nested damage mm-hmm. shambler with the bone splitter is really sweet. Um, yep. That's a really good interaction um, that I like. Um, we got Zach in chat, ring bearer, because Zach goes by <laughs> brew bearer, of course. Um, oh, right you, Papa, you need that removal. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm actually like I'm amenable to the cuts we made where we brought it down to ten. Um, I, I I think that's like like we are like a proactive deck that is looking to, you know, the whole like interacting by killing people is not something I subscribe to um, in, in like the full meme sense of it. But it is sure. like when you're playing these more aggressive decks, the compromise is that you apply more pressure and you don't have as much removal. That's, that's, that's literally like the way it works. So, well, um, yeah. The, the, well, the thing about it is like, and we touched on this earlier, it's like when you apply that pressure, um, you're making other people's removal spells worse because you put them in positions where they need to use it suboptimally. Yeah. So again, like it, it kind of reaches a weird equilibrium. So I don't think you you lose a lot by like sacrificing some of your removal spells. Mm-hmm. Because again, like if I'm going to be asking questions, I want to be asking questions and I don't, I don't want to like be in a position where I need to be applying more pressure and advancing my board state and I draw a removal spell that I have no good targets for. Yeah. Um, I don't like holding cards in my hand. I don't like being stuck with things that I can't use if I'm trying to like take a more aggressive linear game plan. Mm-hmm. Um, so like on paper, I'm much, I'm much more likely to cut removal spells. Again, keeping like a handful of the most efficient ones, the ones that are best, like Vicious Offering, for example, yeah. might be better than All the other ones. All of ours are like, um, like really efficient like, the way they are. Like that kind of stuff. I like those cards a lot, but um, I wouldn't put any, I, w- I wouldn't like, I, I think it's a mistake to just describe to like it since it's a competitive deck. I need eighteen removal spells, you know. Yeah, not not necessarily like it, it's more about the 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 thing is is like it, I regularly find myself in situations where like somebody gets a stick up their ass about what I'm doing, and I mm-hmm. like have to be able to defend myself because they're just gonna kill me. Sure. And so like the the importance of that is like. Um, yeah, maybe, I, maybe that's inflated for me as a streamer because okay, I don't mean to diminish way, but, the the value of, yeah. of that kind of interaction. It, it's I I think that like, then I mean the reason why I don't issue it entirely is because like there are situations where you just need to like yeah. remove a thing to like enable kind of a flashpoint combat step yeah. or a flashpoint turn that could just kind of like pivots I mean, mainly, the game into the end stages. I'm mainly talking about stop and combo. That's that's like sure. my main thing, and being dead to combo like like is feels like the silliest thing in the world to be like caught with my mm-hmm. pants down against these combo decks that like they're winning a lot right now, but like the gig is up. Like these, these combo decks are dangerous and right. they're, they're very vulnerable to every single piece of interaction in the game. And they're winning like crazy. And it's yeah. like, th- like the, the responsibility is on like, people to be adjusting for that in a way where they're not losing to things that are like vulnerable to counter spells, vulnerable to, protection spells like intervene mm-hmm. and confound they're vulnerable to yep. enchantment hate to creature killing to edicts to like it just every single yeah. board, like it, every single thing in the game and yet they're doing it, that it, thing so it might just it might just be me and i i have a tremendous propensity to just like meta game super hard like not even in terms of like mm-hmm. card choices but like how That's i structure good. my decks yeah, because because the thing code. about it like so if you look at it like this right like whenever if someone's trying to combo off oftentimes you need like at least two uh, pieces of removal to stop it oh, yeah. um, amongst the three players or, yeah, like, witnessing right, the combo, right? Me and somebody else, right? Right. Yeah. So like if, if you're looking at a deck like this in terms of like, how do you prevent yourself from dying to combo? Really like the goal should be to have one piece of interaction yes, for when piece. the player tries that's, to combo. That's what I want. Yeah, that's what I right. want. Right. So like, so like, I don't think you need a ton because you really just need that one to like buy that turn to where you can like make a I huge fully impact. Agree. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, like, maybe that should be the goal is just to, like, have a removal suite to where you can 
a reasonable percentage of the time, just yeah. like ensure that you have by turn five a removal spell in hand. And I think we're going like to do that. that. Like we're we're generally going to have access to one, and that's yeah. really where we want to be. And that, that's the long more, reason but... why I think it's worth cutting a lot of removal yeah. spells. I get I um, get that. Yeah. yeah. So where we're at right now, one of the things I'm realizing, having play tested this deck, is that these mm -hmm. undying malice effects are insanely efficient at getting this temp yeah. thing happening. I'm realizing yeah. that now, like like. Like the, the sure, so let's, let's try it like putting these in to do to like make things yeah. work. It was like kind of insane. And this right here is like one mana, do that thing. And if they kill our commander with this on the stack, I'm gonna fucking laugh at them. Like, that's like, yeah. all right, I was, I was just trying to get a tempt anyways. So it's like, yeah. you know, the, these cards are gonna be, yeah, and you very well maybe right. Like, good. like, like maybe instead of like going the equipment way, we just like, um, like keep Bone Splitter because it's busted, and we keep keep Silvak Life Staff because it's busted, and we don't yeah. like make room for anything else. And when we cut, when I cut removal spells, maybe I'll just yeah, replace them with go. these to just to just to you know grease those with a little bit. Yeah, that, that's certainly valid. Like, or we can find places, other places to put them. But like if we want to go like Turbo Ring, then I think like that's probably. I I, wanna, I think you're I probably go right. Harder on the ring, yeah, because like because yeah. the thing that tempt the thing that tempts me about the ring. The thing that I find tempting about this effect is is honestly like it's the second stage and the fourth mm -hmm. stage. Those two stages are so yeah, good. Yeah, they're the big ones. Uh, they're the really big hitters. They're the ones that allow us to push over the top. Uh, we have a question. Yeah. Douglas Wilson said, did you look at the call to the netherworld or any of the madness cards for looting ability? We did. Um, madness is a bit of a trap if you're using it reactively. So cards like, um, like Dark Banishing, um, kind of bad. Like you want to use them to deploy creatures. So the creatures that we do have yeah. are Gorgon. If you... Um, what is it called? Gorgon Recluse. Gorgon Recluse, yeah, uh, and, and Kitchen black, Imp. Uh, and then Kitchen Imp. Uh, but the thing with, like, Call to the Netherworld, like, it's kind of this, this weird, like, one-for-one one recursion spell, and there's, like, other cards that you can just... I don't know. It just doesn't it's excite not, it's not me like a, a lot, you know? It's it's more playing on the synergy rather than, like, a card that yeah. is... Yeah, you I don't... got to be careful about, about Madness. With, with a lot I, of them, like, like a lot of the Madness of spells are played... <laughs> A lot of the mana spells are played best reactively, and yeah, since we're yeah. looting on a predetermined point in the turn, it's tough to take advantage and maximize those effects. And I, I think maybe instead of... And, and granted, like, I'm a synergy-focused player 90% of the time. I love synergy-based decks. Um, and oftentimes, I will sideline obliquely, you know, transparently powerful cards yeah. for highly synergistic things, um, just because the ceiling tends to be higher. But, like, in a deck like this, it might be better to just, like, not fall into that hole and just, like, focus on, like, this is what we're doing right. and we should be focusing on doing and that thing. Your priorities are often different, too, right? Like, you're, you're yeah. like, oftentimes you're operating in the casual space where the, the mm -hmm. parameters are different, right? But, of course, like, when we're in this space and you've shifted your mentality over to that, we see, like, the different things playing um, yeah. playing roles that are that are... And it's the same if I were to try and like go into the casual space, like our, our heuristics completely change. Right? Yeah, like like the it, it, Heritage Shoot is a great example of this because the deck is built to replicate a very simple play pattern of like turn one, turn one elf, turn two elf, Heritage Shoot, play a three drop, next turn play a five drop. Yeah. So I play a lot of one drops, like a density, 24 of them or 23 of them um, so that I hit that play pattern. I have that three, I have those three elves on turn two in like 90% of the games that I play with the deck. Um, and a lot of those cards are kind of dinky, but they enable a very powerful play pattern. Mm -hmm. So that's why I do it yeah. reliably. Oh, um, supernatural. Yeah. So what are we cutting? Like, so if I have five of these now, because I want mm -hmm. I want to do this, I like this, this feels like the thing that, that we were missing there is like... So what I would do is just to, to, to just make it a proof of concept, I would literally just cut removal spells, honestly. Because if we want to see if it works and how effective it is, then we want to start there, I think, just to make room for those cards. And then, as we have a chance to play test it in real games, we can kind of see where we have room to, to, to finagle more stuff in. Um, or, or even if like, we like, need a ton of removal spells at all. Uh, but I think in terms of like testing the engine, it's better to cut the reactive spells just because in our play testing, uh, they'll, they, they will be, they, they will inform less about how the deck functions in terms of like putting together the ring, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, let's, let's use math here. Cause yeah. I, I'm, I'm confident doing what we're talking about. If we can kind of guarantee that we're going to have a kill spell because like, playing no like no removal is so irresponsible right now it's so i'm not saying like, i'm not saying pay no removal i, I just I think but like if like spells, at what know? point do we have like not enough like right like where sure. where at what point are we like just stone cold dead to these stupid things that shouldn't be mm -hmm. working right like um at, like so if we have like population size 99 
sample size is like, what do we want to have a removal spell by? Like turn six? Average I, I game would say is probably ending like on turn, turn, turn four or five. Turn four or five? Okay, so that's mm-hmm. five would be uh, 12. 12 cards. Um, successes in the population. Say it's... Um, and we've got edicts and sweepers. We have... Um, let's do a quick count here because we, we've got some overlapping effects that we have to pay attention to. Um, so we have... actually make one, the sample size either like maybe 13 or 14 um, because we'll probably be looting at least once by that oh, time. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we'll get one loot. Um, so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen four it's probably like like eight or nine so and and like and to be completely frank like edicts are not that great right now like i know these are good in the deck mm-hmm. but like Right, they're they're not going to kill the thing we want to kill. No, they're they're going to kill a Gretchen, which they don't care about. They're going to kill like, you know, a freaking hunted witness. They're going to kill some stupid, just like like a TPI token. Yeah. Like Maybe these are not where we want to be. Let's just do this. Let's let's okay. do this. This this feel innocent blood is super cheap, um, and it's like a cheap way to get the golem trigger, right? Yeah, um, I so like I like innocent blood. I, I like that. Yeah, if yeah. we're going to cut the rest. That's fine. So that that's good, and then so now we have one, eleven, twelve. So let's just do the math on twelve and see where that leaves us at. Successes in the population is twelve, and we want to get one, right? Mm-hmm. So calculate that. So drawing one or more, and actually this is a higher sample size. Let's say it's uh, thirteen, right? So yeah, turn thirteen, four, probably between are we thirteen and fourteen. On turn four? Maybe with um, these new cards, we are. Maybe, yeah, I don't know for sure, but I don't think it's unreasonable. Like, okay, so average games ending on turn eight, eight and a half, eight point one. So if we yeah. said by turn five, that's uh so that's a card every turn, so that that's that's twelve. So this is saying mm-hmm. drawing one or more of the wanted card is eighty percent. What if we said over the course of eight, so eight so add three more turns to this, so three more turns at this point we're definitely looting so that's three so Mm -hmm. times two so six so 18 cards yeah and let's say let's see what are the odds of us drawing two over 18 70 percent i'm comfortable with that i'm comfortable with that i'm i'm comfortable with that but that means we got to find other cuts Mm -hmm. right um it, it, you know frankly it's kind of weird but it could be innocent blood i mean i know it's efficient but it's like again like why why are these i would cut i would i would honestly just cut dark ritual before that if i'm being honest oh, okay just dark it's... ritual yeah yeah so what does dark ritual look like though because there are some busted starts you can the you and there are this, right? um, you go like dark ritual but, but, into but again like for establishing like a baseline for the deck as like a starting point yeah. i think it's fine to cut um because i think that should be like kind of one of the goals here is just to have so... like a, a proof of concept um, and I don't think we need Dark Ritual to do that. Having one Edict in the deck feels like a thing we should probably do. And then yeah, I think the cuts. fact that Innocent Blood is one mana is 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 a good a good sell there. Um, ah. Maybe and we have a lot of one drops. Uh, so there's a part yep. of me that looks like Blight Keeper. Um, now you were talking about Highborn Ghoul. Yeah. I feel like in how many flyers do we have? Hmm. One, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I get, I'm getting really, really garbled, distorted audio instead of matching up. I'm out. Check, check, check. I don't check, know if check, it's just check. me or what. But yeah. My mic went crazy. Can you all hear me now? I can hear you now. The mic yeah. went crazy, he says. Uh, Doug, <laughs> Douglas Wilson says the mic went crazy. Um, yeah, we're back. Okay, cool. We're back. We're back. Uh, thanks for thanks for your patience, everyone. Um, okay, so then if we have another thing that we could 
so we need to cut two things and I feel like they need to be mm -hmm. one drops. Like this is very glutted. 20 is like statistically way more than we need to hit like a lot of these on like turn three. Um, yeah. I, you know, it, it's in, like some of the stuff that's here. Um, yeah. I mean, like maybe, maybe confessor, <sighs> confessor and unwilling ingredient, maybe. I think the unwilling ingredient is better than the blight keeper. I like that this gets death touch. This has okay. actually been very potent for me. Eight sure. Yeah. Let's, let's go blight keeper. Um, so those two, there we go. Yeah. Okay. No, it's a lot. Yeah. So here we go. Um, there's no creatures here and four lands. This feels like a mulligan. I mean, it's kind of yeah. funny. You can go clay revenant into Gollum and that's like reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, but then you don't have anything to like give the ring to. Uh, right. I don't like it. Um, this it just looks better to me. Insane. Yeah, <laughs> this is really good. If we draw a land on any of the next two draws, we're going to be cooking with pure mm -hmm. gasoline. Um, so land. Cast Gollum here. Yeah, we could cast Gollum. Uh, next turn, we'll probably... This sets us up for like a really powerful turn three. It does. We get a land. Well, the, the, yeah, it's... it's a land. Uh, I think what we do is swing in, get the damage, because the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the um, first stage doesn't matter that much. Um, and yeah. then we go... Undying uh, Malice, Killer, and Dead. <laughs> oh my god, we get to do that. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Just get Gollum right back. Wow, that immediately feels so aggressive. <laughs> what the fuck? Turn three. Even if even if we didn't have dead, we, I mean, we could still we could still village rights it, you know. Eight power, and then we, yeah. we we get the we get the ring, which yeah, okay, chat, yeah, we'll do it. I know you're gonna ask, even though nobody's <laughs> asked this whole this time, but you know this is this is for me, not for you. <laughs> and we're actually really well set up here too, because like we have the madness creature to loot for our yeah. first loot. Uh, we're gonna um, we've got a village rights to get to the loot itself. Yeah. So like this turn, on our next turn, even if we don't draw land, we could village rights, um, attack, loot, cast Gorgon. Wow. Um, it's funny how like this effect, though, makes me want to attack with the golem. Right, and then like yeah. temp, tempt at end step or something. Yeah, I mean we don't we, we don't need to of, right. Like this is all any. optional. Right, we have lots of cards. Right, we have a lot of power on board, and we're setting pace. So like we don't need to further our board anymore unless yeah. like something happens that requires us to do it. But so with this board, power. I don't I don't feel that it's necessary. Yeah, it's so much power. Um, we could actually do the um. Oh, this is how we do it. Skull. Oh snatcher. sure, this is a good one. Yeah, this is this is the way. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, we're getting there, chat. We're getting there. This is, you know, this is why we had to dig the, dig the, we had to go down the rabbit hole is because we were going to find the gold somewhere down there. Um, and then we do this and this is actually going to mean we get the loot. So we're going to loot. Um, and I hate that we're looting right now a little bit because these are, I would really... cut the, I would cut the blind, the blind zealot, if I'm being honest. It's like the least well, impressive card wait, of wait, all wait. these So me. why, why, why don't we just, um, just discard Gollum? Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Discard Gollum gross um yeah because we have the loot so we can just like sit, sit on this for a turn or two land is so good here um mm -hmm. so the first thing i want to do is like go to combat and get our trigger and we're going to yeah. draw and then discard the gorgon into play yep. uh, although what we could have done too is we could have uh, played bone splitter yeah and actually, the thing is, is, this is such an important creature right now that there's a part of me that feels like we just do this. Just, like, keep the man up to regenerate. Yeah, because yeah. Keldoran Dead is, like, this is like so, like, like Tarmogoyf. It's, like, so above the rate. Yeah, you know? it's tough to deal with. Yeah, so we've got this. If they try to kill anything, which really, like, is any of this worth killing? Like, I, I'm just like, is this worth killing more so than an untapper? Yeah, Malcolm. the only thing worth killing here is the Kelter and Dead, and, and it's tough to do. <laughs> so, like, yeah. Um, yeah, so we do we loot here now? So we did that. Yeah, we put the Gorgon into play. Now we draw, and now we're going to go yeah. one, two... I've seen Infiltrator is quite good here. Is there any of this that we I would want? probably, I would probably just even, like, <laughs> just, like, sacrifice the Nazumi ninja, get Gollum back. Mm -hmm. Um... And maybe like redeploy him. It's kind of wild that this one here is what I'm feeling. I, what what I what, what I perceive here. Yeah, because what we can do we is we can actually just anything. cast. <laughs> we don't need to. If we like were to bone splitter, like 
a line we could do here is like cast, cast the infiltrator, sacrifice the the ninja to get Gollum back. Cast Gollum puts a counter on Gix the infiltrator when we sacrifice the thing. Um, yeah, we can pay one, yeah. sack this, get this back to hand. Uh, and we still have two ways to ca to sacrifice Gollum in our hand with those the removal spell and the draw spell. Yeah, so this is goes back to hand, and then we go. We could deploy it as a blocker right now, or mm -hmm. we could go. Or we could even just leave it up, honestly. Like, like this. and then yeah, and that way we have a mana to regenerate. Yep. So then we go to combat. We loot. Do we need that land now? Pitch the zealot. Just get rid of it. Pitch the zealot. Oh, the blind zealot. Because we have a removal. This card, spell. we could we could probably just cut that card from the deck. Every time we've drawn it, it's been very unimpressive to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm. I feel I'm like we've never angry. cast it. Yeah, and maybe that. Yeah, it's Plus, kinda... like it sacrifices itself, so like we can't use it for anything. It kills a creature, but like, it's yeah. it sits for it's a turn. Sorcery speed, you know, it's like yeah, it's not that. It's not just that not impressive. yeah. So now we're so I mean right now we're we're connecting hard, like this is mm -hmm. a lot of damage, um, and we probably don't need to use the village rights. Um, we don't. It's like <sighs> it's a heater. Um. Yeah, because now what we do is we go, do we need the land? I think we do. We're, this is a big big mana turn. So what mm -hmm. we do is we go one mana, swap this over. Yep. And then we're going to... Um, this is now 5-2. Um, and then we're going to... Because we're going to use this with this right here. Mm -hmm. Or... Yeah, because we're going to... This is what we're going to pair this with, is these things, right? So when we go one, so, two, three, four. Honestly, like most of the time, I might not even do that this turn. I might just hold the ninja until like we can kind of like KO somebody with it out of nowhere, like take advantage of somebody uh -huh. tapping out to set up and just like blast them for six. I might even Gollum. just like play out Gollum and get that going again. Like if we I want like to, I mean, um, we get to hold up both of these, right? Yeah, now. we can we can just cast a removal spell or we can cast a draw spell if we want or more we cards and we just get to go. Yeah, or we can and then we bump up the ring another time. Mm -hmm. um, oh, so we're looting now. Um, mm hmm. Darkness can go. Yeah, we don't need that. Okay, and then say something. Somebody acts a fool. They're they're doing problematic stuff. Yep, kill a Dargo. Yep, yep. We we gank it. Um, we yep, go up to level a, three. A counter here. So let's put, move this up here so we can see its its growth. So we're up to three on that one. And then say we just want to. And then actually that buffs this up again. And then we'll use the yep. last one to sacrifice this um to draw two and add another counter because we have this for golem right wow golem. But, we, but we need to we need to sacrifice a creature to get golem back to our hands so that's what i probably would have saved the tormented soul for um but don't we just sacrifice to get golem we just back. draw like uh, another one that we can get though like right now like watch this well that's true i guess yeah because we can just cast the draw yeah, for free right. and we don't need this land so we cast draw i mean draw golem is a three two fear right mm -hmm. um which is pretty cool but, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Um, to do that, just do this. Yeah, but I guess, but I guess with this line, like we can't um, get the fourth rank until next turn when we attack with Gollum because we're attacking with the ninja. But and that's assuming it goes unblocked. Beetle, and we have this thing, so the sacrifice kind of pays yeah. off there. Yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess it, the line that I would have done is would have been to uh, sacrifice Storm and Soul to get Gollum back, cast Gollum, sacrifice Gollum for for rights, and then get the fourth oh. rank on the ring. Oh no, 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 no! You're you're totally right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. No, that's the way to do it. Um, yeah, we'd still get all of these cards, but the sequencing would be. Dude, a the sequencing different. is crazy in this deck. This is some thousand IQ. Yeah, shit right here. Um, but it pays off. Like the ceiling on this stuff is really, really high. Really, I, think. I mean, like we're this is we've been presenting a lot of power here, and that's not mm -hmm. even this thing in play. And once this thing hits four, then we're right about at that game ending turn. Like we're, we're you know we're at that eight to ten turn area right. where like we're hitting everybody for three, and it's like, yeah, what are you gonna do? Like yeah, we're hitting everybody for three and one player for like twelve. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Okay. I like where we're mm -hmm. at with this. I think the core, yeah. just to review kind of like the journey that we were on here, because this has been a long yeah. stream. And I think like understanding the arc of it is kind of, could be kind of challenging, right? You know, when we first started looking at this, the idea was this is kind of like the, this, the passageway to your aggro deck. But then we started realizing like, oh, there's all these like looting synergies. There's all these like uh, recursion synergies. 
Um, there's cheap ways to get Gollum back when we sacrifice him. Yep. There's like generically good black stuff, which is black is just full of like uh, the biggest problem mm -hmm. with black is that when you're building it, there's this temptation to like build like around these good black cards. Right. And they yeah. oftentimes link in with each other in powerful ways. Like the initiative does that. Um, the ninjas play into that too. Um, and then what we found was uh, we went down the rabbit hole and all that. There were too many cards. We couldn't cut enough of them. It felt kind of disjointed. So we, we duplicated Passageway Seer, brought it in, and we started cutting away all the, all the generic black evasive stuff that, mm -hmm. that didn't play into the plan like it does in Passageway Seer. In Seer, the 2-2 two, two flying uh, gets to be a 4-4 four, four with the Forge, and it's meaningful. 4-4 four, four flyer hits really hard. Um, we don't have any amplification in our command zone that makes our stuff bigger. We just want stuff that actually facilitates the sacrifice or benefits from it, or like with the kitchen imp is a great way to deploy it off of madness. Um, yeah. So that's kind of where we went with that. We also like the big difference here is we went up on one mana creatures down on two mana creatures and down on all the other manas. Like look at this curve. <laughs> That's 31 spells with a mana value of one, and that doesn't even count the stuff that's technically yep. one mana, like like um, uh, like like Bone Picker, you know. And we yep. didn't even see any Bone Picker starts. Like Bone Picker yeah. is very scary. Um, you know, with that came this whole thing of realizing that we wanted more equipment, um, that we wanted uh, shave on removal because there really wasn't space for it, um, you know. And then, and then when we play tested it, it was kind of weird because it was very expensive to pull off these loops with like clay revenant and with the, you know, the sanitarium skeleton, the risk, the persistent specimen. And those are good. We still want them because we can discard them freely. They're really good to discard. They come out on one. Um, but then these things, we, we wrapped back around on these. Um, yeah. And I think, I think the one that we drew in the last, the last test, uh, really showed how powerful that can yeah, be. Yeah. I mean, we wouldn't have gotten to four mm -hmm. without this. Um, yep. and so I think that's where we're at now. Um, there wasn't really anything major that we changed along the way. Uh, we also added the, the chain flail, but oh, the blind zealots, the other card we're going to cut, right? So let's get yeah. the, the blind zealot. What did we want? What's a good a good workhorse card? Just something very functional. I think yeah. is what we could use here. I mean, we got um, we got oh we have thorn. Um, here let's look at that. What the are, um what was the we got to go back to the the com the compare because that one's got basically mm -hmm. cards that we want in it right like this yeah this is full of cards that we just wanted. Plus, so, if we identified as being powerful. Um, I mean, there's the Demir House Guard, which you know um, this is an expensive card, right? Like, um. It does have evasion, right. which is great. I mean, it does everything oh, I, we want, I think but it's four Something that, that I find compelling about this card is um, with the game that we had, Carrion Feeder, I think was really demonstrative of how powerful free sacrifice outlets yeah, are for this type of deck. Yeah. So, like, that's... that's or, or, you know what? Maybe Viscerous here is something we want, since we're looting yeah, so we much. Yeah, we do Viscerous here. Um, um, I, I think... I, I like Viscerous here better than House Guard. It doesn't attack context. very well, although we can give it the ring. But um, that's fine. Like, I mean... Uh, what it boils down to is a lot of the creatures that we have may not attack great, but uh, they get to that point with the ring if we need them to fill that role. Yeah. Uh, but I think like the combination of a free sacrifice outlet with the card selection um, is something that I think is worth exploring. And if it's not great, we can the, cut it. But what about dig up the body or the unseen um, necropolis? Like these are cards that we talk. Yeah. About so we're sacrificing a lot of creatures. So like uh -huh. that's possibly like a good way to go. And it, again, like. We also saw like the spells that let us sacrifice as part of the cost are another really powerful way to enable Gollum. So, uh, I, if we, I think I want. Let's try. Let's Gollum. try to dig up the body. We could I think this, this card's or, quite good. Or the other thing is like we're constantly running into needing more bodies to sacrifice, which is something I kind of anticipated at the beginning. Is yeah, these aristocrat decks you always need more to sacrifice, right? And yeah, mm -hmm. Alex, we are still going live. Sorry, I saw your comment earlier, but we're just we're just on this roll <laughs> and we're like ready to finish. So like yeah, <laughs> so we're, no, I, I we're think a good I think a end. good recursion spell, yeah. a good recursion spell like dig up the body is is kind of a good way to go too. Like, Again, like picking up uh, yeah, like the, the the nested shambler, or if this is picking mm -hmm. up like a Lazatep Reaper, the, what that's translating to is the ability to get Gollum back a ton of times, right? It's right, it's just Gollum, picking up two things. Yeah, right. You can also yeah. get Gollum back with it, but. Yep. Um, the other question then is like, is dig up the body better than unseal the necropolis? Because unseal the necropolis, you don't have to sack anything. You just get to bring two things back, and it reads the same. But I, I, I think I think the casualty is is a feature, not a bug. I think like the fact that it it 
it gives us the great gift of being able to sacrifice our golem to cast it. That. You know, um, like we have not had any shortage of that effect. We've sure, had it but, play, but we've there's had it no. Hand. Yeah, but I, I think in terms of like that card versus this card, um, having that that like that that option attached to the card, I think makes it a lot more compelling. Might I tempt they, you in milling no. a Mystic Sanctuary off the top of a of a Tatiova player? <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that either. But I don't know. So, so uh, these cards. I just, I, I, I just think that like the fact that it, it it gives us the option to do that, or we can sacrifice something else to to get two cards back. You know, it doesn't doesn't make a huge what difference. If... But um, like, I never want to run out of. I never want to be short of a way to sacrifice Gollum. Um, and oh, Jacob we body, don't even I have think... an angler in here. Holy shit! I don't think we need an angler. If I'm being honest, we fill our yard though. We we have an angler. He's called Dokuchi Shadow Walker. Uh yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> um okay, so I think like because the, the next card I would want to add is actually because if you're talking about unsealed the necropolis, what we're really talking about yeah. is having more fodder. So if we want fodder, we should just play another one drop creature, right? Like like just 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 like play another. Uh, what what what's happening here? Uh yeah, I mean play. again, I'll I'll I'll. I'll raise my hand for viscerous here as as like probably one of the better one drops how we many, could put in the deck. How many sac out cuz like it's an instant speed sac outlet which is which mm -hmm. is just free insane, instant speed sac outlet so insane. it checks all the boxes and and it's great because like the thing about viscerous here is that in a lot of decks it's not as powerful because you're not drawing cards you're just scrying but in this deck you're looting every turn so um it's a lot better <laughs> yeah yeah um and we also want to make sure we have a mortuary mire in this deck too Agreed. Yes. Because like lands that are, you, you could probably even cut Volta Whispers for it because we're not like going heavy into artifacts. We're well, not so playing the, like uh, we're not playing cranial plating. So like we don't. Well, the Vault that. doesn't cost us anything. It only costs us on the Defile and what we get with Vault. Is right, but it adds a vulnerability, right? Because it's an artifact, so it can be destroyed. But we can also sacrifice it with Deadly Dispute and Reckler's Bargain. So those that's are true. I guess. Like, yeah, like uh, the vulnerability is nothing there. Like nobody ever destroys sure. these. I've never ever had a Vault of Whispers. Um, <laughs> It's one day, one day we'll enter the gorilla shaman meta and uh, oh, eating your eating your happen. words. But it's uh... literally, literally, never gonna happen. If meltdown turns out to be a thing, then we will probably need to sure. reassess how free <laughs> these artifacts are. Um, yeah. Chris says, "Wow, a black PDH deck without Tortex." Um, this deck doesn't need Tortex. Wait, but does Tortex do stuff with Golem? Uh no. We sure right. about that? It's discard discarding and rebuying it. So if we you need to discard another, something, but but it's just any creature, right, from our hand, and mm -hmm. and then we get to play Gaul. So we don't have to sacrifice anything, basically. Well, we're well, you just so you, actually you discard it and sacrifice it. Yeah, yeah, we're discarding. But, but but we have ways to like sacrifice our creatures and and like do other things with them as resources on the battlefield. So, hmm. I mean, it's not a bad. I thought. think it's. It, I mean, Tortix is a very powerful card, but again, like. We're not trying to make. We're not trying to build an engine, really. We're just trying to enable Gollum, um, and Tortex. I don't think enables Gollum any better than a lot of the other things that we're already doing. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I'm trying like to get... I, I don't, because once you start playing Tortex, then you start like running into cards that are like better with Tortex than things that we're already doing, and yep, you start to yeah. dilute the things that matter. Uh, Tortex is like a whole nother rabbit hole. You can build the deck around. You can build a deck with Gollum around Tortex, but I don't think it's this deck. Right, right. Yeah, like we hadn't considered Tortex. I like honestly it wasn't on my on my radar for this uh, mm -hmm. for this deck. And and it's a very good black card. So like the way this card is translating is that is that instead of dis instead of um using Gollum's ability and sacrificing a creature, you're discarding it. And the argument for that could be that to have a creature to sacrifice, you had to have cast it. So what Gollum, what this is actually doing is shortcutting Gollum's ability, right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't have to play it out there because you're going to sacrifice that creature anyways, uh, in a lot of cases at least. So there, there is an argument sure. there I could see where you're like able to get it back. Um, it, like, basically, I think the end function of it is that it lets you just put Gollum back into your hand at instant speed. Um, but I don't know how useful that, good, that really is practically. I don't think it's like measurably powerful. Um, yeah. But yeah, like a lot of the cards that we have, like play very like we're playing like carrion feeder, viscera seer, ideally if I had my way. Um, mm -hmm. uh, other spells that you know sacrifice creatures part of the cost, and we don't have to use golem with those. Like we can use other creatures to enable those things. 
but we can't like discard a card to pay those costs. So like if we're already playing all of these cards to take advantage of that aspect of the battlefield, then um, I don't think you see any reason why we shouldn't be using our creatures as resources in that regard. Mm -hmm. So what I'm doing right now is I'm getting a count on how many sacrificers we have. Mm -hmm. um, that's nine. So I actually do want Viscera Seer. Yeah. Because um, any deck that can reliably draw the cards that you leave on top with Viscera Seer, I think makes Viscera Seer worth playing. Viscera Seer is being a honest. very, very powerful card. I've played a lot of Viscera Seer in a lot of decks, and it, it's, it's never disappointing. Yeah. Um, and actually, let's uh, let's just make sure we have the cheap printing here too, because I want to get a, a read on this. Uh, unfortunately, I, I like this printing a lot, um, but we're gonna mm -hmm. we're gonna use this one here, um, just to get a sense. So I uh, think go the uh, do the tales of Middle Earth one. Go the uh, go the no go back go back go back go back. I have to do this here. Change uh, your golem printing again. This one here, switch printing. Do the showcase one. This one. Yeah, that one's dope. It's more expensive. Doesn't I'm matter. Get the get most the, expensive I, I, one. I want, I want to understand the base price. This is always like that thing sure. at the end where we say, like, look, you can build a CPDH deck for. So what we're mm -hmm. seeing here is 36 bucks. And I'm sure that there's cards in here that could use a different um, a different printing, although not many. I think they're all kind of the base yeah. printing. This darkness, darkness is definitely the cheapest one. Um, so yeah, 36 bucks. But of course, yeah, the real printing, if you're not. Look, when you buy a CPDH deck, like buy a cool commander, okay? Like just get a fancy one, yeah. yeah Treat yourself. It. Like I like both of these. These are really cool. This I'm kind of a sucker for borderless. This is borderless though. That's a really cool art, man. Yeah. That is a really cool art. This is like a battle box deck a little bit because Tempt is so unique. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in that's a way, what, yeah. Like, I, I think it's really important for battle boxes to have like a diversity of yeah. effects, um, and kind of like some weird fringe stuff in there. And I think like this is a great a great pick for something like that. It's like like an aggressive deck that's doing some weird stuff, but but like very transparently powerful. I think. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. 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 This is this is uh, where, where's Gollum? Gollum. There he is. There he is. Okay. There. Bingo. Because that that looks cool. Oh, that's yeah. nice. I like that. So I think this is a great place to wrap up. This has been mm -hmm. a fucking marathon. Pardon my French, but four hours. And this is yeah. this is super cool, though. Like, I find this stuff really compelling, and I, I hope you all do, too. Um, yeah, I think this is really interesting tech. Like, this is, the, this is, like, the first, probably one of the first videos on the internet really talking about, like, and building around this new mechanic, right? Like, like building a mechanic around yeah. a commander that you can't play in almost any other format. Um, I mean, you could play it. Well, actually, no, you can play it because it's legendary, right? Okay, so yeah. Maybe but no, no one's gonna. Own. Why would you do this? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, and, and they can just play Corvold and yeah, yeah. Like Corvold exactly. <laughs> right. Like some disgusting aristocrat commander in three colors. Yeah. And, you know, do all the things. Um, but what what what's exciting about this is that we have a powerful mechanic that we retain that we get to benefit. We're the sole beneficiary of this of this mechanic. We're also yep. playing Monarch and Initiative alongside it. So we have a lot of the traditionally powerful things. We have all the really like busted, like, um, uh, you know, sacrifice draw effects that most black decks play anyways to protect, to protect against Oubliette. So you're seeing a lot of like the generically good things in here in a deck that actually retains like some, some really like powerful uh, synergistic interactions with a commander that skips the command tax. Um, mm -hmm. I'm stoked on it. Um, yeah, this is this is wild. I, I definitely recommend you all uh, try this out if if this is something yeah. that you're interested in. Um, and, Throw it together, uh, run, run it out on the the Comic Connoisseurs Discord LFG. Just uh, that's right. Beat some beat some people to death. Yeah, absolutely. And we do have a policy <laughs> about these things. Uh, you know, in in the in the Comic Connoisseurs, of course you. You always should have a, a rule zero discussion about things that aren't available yet, spoiled cards. Um, if you're ever using common backgrounds or anything like that, yeah. you, do, you do need to have a conversation with people. But our policy is generally that we want to be really open to exploring new cards and trying them out, learning from it, because you know we have this ethic of really learning and growing and becoming better magic players and better people. So um, this is yep. one of the ways to do it. We've got Stark Raptor saying, just tuned in, but this deck seems sick. Another take on Passageways here but with a mechanic that opponents can't steal from you. Exactly. Yeah. And right. these decks are really mechanically kind of similar in some ways. And in fact, like Passageway here, you could totally play these cards too. Uh, in fact, Nate Diggity mm -hmm. was a big advocate of playing these cards too. Um, there's a lot of similarities here. Um, in fact, like the Chain Flail Semipede is probably going to go in Passageway here. And this is one of the things we find with these Let's Builds is that sometimes <laughs> I'm like, oh, wait, this mechanic that we've tried out now is actually really good in another yeah. deck. 
Um, so, but with that chat, I just want to thank each and every one of you who has stuck around through this, this marathon. How many do we have? Is it still, there's eight of you. There's eight yeah. of you. Y'all are masochists. Glutton, gluttons for punishment. Jesus Christ. Listening to us talk about which which cards we want to you know, nickel and dime to sacrifice our commander for three hours. And whether or, or not Ryan has balls to cut <laughs> removal. Um, you yeah. Know, it's like, like these are answer, some... answer is no, by the no, way. Yeah, answer is firmly no. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've proven that. I think, uh, like, yeah, this is really cool. I'm, I'm actually, because uh, the way I have my UI set up right now, I actually can't see how many of you there are on here. And it's kind of better that I don't <laughs> look. It's just, like, more organic if I just pretend that there's, like, a lot of people. Sure. <laughs> um, but no, it's great. Uh, Chris says, don't kink shame the Massos of the Sadies. No, it's, uh, you know what? Um, yeah, I fucks with a little bit of it. So so don't you worry out there. I, not I, not masochists or, or sadists in, in a sexual way, but in a, in, in a stupidity way. Or, or in the sexual way, if that's, how, if that's what you're into. <laughs> uh, you know, again, yeah, no, no shade. Um, you know, some, some people like to be choked. Anyways, yeah. um, so the, the next thing I want to do here is I just want to take a moment to thank all of you who've stayed in chat for, for being mm -hmm. here. This is, this is really, really fun. And I'm glad that you all were here to explore this uh, attempt mechanic with us and, uh, and yeah. call them. I also want to give a special shout out to all of the patrons who make this possible. Uh, we actually had two live streams today and these kind of things are only possible when Clay and I are feeling like we're, you know, feeling like we're making a difference and feeling like we're contributing. And, and one of the ways that you can yep. do that is by joining the Patreon like, uh, like Derek has. And so I what am. we have here is we have uh, $2 a month, $5 a month, $9 a month. For the whales out there, we love you too. We've got 12, uh, a 20 and a $50 a month. And we do really think a lot about how to make this valuable to you extrinsically, meaning that there's an exchange between you and I of value. But also, like Noyark likes to mention, if you just like furthering the cause of Popper Commander, competitive Popper Commander, yep. these eternal formats that enable people to play competitive decks like this one for $36, that's less than a cost of most upgrades in a CDH deck. Um, then, yeah. then supporting us is a great way to do that. There's also a ton of other good content creators out there, so make sure to share the love. But, um, but we do want to make it that it's intrinsically and extrinsically beneficial to you. So some of the things you yep. get out of our $10 level, which is the highest value, um, is member shoutouts like these, where we recognize your contributions, your financial contributions, um, exclusive access to the Discord channel, you get early access to videos like the gameplay video that's going to be dropping uh, tomorrow morning. You get uh, the voting on Let's Builds, and we're implementing this slowly over time. And then, of course, the templates that we have here. All these templates that you see, these interfaces that go around here and show your webcam in cool fashion, if you want those with your name on it, all you have to do is sign up for that $10 a month and I will custom make it for you. And I've got so much to share. These right here are like a $50 to $100 value on any other uh, like GG, what is it called? Uh, Owned.GG. Uh, um, sure. And you get those you get those for free. So, Or you get those with your, your, with your donation. So, um, But not to hawk this too hard. I just want to put that out there as an opportunity for people who want to contribute. Stark Raptor says, when will you add a Ragavan level patron tier? I would consider the Epicure the Ragavan level patron tier. We all know that card is super broken um, and that Ragavan does have death touch for players. So um, right. so this is our Ragavan tier. Unfortunately, Ragavan is not a common, which just makes it like infinitely less interesting and cool. Um, mm -hmm. Not to throw shade on the monkey, but yeah, this is our Ragavan level tier. Uh, or maybe the Ragavan tier is this one right here. <laughs> it's like, you know, devalue mm -hmm. the mythic and then like upscale the common. You know, like yeah. this is like, like, you know, some sort of common name, but we call these epicures, of course, epicures, zealots, aficionados, dilettantes, and connoisseurs. So with that, um, I just want to also uh, pull this off screen so we don't dox people like I did last time. Um, <laughs> but I uh, want to shout out every one of the, uh, the different uh, people that uh, financially contribute. So we've got Adgen, Jerry, Zach, Scooby, Chris, Mizu, William, Paul, Corey, Derek, Devin, Ian, Bobby, Gin Shooting Star, and our longest running patron, Noyark. Thank you all for your contributions. And if you want to join it, you can go to patreon.com backslash common connoisseurs. You can also follow me at Papa, uh, Papa underscore Popper on Twitter. You can follow Derek at, uh, is it Deer Reader? Derek Deer Derek Reader? Derek Deer Reader, that's Derek right. Derek Deer Reader, yep. Um, and that's a great one to follow. He's always got great things posted on there. Um, and I think with that, we're going to wrap it up, Derek, dude, you've contributed yeah. 
over four hours of your time to this tonight. I'm, I'm sure. And I, I'll like, do it again. I know. Yeah. Don't, I, yeah. I, I, I won't count you out, man. He, he's like, <laughs> he's like, nobody called no bell. I didn't hear no bell. Yeah. <laughs> What's the next commander? Let's start a, let's start a new one. Yeah. Yeah. It was, oh boy. Well, you know, um, quite honestly, uh, you know, the one that we'll, that we'll probably be looking at, maybe we'll just do another tempt one. Maybe we'll look at that new Selesnya Frodo one. Um, yeah. You know, I, too. The, 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 the Bilbo and the Frodo both look super sweet um, yeah. for different reasons. Um, but Tempt is awesome. It's just like building decks around initiative. It's just yeah. super cool stuff. Yeah, um, this one, whenever it or another... It's just the best equipment ever made. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Uh, it's like equipment that you can't destroy and you can't take from people. Um, yep. Is it Frodo Baggins here? This one's pretty interesting. I definitely have, like, I'm very excited about this. Whenever yep. it or another legendary creature enters the battlefield, it tempts you. Like, whoa, wow. Uh, so, like, flickering um mm -hmm. uh like yeah uh very cool and if it, it must be blocked if able so i think like the cool thing about this card uh, when we go to build it is that this is a machine gun for any sort of yeah. combo deck you literally this... like dominate their creatures every single turn like this would be a card that or a deck that would be good with the card provoke where you can Dude. force a creature to block like you choose the creature yeah. to block frodo when, you know? when i when i was build uh, throwing some cards together for this um that was the thought is that you want to be doing yeah. like the shenins of life roar, roar type stuff and yep. making them big and then eating people's com yeah. uh, their commanders or mainly their combo creatures because their combo creatures are going to be low power so they'll be able to chump but they'll be the only mm -hmm. thing that can block so yeah um, so anyways with that um not to give too much of the of the 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 uh, the farm away here but um yeah mm -hmm. uh we're gonna wrap it up connoisseur is a fine common cardboard it's been an absolute pleasure spending time with you tonight with all of yeah. your contributions and derek thank you again um and uh, always a pleasure for those of you on youtube watching it afterwards thank you too for your contributions if you did enjoy this make sure to like subscribe Comment below if you have any feedback. You're also yeah. welcome to message me on Discord or Derek. I'm sure he'd be able to pass it on too. Um, about yeah. anything you want improved on the streams or any ideas you have. Uh, we also do donation decks as well. Those um, are something you can inquire about privately if you're interested in that as yeah. well, where we bring you on the show and you can, you too can be. Or, here you know, if, if you all have any cool ideas for commanders that you want to hear me talk about for four hours, um, let us know. We'll do it. I'll talk about whatever commander you want. I don't care. They're all cool. Yeah, Pick cool. one. There's a lot of cool stuff. So, okay, with that, Connoisseurs of Fine Common Cardboard, good evening, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for hanging out, and we'll catch you on the battlefield. Bye, everybody. Peace.